PKA 681 with our guest, Chris James Taylor. This episode of PKA is brought to you by FaroDistro.com, Blue Chew, and Lock and Load. Bunch of wonderful products. We got Chris James back with us, looking tremendous. The reality oh, TV guru, <laughs> the finder sure. of truth. Is that, finder, you, yep. is, that, is that how you see yourself, a truth teller? That's often what I've been referred to as, yeah, the finder of truth. Yeah. But, mm. yeah. That, can they kind of just know, call us liars. I know we talked about yeah. it briefly last time. <laughs> Have you found any episodes of reality TV that are maybe pushing you towards ghosts yet? I see you've done a couple more Ghost Hunters ones. I did or nothing. one of the newer episodes of Ghost Adventures, and it was the one that I was drawn to because I don't know if you've seen the clip, but it's of uh, one of the one of Zach's goons that are uh, they're like in this haunted saloon. And he's like, I don't know about you guys. I'm getting like a four. I want to drink that fucking whiskey right now. Yeah. <laughs> and then he just takes like three shots whis- whiskey. And he's like, I'm I feel really good. And it's like, yeah. I, it's three shots of whiskey. Of course you feel good. And- <laughs> Dude, I, I saw that exact clip mm-hmm. where the guy, I thought it was like a skit, like a silly skit, which it kind it of is. is. Yeah. It is a the silly whole show. Skit. Have you, have you seen this <laughs> clip, Kyle? This, this ghost hunter walks past this table that has whiskey on it and is like, guys, I have such a strong urge to take a shot of that whiskey. And they're like, out of nowhere? And he's like, yes, all I had to do was walk by this bottle of whiskey and I want a shot. And then he like proceeded to give in to the demonic uh, booze demon and indulged him with three shots. And the other guy, if I recall, was like acting just befuddled like you would never do shots out of a whiskey bottle unless there were a Western gunslinging devil man. Yeah, Zach making is you. pissed at him the rest of the time. He's like, dude, you are wasted. You got to get out of my face. Like, you're ruining this invest the integrity of this investigation. <laughs> and I'm like, of the Ghost Adventures investigation. We don't drink on the job. Fuck you. This is all made up. Like, that was for all of us. I and we drank most Mark. of it. Mark was busting ghost drunk on the job. I had to fire him. I couldn't. I mean, yeah. We get sued by a ghost. What are you going to do? They, they had the ghost to ride. They had to let him Not out. only, I, I think that that is. No offense to anyone, but I hate those ghost programs. The idea of watching it, oh. like, look, look, I spend my time in silly ways. I watch silly things, learn lore about made up things. But my God, they have been looking for ghosts since like 1997 <laughs> and they haven't found one yet with their fucking EM meters and their wackadoo fucking look at when this line moves, ghosts are here. Okay, buddy, that's a vibrator. Like, it's nonsense. <laughs> Every, I've They're seen the, the behind the scenes stuff and I've heard people like tell on them, be like, yeah. They'll just like throw a pebble into the corner of the room, and everybody will go, oh, "Who's that? Who's that?" They'll like have, they have PAs like, off screen, technology just, at like, this point. Yeah, yes. what, what are they some of the made-up technologies, Chris? They have you? this one camera that where they're like they they pick up anomalies, and it's like stick figures moving in the background. I'm like, where did you? What is this camera reading? It's like they're like, mm-hmm. if you can see, there's a guy in the back and another guy in the back, and they have to be anomalies of the spiritual realm, and they're just made up. Like I don't know what this technology is yeah they never get into it it's never like a good answer like well it's sending out a pulse sort of like a bat and it's Mm. interfering with the 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 dark matter that makes up a demon and then bouncing back to like it's always like what are you talking about hd yeah there's an x on the demon screen of course there's a demon yep that's it that's it that's exactly it yep what am i looking at those you're an anomaly. anomaly It's an anomaly. Yeah, that demon's got <laughs> legs for days. This is the anomaly. This is the anomaly cost constellation, Woody. Now, when this is above Jupiter, you'll have good luck. If and- the, if we had a constellation like this, and it was called like the night or something, it would be the most accurate constellation of all time. <laughs> because well, basically, they basically have a Kinect stuff. camera. That's <laughs> is it really much they're using? They're using oh, the Kinect. I, I wouldn't be surprised. So these uh, people like. <laughs> is there how often in these shows? Because I don't watch the the ghost hunting stuff. How often is, do they allow someone on the show to offer pushback, or is that like? Well, dude, there's come one on, that I happen. heard of. It was I think they had a priest on. It was like a, a live thing they did, and I'm pretty sure they had a priest on, and he was not going along with the program, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Yeah, that, it's probably." I mean, there, it could be, but it's probably not a demon. And Zach was getting pissed, and they ended up. He's like, "He's like, I'm getting." This negative evil energy from the spirit. We have to cut this short. And then they just cut the program. <laughs> this guy was just not playing along. He's like, what the fuck, dude? This is, come on. I think 
I think the spirits were starting to influence the priest. They were making him say all sorts of lies. No all sorts of crazy about. things. <laughs> they start trying we to found a new. Him. We found a much more holy priest. <laughs> Father, make it up. Off backstage.com. <laughs> yeah, off of Fiverr. <laughs> I, am here Fiverr. To, I am here to remove the demon problem. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, this is the <laughs> finest priest you can get for $6 quickly. Oh, it's Fiverr Africans. <laughs> the Fiverr Indian guy. That would be good. Yeah, I, I could never get sucked into the demon ghost shows. And part like, even if I bought in fully that you were able to track demons with like a, a camera or something, why would a demon suddenly reveal itself to a couple of fucking retards like out of yeah, nowhere? If, See, the, if you're a demon, buy into. no, if you're a demon and you're going around, the, what you want as a demon is for nobody to believe in you. You do not want people Why? believing you're real. You want to be because the Why? it's like the goal of like like Satan and d- demons, like at least in like a lot of theology is like their goal is to corrupt you, to make you think that your own selfish desires are what you want. They don't want drink you whiskey. going, I'm going to I'm going to drink these whiskey shots because <laughs> the devil's telling me to. They want you to be like, yeah, I'm going to be slothful. I'm going to do what I want. Ah, I'm going to be gluttonous. I'm going to do what I, I don't want. Just want you to have a good time. convenient. Like it, the way the demons operate is they have as little proof of their existence as possible, but they're real. Dude, if you're trying to get someone to, to fuck themselves up, you don't want a big scary demon in the corner of the room being like, don't work out and overeat. Like, then you're going to be like, oh, oh hitting the elliptical. <laughs> but, if, but if you are convinced in your own fuck pride you. that you know what's on. best for yourself, then you're going to fall into it. You got to. Like a demon wouldn't let itself be seen on, on TLC. I still can't get past the convenience of this whole thing. How demons want to exist in a way that you don't really prove they well, exist. Well, let me help. Well, well, I, I, well, I don't think the, the demons the have to hand, exist a in, ghost, in your paradigm. On the other hand, a ghost might want to be found. Because there, it seems, like, like based on the liars on TV, that they're usually conflicted spirits. Like, they can't move on because either they don't understand what's happened or they mm-hmm. refuse. It's like... No, you killed her. I'm so, ah, like he's just there, stuck in this rageful moment. The spirit, like stuck in this little place, and I could almost believe in that, you know, in some way. Almost, not really though. Well, I can but see them that not guy, to be seen. that spirit, might want to be seen. It might, it, it wants attention. It wants to be heard because they'd hear it in life or something like that. But a demon not is expecting this, like, those cameras. Sneaky yeah, thing that's mm, doing their due like, What 20- the fuck is that? How the fuck did they get that? <laughs> yes, <laughs> I've been. Spotted. Demons know about cameras. Trust me, they know yeah. all about cameras. You know, it's My funny. It's like I to you about demons. I, I could not be more on. Like, <laughs> I had a teacher I'm, in high school who said he taught me this lesson. It's burned into my head deep. If anyone, anyone ever says, "Trust me," don't. <laughs> I was like, "Fuck, <laughs> that's solid <laughs> advice right there." If that's someone says, the, "Trust me," some don't. Shit. He was listening to like a like a single fifty two year old teacher had her heart broken a bunch yeah. of times. She's she's trying to like pass it down to you, Woody. No matter what a man tells you, don't trust no, him. No, this guy was a okay. badass Vietnam vet. Uh, taught poetry. Like he was really cool. Nah, he's built like you, Taylor. Oh, okay. Sounds like a pretty cool guy. Vietnam yeah, vet. Guy. Po- <laughs> really- <laughs> Vietnam vet. Thank you. Viet, Vietnam vet poetry might be my new favorite genre of poetry, by the way. I'm just imagining <laughs> that dark shit that remember when Elaine hired the Vietnam vet or whatever, and he was yeah. he was like writing copy for for women's clothing, but from the perspective of a, a PTSD ridden yeah. Gulf War veteran. Go to sleep and stay dry with your <laughs> Warburton high quality sleeper camper net. We might all be Keep dead out. by the morning. Yeah, we but might we'll all be dry. Be- I wrote over a good rock track. It's just Creed. <laughs> he was the same guy who, uh, when the first Gulf War broke out, he grabbed a newspaper that said "It's War," and the 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 headline "It's War" took like the entire like upper fold mm-hmm. above the fold. And uh, it wasn't really a political message. It was basically like, "Hey, this is the reality. If you're going to serve in the military for any length of time, expect there to be war." And it was eye opening for me because. Prior to the Gulf War, what was before that? Vietnam? Like there was a big gap. Um, I don't think there was anything big. Like like that we were we were futzing around in Libya, it seemed like in the Middle East in small ways, but like not that boots on the ground. Granada, Beirut. Nothing sure. in mass though. Like but yeah. but the idea I what you're talking about is like a war where if you're in the army, you're going to fight, you know, like that that's a Vietnam 
Vietnam was that war or a mm-hmm. war of that kind. It's like, are you in the army? Yeah. Well, then you're going to Vietnam to fight, huh? Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we all go. <laughs> yeah, we all go. There's no, there's nobody back here like holding it down. Like we're all heading that way. Um, yeah. If your birthday but, but, yeah. comes up on one of those pulls, you're, you're going to war unless you shit all over yourself. Unless wonder, you fly jets to the National Guard. I, I mean, I like to think that I would have been bright enough. Like, let's say I'm 21 and the war is like four years in and it's like, yeah, they're, they're starting to draft or whatever. I don't know the timing, but but I, I like to think that I'd be smart enough to be to like go through the steps to like, all right, I'm going to enlist. I'm going to be an Air Force like officer. I'm going to be the guy who orders the flight crew to wave those orange wands. Like, <laughs> I want to be the guy supervising that on a boat. No. 90 miles off the coast. Uh, you underestimate Vietnam's Navy. Everybody would pick to be that guy. <laughs> the strippers of Nam. Yeah, no, nobody is like, I want to be the first guy. Over. I guess there are some like first guy overs. But that's how you become a ghost. Roll, is roll quiet. The America here. <laughs> Outside, Taylor, Japanese now. <laughs> I don't know what those. Uh, I was gonna, I always do they ever the discern in these, in these ghost shows, Chris? Do they ever can they ever identify Pivot. the ethnicity of a ghost? Where they're like think, there's symbols and this one's sitting cross legged on the ground. Like, I think you're style. skipping a few steps, and step one is figuring out that they exist in the first place. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I think they have to first prove that before they can prove literally anything else. But they do mm-hmm. I mean they pick up audio recordings. Yeah, it are just they sounds impressive? like no, it sounds like like your old computer setup at home, like when you'd get a text next to a computer speaker. Yeah. Yeah. It makes that noise. It, 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 that's it, it, about it. it, it yeah, that, that's about it. And you're like screaming and at your mom not to pick up the phone because you're playing. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it, that's exactly. That's all they pick up, and then those stick figures. That's about. That's about it. Or they'll be like, "Man, it's fucking cold in here." And then that's. And well, that's know. the one. I need that priest to be like, it might just be a draft. And they go back. Oh. There's always it's demons, spirits, go like they just anomaly is just covers everything. So that's all they do. It's just as much anomaly. as. As much as I hate those people, and I, I I view that kind of programming as like, you know, they're making up like nonsense, but pretending it's real. For some reason, sure. that irks irks me. As much as I hate that, the people I really hate are the ones who make those documentaries about mermaids or Bigfoot mm. or something like that. And I'm talking like about Stroud. like on Discovery Channel, they'll have. I remember they had a mermaid ex- Discovery has always been full all on like stuff. either History or Discovery. This is like ten years ago. And the idea was they were teasing that we're going to prove mermaids are real tonight. And I remember me and this girl like sitting in this hotel bed. I was like on the road. And I'm like, they are not going to prove mermaids are real, but we're going to watch every minute of this. We're gonna... <laughs> and they would get to, they would get to the cusp of every commercial break and they would show you this <laughs> fake ass footage of a mermaid tail. And they'd be like, when we come back, we're going to talk to. And then they like disguise the guy's voice like he's in mermaid protection program or some shit. <laughs> <laughs> I saw the mermaid. <laughs> There's a mermaid conspiracy. And you come back from a commercial and it's like five minutes of recapping the last five minutes before the commercial. And you're like, I was yeah. just here. Dude, it's <laughs> crazy when you watch that with no commercials. And like- I know. That's, <laughs> that's what I go through every fucking video. I'm like, okay, I got to do a lot of fucking skipping. <laughs> three minutes of lead up to the commercial and then you don't even have a bunch of fucking pharmaceutical commercials to bust it up it doesn't people feel right. dying of like plaque up arteries it just goes straight to i haven't heard about olympic in minutes <laughs> what you need to do you need to watch mountain monsters on what travel is, channel that's that? a good one that's it's honestly you could just watch that for fun like get higher drunk or whatever and watch that because it's mm-hmm. these this group of hicks that go out into the woods and they just hunt mountain monsters. Like the one I just did recently <laughs> was the black wolf. And like, they got this guy, Jeff, who's like, they're all 90 years old, except for <laughs> one of the guys. And they're out in the woods with AR 15s and flashlights. And they're just hunting monsters. And they make up this. Sometimes it's like multiple episode lore where I'm like, I just want one episode, please. And then they're like, we're going to have to look into this some more. And then they just stretch it on. But it's the funniest show like even just watching it on its own. What kind it's of honestly, monsters? Like what qualifies? Everything. Jersey Devil. Everything. Yeah, Jersey Devil, uh Black Wolf. Oh, really? Um, I was guessing. That's funny. That was actually Are there a lot of the first like, one I did. Woody, do they ever I, I'm sorry. Kill I got to ask Woody. Yeah. I got to hmm. ask Woody if he, it was the Jersey Devil really a thing in Jersey. Anybody ever talk about it, joke about it, snipe hunt? Oh yeah, yeah. Jokes? I was a boy scout and it was like on all of our minds. Every time a twig broke in the woods, we like, were worried it was the Jersey Devil. Oh, that's just okay. Woody. Yeah. All right. 
Yeah, because yeah, uh, we would go to the Pine Barrens, which is where where the Jersey Devil's from, you know. And uh, yeah, he was a concern. What is it supposed <laughs> to be like? Like morph- morphologically, think, is it like a bear? Is it a, a demon? Oh, it- shucks! It's almost like a dragon kind of thing, but call it okay. seven feet tall. Okay. Really? I always it's thought it was Chris Angel. Like it's uh, that's how he snaps a, in, in and out of existence. Zach, can you find I, a picture of the Jersey Devil? To see I think it, they show it like a an real imp, one, almost like a, like a, like a reptilian imp. Is I've seen pictures. I've seen glowing eyes. Uh, but I don't think I know what an imp episode. is. I think of the game uh, like of a Thrones lesser dwarf. demon who who might perch on a on a, on the shoulder. I bet of it has a, goat hooves in the picture he pulls up. That seems very devilish. Cloven, cloven, yeah. cloven. Ah. Reverse yeah. need. Which Ooh, one set of those reverse sets me? One set of reverse knees. That aren't kangaroo style wouldn't even be that helpful. You could outrun the Jersey Devil. Oh come on! <laughs> oh that. No, I was looking for more of a like a. Drawn. That's a piñata. <laughs> no, this is this is a this. I mean, this is the best quality you can hope for when he's running. That. <laughs> All right, well that that's clearly a winged goat. That's a goat. Okay. Okay. Off a yeah, hill. yeah, yeah. This is this is more in line. Shit, with... that might have been a real picture. This looks a lot like what I saw a moment ago. Yeah, that's pretty okay. spooky. I wouldn't want to see that in the. All right, well there it the is. Thank you. Now me. that's a real monster. Yeah, that's an animal having an accident. Chris, have they ever what? like killed something out there? And they're like, it was ten feet tall if it was a foot, and I brought it down, and it immediately used its magic to morph back into a possum. Yeah. They've been closer to killing each other. <laughs> awesome. They've been closer to killing each other in the woods than they have any animal, like oh, or yeah. any any beast, because they have two guys on the team, arguably the most obnoxious to listen talk to, and they're the trap builders and they build these elaborate traps, like almost Viet Cong style in the woods. And they're like, we're going to catch this fucking thing. And then there's always some plot where they're like looking for the black wolf. And they're like, man, Jeff's been acting weird. And it's one of the 90 year old guys. And he's like bleeding out of his nose. And they're like, we got to figure this out first. And then the episode's over. (laughs) That's every episode. And I'm like, okay, well, I guess the, the black wolf is, is over for now. (laughs) It's like, ah, the, the demon, uh, you know, is, is using his sulfur smell. And it's like, oh fuck, Alan's having a series of mini strokes again. That's Larry's gas. Don't that guy, Jeff, if you could find a picture of Jeff from mountain monsters, this guy is my favorite. He's always falling down. In every episode, he falls down in one way or another. <laughs> the one I covered on my last video, his nose was bleeding. And they're like, Jeff, your nose is bleeding. He's like, oh, I shit. No he's bleed. like possessed. <laughs> it's a, it's possessed. a whole thing. Dude, you don't live to be that old without being a hell of a monster hunter. They're all, I think one of the guys did die like a few years ago. But not <laughs> from mountain monsters. I think no, just there like are old from monster decaying hunters age. and bold monster hunters. That guy, yeah, no this is old, Jeff. This old is... monster hunters. <laughs> they're dragging this old fragile man out to the woods every day and they're throwing him around. They're like, Jeff, come on, keep up. And he's like, huh? And they, they give him a gun. They all, <laughs> they've all got torn. guns. Is that a short sleeve shirt? <laughs> it's yeah, this is uh, the fruit. My man really goes I mean, in between. It's not really a monster. It's, a, it's kind of a bear. Yeah, I don't know what that is. I can watch that episode. <laughs> the bear they're posing with. That wasn't even an animal that any of them killed. Yeah. And- <laughs> That's one of the shows that I actually have fun watching when I'm making a video because it's genuinely entertaining. It's, and so it's a little outrageous. black bear at that. Uh, yeah, that wasn't even yeah. a big bear. At least stand yeah. away behind it. A little movie. Those the bears that don't really Ooh, good, good move, do anything. Like it's it. like if it's bl- well, they'll kill you, but but like not that one. That, that one looked like he was. The curious, he's like raising his head up, up so he can. Hey, yeah, it wasn't. Could be wrestled well. that guy at six years old. There's Have like a saying: it's like black, something? lay down, brown, run away. I, there's something that rhymes. Yeah, if it's a, if it's black, fight back. If it's brown, lay down. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. it. That's <laughs> that that right? the opposite of that. No one gets themselves killed. <laughs> and if <laughs> what is uh, what about for polar bears? Wait, no, no, white, no, 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 no. If, if, it's, if it's black, you fight back, and if it's brown, you lay down. Because I think brown is like a grizzly bear. And mm-hmm. you're just wanting to cover your head and your bowels so that it, it, it eventually gets bored and like leaves you. But I guess the black bear, if it's fighting you, then it's there to fuck fuck you up because it's mad. At what you point does it get eat. bored with my body? When you're just like, tendril, tendril, you're just that you're depends just, on the just, body, uh, you know. If say. it's you know, some guys it's like, ew, dude, yeah. cardio, <laughs> cardio. Okay, it's a lot of marble on that guy. Yeah, all it takes if if that bear takes more than four seconds before he's entirely bored with me, I'm dead. Like it's That's a, it's a they take so long bear. to maul you, and it's like they're oh, just it takes way long tearing at you, dude. Yeah. Have you seen the size of a grizzly bear's paw? If it smashes you once, it can, it can. It's like you remember that shit that uh, where what's his name from Jurassic Park was like, 
picking on that child for laughing at his his science talk where he's like yeah he would have this claw and he'd gut you like a fat little turkey wouldn't he and all the adults yeah. are like it's cool you. with this that's what a bear claw is but it's five of them and it's bigger than that one I one bet bear a grizzly slash. bear couldn't bench press a hundred pounds if it yeah. knew that it was supposed to no you make it up <laughs> fake rules that's part of the, well i'm sorry <laughs> but that's part of the game knowing you're supposed to lift yeah away. exactly if he can't get there then he's lost Dude, those russian post videos where it's like look at me wrestling a bear and the whole time it's very clear the bear has no understanding they're wrestling anything that the bear thinks it's like oh we're balancing on each other what a fun game oh he's petting <laughs> me on my side a little rapidly and meanwhile the guy's like oh, 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 but hitting this him. is fun we should just fuck bears up and things they don't like look at me out debate a bear yeah, yeah. It's just, those like, 480p <laughs> videos of bears what. like this russian guy just beating the shit out of a bear and it's like this is gonna play a bear gonna end well. yeah no all that bear <laughs> takes is four seconds of it not wanting to play your game have you seen the videos of bears wrestling each other in the wilderness where they got their claws mm -hmm. out? And it takes like one graze, like they'll kind of be wrapped around each other. And one of them will pull its claw back, not even looking that violently. And a, a strip of skin and flesh revealing yeah. like muscle tissue on one of the nah. bears is just torn off. And that amount of skin on you is like, is what, you know? Uh, the whole torso amount? It's, yeah. It would fuck I would argue, up. I would nah, argue that a grizzly Taylor bear Taylor has is the like... same protective fur coat that a bear does. And it wouldn't protect me. I'd get <laughs> I'd get mauled. I just I just die a little uglier. My like, money's on you, Taylor. I no, saw Leonardo take DiCaprio that. take on a fully grown grizzly bear with nothing more than a black powder musket and his conies and all of his friends, of course. But but he won. That's propaganda. Yeah. I can't believe you fell yeah. for that. I would uh <laughs> <laughs> that was yeah. Kyle, that was yeah, a movie. Big bear. Yeah. No, was it? That's yeah, a it's it a is. true story. That's that's the story what is, of you glass. What is the biggest most monster ish thing they ever killed on the show? Like for real. They must in order to get a pilot or get they the show things? going, they must have caught or killed some sort of freakishly big bear. An enormous That's wolf. assuming they've actually killed any it's like I said, every episode they're like almost on the cusp of catching something and they're like <laughs> Wait, but what's that? And then the credits, and then like they go into something else for the next. It's oh. literally, it's just always Don't edging you along the way. Every they've episode. captured, they've captured the wonderment of a snipe hunt, and they've serialized it. That's what they've done. Mm -hmm. It's going out in the woods with your buddies and getting a little goofy and a little drunk and playing with guns and saying we're looking for Bigfoot, and then ending up back at a campfire drinking more beers and going to sleep and having a blast doing it. And when we get back, what did you do yeah. this weekend? Did you go get drunk with your buddies and play with guns? Hell no. We're monster hunters. <laughs> I'm, monster hunters. <laughs> I'm a goddamn hero, civilian. You better fucking salute. When, They're all like, when I the just Jersey love how... devil comes down, you're going to wish. You know, like, that's you're going to wish you had six 90 year old men with AR 15s <laughs> at your Dude. side. And they're all like the kind of guy, like, hmm. what they should be doing is sitting on a porch. That is like all they should be doing with their day. Mm. Yet they're <laughs> out, like, losing their breath in the woods climbing up hills i don't man i don't know how you even fill 22 minutes with that 40 minutes 40, 40 minutes <laughs> they're the long ones oh my god yeah man, it, i pictured it kind of being like river monsters where i've never watched that show but i've seen enough little clips online where that guy caught some big shit in rivers like legit yeah. fish with giant giant teeth so mm -hmm. i can you real. know that's a little unfair for these guys to kind of steal his valor pretending you they're know that catching guy enormous bears or whatever I think that guy has a new show, maybe, but the reason the old show went off was because he just caught everything. You know, the idea was river monsters. He caught every large, challenging game fish in the world. He caught them all on his show. And then they were like, we don't have anything else to catch. We can't even make, we'd have to make up a fish and like, all right, well, the show's over then, right? But did he, he ever, anything. he should go catch a big stingray just to stick it to, you know, who? He did. He caught <laughs> <laughs> I'm the ultimate beast catcher. Yeah, catches a stingray, beats it uh, up. Same that, stingray. Uh, Show, that's fish. i saw a picture it was like they like aged the, uh steve Irwin to show what he would look like now it was real sad it's like damn that, that guy was not one too of the, much older yeah. I, old i'm so he glad died? he died 2006 42 maybe like 38 like somewhere in there is my guess like like a, a youngish man um you know just a kid what's the <laughs> ideal age to die kyle well that, that depends on other factors right are, are you talking about for attractiveness no, no, or, or, just like, you know, when, oh. when is it you've hit the peak of your bell curve or maybe just mm. maybe you even would do want to enjoy the downslide a little bit, Every, but not all of it, not the I, tail it end. 
It depends, you know, like I think everybody's got a different bell curve. Some some people peak, you know, toward the end. I, I would argue that like um like William Shatner's like 90 or how old is he? Like 99 or something stupid. Like he went to space last year. I'll find out. That's gotta be pretty like cool. Him, well, that's because that that billionaire sprayed alcohol on him and all he could ponder was his <laughs> dead wife who was killed by a drunk driver and the infiniteness of space and how alone we are. <laughs> he's 92. I think it was the infinite uh abyss of space the where first he's thing like didn't Oh help. my god, I'm so close to the end. Like going to space at 99. Bad 92. move. 92. Well, he's 92 now, yeah. Yeah. Uh yeah. What, what did he say about space that it was depressing, that it was just yeah, boring? something like, about there's, the there's boring. It's empty. There's nothing out here. There's nothing for us. It's just this world. That's it. Like that was kind of his his takeaway. It feels like he's right, doesn't it? He's right. Of course he's yeah. right. <laughs> He's All right the other planets like, suck. They're really just dog. If the if our solar system was a neighborhood, we're in the one nice house. The rest yes. of it's trash. The idea that we should take Mars and like colonize it as a backup planet in case no. we ruin this one. There is no. no universe in which Mars is a better starting point than Earth for humans. Yeah, for fixing things. Like like I do yeah. like the idea, however, of like. Having being somewhere else, even if it is shitty, you know, you, it, it's a hmm. storm shelter of a planet. Like maybe the Earth gets hit and like fucked up for a generation or two, but there's enough people underground living in some shit city on Mars that they, all right, the Earth, hit, the saddle, they're looking at satellite readings. The Earth seems to have stabilized. The oceans have receded. Let's fly back or something. Like maybe that, but Venus seems better for that. Whenever I hear them talk about Venus, they Venus say is that terrible. No. Um, so the hot up in one? the. It's yeah, if you're on if, if you're on the ground, it's like <laughs> 900 degrees. It melts lead down there. But okay. up high in the atmosphere, there's a there's a layer in the atmosphere that you could kind of open the window and you wouldn't die instantly. There's like a layer, level of atmosphere. <laughs> <I'm sold. laughs> you're making yeah, you're really selling. This it. is this is his example of the best we've got. Other no, than there's our, a whole no. There's if a whole you're plan. thirty thousand feet up, you can briefly open a window and not immediately asphyxiate. Uh, hear me, yes, hear me out. Well, I mean, Mars is is worse. I mean, than you'll want right? to flush out all the sulfur and, and like <laughs> yeah. I don't know. No, you, you get fire. out of the sulfur layer. No, but you but Woody, you don't understand. Layer. Once we've excavated Mars and Venus in a way that far out paces even what we've done on our own planet for our entire existence it'll yeah. be smooth sailing nice <laughs> oh there's it'll no be... terraforming there's it, it there's what no are we gonna do live in tents you would live in airships on venus is what the the like the plan would be you'd be well then why not just live on a ship atmosphere. that's floating around the earth because you want to go to another planet and explore it taylor like, like you're, you're the guy who stays home when christopher columbus takes off why don't you just stay here no, because you, you going? Be, the existence of islands and shit, you, they knew they would find yeah, something neat. What kind of fucking Italian are you? <laughs> Not <laughs> one. <laughs> yeah. just, I wouldn't want to go to Venus or fucking Mars. Like, like maybe if it was like for all mankind, that seems like a pretty decent Mars to go check out. They've got like porn and pussy and alcohol and rovers and shit. Like, it seems like a good time. They have I mean, you're living things. in a. It seems better than being an American nuclear submariner. To me like you've they're got glamping orders basically to... like like they're, like they're, they're basically living as rough as somebody with a tow behind rv would live mm -hmm. with high yeah. stakes high stakes shitty living you can't just pull over at a bucky's like you die hmm. well i mean sure <laughs> yes <so> wrong <laughs> but uh all right, all right, I, I get your point i get your point but what do you uh, think chris would you are there any good planets, or do we need to fix? We need to take care of this one we're on, right? Some would say, um, yeah. I, honestly, <laughs> just just keep say. moving inward. Just just like Ben Shapiro said, you just sell your house if you live down on the coast, and everything will be fine. Yes, you just move up to Iowa. To who? A fishery? Like, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's gonna buy my house that's gonna be under eight meters of water? I know, right? Like, yeah. Honestly, mm -hmm. that's why I like living in the Midwest because I feel like I'm safe for now. Until I mean, until the atmosphere catches on fire or whatever is going to happen when we are oh, living yeah. on other planets. But, um, but yeah, that's what my plan is to just stay put for now. I think that's smart. And since we're Midwest boys, like we've got like a century lead time, I would imagine. Yeah. Like, if New York starts going underwater, we got forever. That's their problem. Dude, they, they were by you until okay. we're like shattering at least. 
Uh, I don't know what the elevation is. I know we actually, I saw this, this graph of sea level and we get fucked up by the Mississippi way faster than you would think. Like, I guess that big river getting, getting out of control creates a lot of basins, but that's not, I don't think that's going to happen. I don't think we're going to suddenly be in some weird archipelago water world. Taylor, you're at 466 feet. Like I'm at 290. Like just because you're inland a lot, that's <laughs> I don't know. I see that map. There's a lot of land, <laughs> <laughs> and that's how it works. No, you're right. Like when I when I started doing that graph, I'm like, I'm yeah, we're safe, and it's like oh, I'm no. one thousand feet. You're higher than northern Atlanta. Illinois. At. I'm higher than either of you. It's a thousand feet here in Atlanta. And you're in uh, Illinois. I, okay, I so mean. Chris, you're gonna get fucked up by the Mississippi too, or the Great Lakes. I don't know how that would work. Northern it, Illinois. Northern Illinois. I don't know how much Impossible. further north Chicago or how much higher elevation Chicago is than St. Louis. That's it's got to be Taylor's problem. Tens, if of, tens, tens of feet. <laughs> I'm going to guess <laughs> 630 feet. But if we're a, if we're like apocalypse proofing our like, uh, five ninety area we live, well. Ooh, not too bad. I'm so would be in trouble because of the missile silos nice. out there, right? Like, I think there's a lot there's a lot of nuclear missile silos. So if there's a full scale exchange between us and the Russians, then they like pepper you pretty good. Yeah, you did show me that graphic, but that's a problem for another day, friend. Like, you have a basement, right? Yeah, I got a, I got a basement. <laughs> just go high. in there and then just let the nuclear fallout just wash over. It probably kill bacteria. Kyle's just here to me. That's not like a big video. Deal. It's just like put it's your absolutely not a big deal with modern hydrogen bombs. They burn up. They're not. They're, they're not going to irradiate the area for generations. They 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 use all the fuel. It's gone. What if they use a scary bomb though? What if they fuck our asses what with a really a sc- bad one? It's like a hydrogen bomb, the biggest <laughs> ones scary. we have. <laughs> Wait, a hydrogen um, bomb's not the scary one. It, that's different it than a nuclear scary. bomb, right? That's Chris, uh, just so you know, Chris, Kyle is a new. I have fallout blown denier. Kyle's mind with my stupidity. I don't think I understand. So a hydrogen bomb is a thermonuclear weapon. It, it differs from the fission devices like uh, they used in World War II mm-hmm. because it uses first high explosive that gets the fission explosion going off. Mm-hmm. And then the fission explosion is the one that sets off the fusion explosion, which is like the okay, same shit our sun does. I okay. saw the movie. And you, it, uh, that's a hydrogen bomb. That's how hydrogen bomb works. It's, 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 so and, when you uh, say hydrogen bomb, I should think nuclear bomb. Yeah. Yes. yes. Yes, those so are the ones we I'm use. Fine. Those are the you're modern That's what modern saying. nuclear okay. weapons. Right. I think for like the last fifty years or so have been hydrogen bombs. You know, like the ones if, that are on the missiles and the mergs and everything. Of our audience already knew that. They, I, like, do eighty percent of them think I'm a moron right now? A hundred percent? No, I don't think anybody thinks you're a moron. It's a it's eh, a little eclectic fact about nuclear weapons, dude. So um, sometimes there will be a comment from someone who's like, you know. I work in the nuclear power industry and I hate all three of them so much. <laughs> and it'll be like 2,000 hey, upvotes. So like, there, there are 15 reasons they're all wrong. And I'll like see I'll see part of that comment and be like, nah, don't care. Like, I'm, not running. I'm dug in. I'm dug in. Nukes are the worst thing ever and they're very scary. And Kyle with his fucking, with his maths isn't going to convince think me. We have a power it's a plant, Google like- search away. Yeah. Like 10 miles away from me, we have yeah. a power plant. And my What's fear as a kid was always like, a plane's going to land in that and we're going to be toast. And that was like, I found that that was like every kid in my school's fear was that that power plant was going to get attacked and we were going to be, it was like 30 miles each direction, which is going to be wiped out. Yeah, and I remember I thinking about that. Quite the case. Then it didn't seem like, it was like, well, this doesn't seem to really happen ever. Except yeah. for that one <laughs> fucking Soviet run bullshit one. And then Japan... Putting like, island, yeah. didn't Japan put a, yeah, they put I, a, I raised, a nuclear reactor in a volcano? Something absurd. Yeah, I grew up like 100, 150 miles from a three mile island. So yeah. it was on our mind, maybe more than yours. Yeah. Plus, I'm older. Yeah. Yeah, you just got to keep some water on that thing. You know, everything will be fine. Yeah. And you need water on it anyway. You make the steam, make, make the world go round. Mm. You know? So they say. Yeah. I, uh, I was, since it is 2024, I came up with a couple of small predictions. I wanted to get them out on the out in front of the public yeah. so people Let's have heard predictions. me say it. I'm sure Chris has some. People All right, my number one prediction out. for 2024: China invades Taiwan. This is the year China, uh, the Great Dragon awakens, or, or the, the the tiger, or whatever they are, um, and they they, they invade <laughs> Taiwan. Um, there's an exchange of fire, and they're repelled. <laughs> but there's a weird DMZ then. Um, what is it? this? Says Taylor. Mar- what does this mean? <laughs> what does oh. this mean? <laughs> oh, Taylor Swift. Taylor Swift marries uh, the Kelsey guy. 
they get married this year. That happens. That's like a, that. a, 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 a um, the December wedding, maybe. And sad but true, Volodymyr Zelensky dies this year. He will be assassinated or uh, in an airstrike or perhaps poisoned, but he will uh, unfortunately leave us. Those are my predictions for 2024. Uh, if you can find a way to put money on those, I advise you get after it now. They're going to happen. You're predicting China resoundingly defeat? No, not even just just it sort rebuffed. of off a little bit. You're just saying so. You're not saying full rebuffed. On? Oh, they they attempt but are rebuffed. Okay, <laughs> I I say right. they don't do that this year. Oh, That's- I wonder what the odds are on that one. Probably heavily in your fucking favor. <laughs> <laughs> No, yeah. I, I wrote stuff down too. I, I thought about that, just like picking the opposite of all of yours, because obviously the predictions are easier to get us on the negative side. Uh, I was thinking cyber trucks. There's going to be some fucking hold up, and those are not going to be shipping out in mass to consumers. It'll just be the little trickle that we've seen so far, just little bits here and there, little little like social media posts. But you're not going to be looking around on the street and seeing tons of them the way you see regular Teslas. I would I go against so. that. I think they'll be out in like limited production, like a quarter million cars will get out in like a decent amount of time. Because like once they're making them, they're making them, right? It's all automated. Or there'll be some some safety fucking thing, reg- like, regulation or safety thing where they're like, oh, it turns out we can't let solid steel bulletproof trucks with right angles run into normal cars. Frankly, I blame that on why it looks so bad and why it performs so bad. Like them, he had a cool idea. But they were like, dude, this isn't safe at all. Do this, make it this wide, put this much here, there, and the other. And he's like, oh, well, then it kind of works like yeah. shit. And they're like, yeah, yeah. And he just had to do it. Oh, I wrote another prediction down. Tell me. I want to hear it. All right. Shaq dies in a helicopter crash. Oh, oh my God. How original. Kobe. Mm-hmm. Yep. <laughs> he goes he out the same way as he his He chases partner. Kobe again. Yep. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost poetic. <laughs> never so never could happen. let him one up. This is a close one. It'll happen before the end of January. God damn. Oh my goodness. This it's... one Jack, Jack, stay out of the air. <laughs> stay, stay out of the air. Jack. Jack, we don't want to see this happen. For your own safety. Surface the... streets only, Shaq. Yes, and, and, exactly. But then like I, what if a helicopter hit his limo? And how, how, I'd be coming to you for lottery picks and stuff if Shaq dies in a helicopter crash, because that's Dude, if Shaq did unlikely. die in a helicopter crash before the end of January, I bet someone would knock at my door. Like the FBI, <laughs> they'd be like, "We're reopening our our uh, psychic division. <laughs> we need you. <laughs> we need you to try out." And his head's even bigger than we imagined. Perfect. <laughs> the guy, the guy at the door goes, "Taylor," and like some hot blonde behind him with a weird jumpsuit goes, "Yes." Yes, <laughs> <laughs> and you're like, <laughs> and it turns out like you're all fake, and you're all just fraudsters. All you've, just got, you've got one CIA uh, agent just completely fool funding the project. You're all looking. <laughs> you gotta do that. Like, well, I'm gonna need forty billion dollars, and it's my understanding there's currently a wonderful island unoccupied <laughs> in the Little St. James, Little St. Taylor Island. Re- return very school. private. Yeah. Camera system. They do when they pull up. You gotta be like, "Yeah, what took you so long?" I turned Little Saint Taylor Island into a school for wayward psychics, and then before I know it, I'm like, "Fuck, pedophiles got in again. (laughs) I need to (laughs) get them out of here." They telepathically told me they're being molested by by Jeffrey Epstein. Hold Let's let's talk about. Oh, any more predict after predictions? Let's do predictions. uh, Pedophiles. uh, The Maple Leafs win the Stanley Cup. Lethal Fuck? Company remains popular and then is never played again after a de- a, the sole dev is embroiled in some sort of controversy in March. Someone told me, and I didn't look into it, that the only dev for Lethal Company is a furry. And we know that means good things. He's a weirdo. So, so that's something most else devs. Go on. That's most developers. <laughs> like, like I, I promise you, that, that's most people with computer science degrees, frankly. Like, How about like, this prediction? Africa does not. Get it shit Except together. Except for Woody, of course. <laughs> 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 still, still going to be really not a great place to live. So that's, that's prediction. Oh, the Braves have a historically successful season, and Kyle comes crawling back. That will Ooh. not fucking happen. I won't watch a single game. They may one. indeed have an amazing <laughs> season. And it's they- funny, too. It's better than anything I have. <laughs> uh, Chiefs lose Two in a row, and I'll come back. In the Super Bowl. Uh, there's a new George Floyd in July. Okay, I like that. Yeah. Mm-hmm. New one of those. Going to kick things off, going to get going to get seedy, going to get nasty. What race again. will this one be? Black. 
Oh, again. Yeah. New George but more Floyd. of a like a reboot. Like a sequel. reboot. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Could be a woman this time. Could go Ghostbusters with it. <gasps> oh. We don't know. But that that sort of thing is going to happen. Uh, Amazon is going to cancel the third season or never announce the extension of a third season of the Lord of the Rings show because it was not successful. They wanted five at first, and now they still haven't even ordered three. So we'll see. I think they're going to ditch it that. Hope That'd it fails. Uh, Kanye is going to have a music video where he either has a Hitler mustache or the backup dancers will have something akin to like a quasi SS uniform. Mm. I think like yeah, I think that one's a kind of a good guess. I could see him bringing back the Michael Jordan Hitler mustache or at least mm. trying to because he Larry thinks Bird. you have to be like a Larry Bird. I didn't know Larry Bird did it, but he's very famous too. Larry Bird, Michael Jordan, Hitler. You got to think a lot of yourself in order to go back to that that little mustache well. And I think Kanye fits that bill. I could see him doing it. I agree. OK, I like that one. I like we're going to get a, we're going to get a new pope. Old pope's old hat. We're getting rid of him. Really? Mm -hmm. He's going to retire. Will the new pope Nobody's be more happy. progressive or less progressive? A return to austerity or more progression down the filthy, filthy road that this pope has taken us down? <laughs> morally bankrupt, <laughs> this disgusting false prophet. Yes, I don't. Maybe uh, I didn't think that far into it. I just thought new pope. Let's say he's tr more traditional. Let's say that I, one. I, more conservative mm -hmm. pope. I, I okay. like that. I, I think that's that might be a safer option. Mm -hmm. uh, they learned their lesson. Let's see. Pacers win the NBA championship. What the fuck? I just went to the sta standings and was like, who's kind of like fifth place? Them. And then just <laughs> <laughs> fifth well, who's, place uh, in the who's John Morant on? Who, whose team is that? The Grizzlies, the Memphis Grizzlies. Grizzlies win this year. Dad, okay. if I knew John Morant, I don't, I don't know who that is. But he must uh, be great for you to he's know. He's a he skinny guy, very athletic, and likes to pose with he's guns a gun on tuber. Instagram. <laughs> he's, oh, a he's, gun a, he's a gun guy. All right, I'll, I'll pull for him. <laughs> yeah, he's not the good kind of gun guy. He's a irresponsible, look how oh, cool I am, Instagram uh, video kind. This is a one for you, Kyle. I'm predicting that you get semi into collecting signed television and movie memorabilia. I think that the Star Trek <laughs> thing oh. kind of itched a little... It scratched scratch a little itch for you, yeah. and now you're like, man, I, I would really like something from Sopranos. Oh, you know, something from The Wire that would be neat. Oh, you know, this isn't even that expensive. I, I can see I'd be more likely. A of those. I, I could see myself getting more into the Star Trek stuff. It's like, all right, I got the TNG crew. I got all their signatures. I want the Deep Space Nine crew now. Maybe I want something Kirk touched once. Yes. Maybe I want the bra that like one of those green bitches wore. I could see that. Yep, that's part of it. If you start collecting that stuff, it counts. Okay. Uh. I'm gonna I'm gonna, gonna start sending stuff to you <laughs> like on Amazon. <laughs> make it true. <laughs> make it true. Oh yeah. no, not that. Please not don't. That's more free collector's <laughs> items. <laughs> oh, what about? Oh, there's only three left in existence. I'm such an idiot. <laughs> every, every week, Kyle's pretending really to be me. mad. I'm losing my ass on this back pile. <laughs> <laughs> I'm losing you'll my have, ass. You'll I'm have losing. To save this one. It was four thousand dollars. I'm getting of him dollars. so good. Thousands of dollars a month on this troll. You're getting fucked up. Uh. Next gen consoles. They announce a new one. What? Already? I don't know. No, I, I couldn't. You don't think so? All right. These, these are pretty new. Oh, Lindsey Graham comes out of the closet. <laughs> he's finally loud and proud. Mm. Never. Mm, Never. Yeah. He's gonna try and try and endear himself to a new set of fans when it becomes clear his old ones don't like him. He's gonna talk and be like, "If you could only see the things I've done in the Capitol building." Oh. <laughs> Sometimes late at night, I sneak up to the top of the Washington Monument and just sit. <laughs> Just slide <laughs> just, on down. And just slide just, on down. <laughs> People walk over there the next day and say, the Washington Monument smells funny, and I laugh. <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> yeah. Um, it's aluminum up there. Yeah, those are all the good ones. All those right. All I don't good have ones. any good ones, but I do have some. Uh, Trump picks a female running mate. I, think I agree. Israel gets pressured by the U.S. to end the war. Does, already are and then palestine hits them again <laughs> that's my call um x All formerly known as twitter dramatically declines in usage artificial intelligence leaves the news and turns out just to be a neato search engine that writes unreliable things hmm. i don't think so and people I are fooled by deep fakes during this election cycle a lot 
Yeah. People, people already get got by <laughs> yeah. those pretty good. A lot of them are getting, like, if they don't fuck better. up on fingers, it's it can be hard. They're getting better when at they, fingers, when, too. When they, get, when they get, like, the forearm ratio down, like, arm length and fingers, it's going to be real I've got three more for us, though. Taylor gets a steady girlfriend. Kyle has shirtless pics that go viral on the internet again. And Woody breaks a bone. No, well, that's you can control that one. You can. Help <laughs> <laughs> me, December thirty first, and you're gonna have your your finger in a door jam, <laughs> ready, to, ready to finish it. Busting my me. jaw open. Yeah, I think like they're bones technically. So I don't. True. I the the war ones. I think you're probably correct on on a couple of those. Mm-hmm. I don't see I don't see Twitter going down, especially in an election year. I think I think uh, traffic will go up. Uh, pretty significant revenues will remain will remain terrible <laughs> uh, you might be right though you know I, I almost say- said trump rejoins twitter which would have countered my Didn't own he already point. yeah one he is time. he just doesn't he, he doesn't use post I yeah think. he got unblocked or unbanned or whatever he's allowed he yeah he was it, actually they, they almost begged him to come back like to my eye anyway yeah mm-hmm. well i mean he was like the biggest poster of all time and so they wanted him Make I love seeing his 2012 tweets pop up where he's like talking about Kristen Stewart and Robert Pattinson and he's like super involved yeah. in their love life during the Twilight days and he's just like constantly <laughs> tweeting about that. That's my favorite shit to see pop up. What is what was his take on it? Was it like Kristen? He and- thinks Robert should leave Kristen. Like he's like team Robert. He's like you don't deserve her or she doesn't deserve you and <laughs> like more involved than you would think he was. <laughs> That's so funny. He watches a lot of TV. Yeah. yeah. He's all about TV. He mm-hmm. loves it. He's, a, he's an he's expert a, in romance uh, also. The Israel prediction. Here's what I think happens there. We are already telling them to chill, but like they're not going to chill. They're not going to chill. They're going to keep it up. You know what? I heard them bring up. They're talking about packing the Palestinians up and sending them to the Congo. The Israelis are talking about getting the, getting the Palestinians, rounding them up, and sending them to the Congo. And huh. I think maybe the Congo is receptive because they're, like, <laughs> they're like, how could it get any worse? It is yeah, going yeah. so honestly terrible here. That's going to counter Taylor's prediction of Africa not getting it together. Clearly, <laughs> once the Palestinians oh. get there, they're going to do well. The Palestinians are going to show up in the Congo and be like, oh, my God, who's bombing you guys? <laughs> <laughs> it is just kind of shit here. <laughs> <laughs> like we got a different problem yeah the, uh, the yeah, thought behind the israel thing i bet biden puts enough pressure on israel to make them chill because he needs that to happen to help him in the election i think israel is going to do what they want to do and i think biden's uh, overlords won't allow that sort of thing to happen and they are just going to keep doing whatever they want over there it doesn't seem and, like they're uh, really pushing that hard like against like biden, biden to calm yeah. down no they're really yeah, like they're not like like everyone's like, hey, maybe we should like cool them down. And they're like, no, it's it's fine. Their yeah, words don't match their act- shit. Biden's mm-hmm. words don't match his actions. He's like, hey, you know, you guys should really cool it off with all this aggression. But here's some more missiles in case you don't. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Just that's just politics being like, oh, I want to have plausible deniability to say I didn't like this. But then we funded it the whole way. How about you, Chris? Any? any I, only have, I only have two predictions. One. Okay. And this isn't this isn't my original prediction, but I do stand b- behind it. Um, mm. I think I don't think Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey will get married. I think they will break up, and Taylor Swift will buy the Chiefs <laughs> <laughs> and move them far away or something. I, I think she can at this point. She ruins and the Chiefs, trades she them is away. A billionaire. Yeah. So yeah, I think she could. No, she couldn't <laughs> buy the Chiefs. You got to be like high level billionaire and they have to approve you i think the winnipeg chiefs is, uh, are not gonna play this sunday they've all decided they've had enough of taylor swift and her ridiculous road games <laughs> first football think... game played in antarctica what were they thinking <laughs> <laughs> i think either that or this one um i i oh. scrolled through the uh the subreddit a little bit before coming on tonight and mm-hmm. i noticed that um only Ease me blade has been up to some hijinks mm-hmm. and yeah, i don't is. think Honestly, I would say I don't think much is going to come of him after this year. I think he's probably going to not survive. But I also think he's going to prove everyone wrong and survive. Because <laughs> 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 at this uh, point, I don't. I saw the one of him in a motel recently. I think it was New Year's getting kicked out and by the police. He was getting swatted. 
I yeah. saw a clip. Was of that? that? Yeah. So you say swatted. Do you know more than that video? Because to well, me, that was it looked the hotel like a wellness called the, check. Yeah, the hotel know, called they the cops to him. kick him out. They, they swat. The comments claim of that video okay. claim mm-hmm. that he'd been swatted out of one place, mm-hmm. and and now he was getting swatted out of this place, and like like that's a regular thing that just happens. I don't know yeah, why the okay. hotel would be doing a wellness check. From what I saw, sitting there comatose. Oh, I didn't say hotel. In a I room. thought a viewer called the police oh. and said, "Hey, there's this guy at this location. I'm not sure he's okay. Can you check yeah. on him?" That, which is different than swatted, but close to it. From what I saw, he was he got kicked out of the first place because they kept calling. Like people kept finding the motel, calling him. In the second mm-hmm. place, he was just being loud, and they were like saying, "Hey, we got a noise complaint. You got to get out." And then they called the cops. That's what I thought oh. happened. Okay. Yeah. Okay. The comments okay. may have misled yeah. me. Then maybe he. I guess because because I was even thinking. Well, they wouldn't do that. Yeah, they swat him in. How do they figure out what motel he's staying in? Because it's very. They're all the same background. Mm-hmm. You know, it's, it's like yeah. how do they know? I, I saw but a he comment was, on one of those where people were like, "How are these internet sleuths finding his hotel every single time?" And a commenter was like, "Because he shows it." Every <laughs> single time he'll mm-hmm. lift up the room service menu and then tilt the camera and like in a way that you can just see the or, address, like, you know, it'll show partially out the window and it'll say best Western. And he'll be talking about how he's at the best Western in North Kansas city or whatever the fuck. And then they, they just immediately try and, for, get it and find it out for the people that don't know what we're talking about. Uh, blade was like doing his stream, uh, in a motel, like we said, and he is like comatose drunk. And the mm-hmm. cops are outside the sliding door and they're like, Brian, Brian, you okay? And he's like non responsive drunk. He's like holding, like, I don't know, a piece of paper in his hand, doesn't matter. And like, they're, they're like taking it out of his hand. Like, like he's just not there. He's so drunk. I've, I've never been that drunk, I don't think. <laughs> you can't even like decipher, like, kind of decipher what he's saying. It's that bad. Yeah. yeah. People are like donating with like messages saying, like, trying to get trying to get him killed it seems like they're like i yeah. have a glock if you yeah. come in i will shoot you and it's like three dollars yeah <laughs> three dollars to do that yeah that, like as they're talking to him that is absurd they're like hey pigs i dare you come in i'm locked <laughs> and i'm loaded you can't stop me 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 jjj that must be him look at these dumb fucking cops out there like you hear what he said lock and load boys we got a Oh, Skyborg on the other side of this doorway, <laughs> and we got a blast. <laughs> we got a real Terminator on the other side. Listen to that robot. This is remember, boys. This is not have a soul. Do not believe it's lies. Break down the door. It's with going to beg shield. you for mercy. I did. I saw. In, in this clip, the one I saw, he was like sitting in a chair, like kind of nodding down entirely out, and then I saw cops come in, and it wasn't even like. Like, he couldn't have been combative or resistant to anything, even if he mm-hmm. wanted to. He was so drunk. Like, immediately, the like, they tipped over the camera, and the cops were like, uh, we need to get a medic up here. Sir, how much have you had to drink? Are you all right? Are you understanding us? Are you there? Like, are you okay? Are you harmed? Like, They took him to yeah. the hospital, I think. I bet they did, because he wasn't uh, wasn't responsive, at least in that short clip oh, I bet that I saw. Exp- they put him I have his device? phone number. Do you think there's any chance this old phone number is still right? There's no way. Like I have, I bet he's had to go through. I, actually, that's a good bet. Thing. I bet he doesn't give a fuck. I bet that's his real number. That from from 11, 12 years ago, dude. He yeah. he's been messed with so much. I he has to have a new number. I bet he doesn't give a shit. I no, don't call him. <laughs> Bro's calling him. Bro's calling him. I love it. Um, <laughs> did you? He's got Brian. Hello. Is this Brian? So this is the police. <laughs> this is yeah. <laughs> told you. Dude, I told you. The man has the same phone still number. number. <laughs> I can't. <laughs> Say it again. This is great. <laughs> this is great. You kept it over the years. Are you okay? Like I obviously you went viral. Tell it. Maybe tell him he's on the show. We can't hear him though. All right. Yeah, that's fair. That's I don't know. Right. I'm just saying, I was on PKA and, and they got to talking about you and I was like, I wonder if this number is still right. Tell him we love him and we, we hope he's doing well. Or I do anyway. Well, 
You know, I don't, <laughs> yeah. I love, yeah. love the sinner, not the sin. You know what I mean? Are you in trouble? <laughs> it, like the police, everything's fine? Love the sinner, not the sin. I, just, hate, I hate to miss sinner, this tender moment, but I do have to run to the bathroom real quick. Go yeah, for yeah, it, yeah, go for I it. hope I don't miss anything too sweet. Mm -hmm. uh, Woody yeah. will come back to us with some tidbits after this, I'm sure. He will, uh, hopefully. A uh, little, little juicy gossip. Little yeah. Juicy gossip, maybe. The, that's so like funny it. he has the same fucking phone number they said you were drunk years Wait, ago. how slanderous <laughs> <laughs> i told you there's no way in hell he well, I, I should let you go I'm, I'm doing my show right now i was just thinking about you and dude i hope you turn out okay so <laughs> 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 yeah, well, yeah, but they can't hear you. <laughs> they can't. Yeah. Hear you. <laughs> hope you turn out okay. Just yeah. Hey, we do hope he turns out okay. All know? right, man. Like, like, I'll talk to you later, dude. He's got to. He's got to get on the the chicken and broccoli, bro. That's dude, that number was right. I'm shocked. He really yeah. doesn't. He's ignored a lot of calls over the years. Like, Probably just, he saw me. Not on that the one. Right Look there. at that. Boom. Yeah, he he picked it right up. I don't know if I'm in his contacts. He's in mine, obviously, or if it's just the like caller ID. Hundred percent. But he was like, "Oh, I'll answer this and see if it's Woody." And there, I hope I didn't ruin the show or anything. But no, uh, no, that was fun. No, I love that. No, I, I don't know. I worry for him. I know. I know the internet will hate me, or at least some of them will, for not. I don't know, blasting him every time I hear of his name. But I, I know the old blade from 15 years ago, and I yeah. That's the one I root for. for yeah, yeah, I I feel the exact same way. I, I kind of jokingly told Taylor, like, you know, hate, I, uh, love the sinner, hate the sin. But that's kind of <laughs> where I am, if I'm being honest. It's like, man, that guy's got his demons, uh, you know, real demons that you can see that come in liquid form, like always on his fucking Spirits. back, you know. And then it's reinforced by the. That's kind of what he does for a living <laughs> now is drink is drink uh, liquor professionally. And it's like, how are you gonna beat that demon? The one that's like stealing from your left pocket to and putting the money in your right it's it's uh it's wow. a rough one yeah that's well not phrased. a good track to go like everybody who ends up drinking for a living like doing donos for alcohol there's no way to keep that together like it's it will fall apart there's just and, no and if you're an alcoholic that must be the most attractive gig on the planet you're like shit they're paying me to do what i lust to do it, it like imagine if my live streaming job was just receiving blowjobs yeah. <laughs> here we go again uh, oh, i'd just be sitting there on stream like oh they hit the candy counter again ha ha <laughs> <laughs> oh no the you hit the the hourly chip goal you have to watch me eat a whole <laughs> yeah so bag I, of lays. I mean it, on one hand you could say it's pretty predictable that that wasn't going to have that wasn't going to turn out well uh drinking for money uh, but you can also see how someone like Blade is so susceptible to that gig and how it took him where he's gone. And he sounded good, by the way. He was like completely coherent and um, good. I don't know how to say with it in a better way. Like he was, he was sharp. He so did, mm -hmm. seemingly must have been. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But yeah. oh, and and he said they uh, they took him. He said uh, they took him to a hospital because they said he was drunk. And I was like, they said that how slanderous. That's what that. Was <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> and. Uh, and I don't think he's in any kind of trouble. They just kind of evaluated him and released yeah. him as he sobered up. It sounded like so. Mm. Yeah, I, I really don't know that much about what he's up to overall, other than it seems like when I see clips of him, it's always in a new hotel or a new place. Always piss on the floor. Always is that part piss, true? Piss abounds. Yeah, I have There's seen a few multiple clips. clips. I, saw. <laughs> I saw a clip of him peeing outside of like a Marriott. Like right out front, like had a room in the Marriott, peed outside. <laughs> like you know, mm. there's a bathroom there. Use your bathroom. That's what it's there for. That's what you're paying for when you go to. Would hotel. you like a? Would you like a slightly new topic? Sure, uh, sure. There, this one's I, heavy for me. Yeah, I know. I feel the same way. I don't. I don't. Uh, Kanye made some news. I don't think you could even show the pictures that Kanye uploaded of his wife here. On, yeah. Thankfully, on, I've on, seen them. Oh my goodness! <laughs> um, so yeah, Kanye uh, floods Instagram with Bianca pics. His wife is—they're married, right? His new wife, uh, Bianca. I think my so. God, she looks like an alien crafted her from sexiness and sent her here for Kanye. Dude. She is so ridiculously proportioned. She looks like a sex doll, and I mean that in the most wonderful way. 
That mm -hmm. woman doesn't look real. That's an incredible physique. It's the kind of physique that you're like, how much how much underpinning does that have? But she's not wearing any goddamn clothes ever. No. So you know the answer Dude, is none. Did he just post these? Yeah. Dude, like, it's gonna yeah. be the year of yay. That's what it's gonna be. Can you say coming. those words again? The, the year, year of yay. Kanye. Oh, yeah, okay. yeah, he's he's gonna he's gonna storm back onto the scene. Everybody's gonna see those pictures and be like, This guy rules. Look at his his gal, hot as fuck. Dude, she's an upgrade from the best version of Kim Kardashian. Oh, yeah. I'm told Kim Kardashian is actually really cool inside. She like she's very smart and she does great things with charity. And uh, I don't you know, know she offers that. more than just sex doll. But this one offers sex doll. And that's a lot. And by the way, like I didn't see Kim Kardashian blow this guy on a boat. I didn't see Kim Kardashian just like that was Ray J. Every <laughs> make every sexual fantasy he had come true. This woman seems to exist to please. Yay. Yeah. He's That's on the Italian Riviera getting blown by the hottest. Uh, hot, like, she, she comes to America. I think she might be the hottest woman in America. I did I, see he was like slamming her publicly for not being pregnant. Oh, I thought like that's, that's, that's the most recent thing I saw. If he keeps slamming her publicly, she will. Yeah. Be. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, good for him. She's hot as fuck. Ridiculous. Dude. And like, like everyone has their own bullseye, right? Like I, I see her boobs and like they're too big. But who else says that? It's just me. She, I can just see she's somebody's version of a ten out of ten. Yeah, Kanye's probably. Um, she looks so much like Kim that it's, uh, it's shocking. Uh, like, like she's, she's like, an, I think it's an upgrade, like physically and like aesthetically. Um, yeah, she does look like, like like a sex doll or something. Like, if you ordered your He's real doll to those dimensions, I'd be like, come on, man. Like, why wouldn't you get it to be realistic? So you could like, you're already pretending like, what the fuck? Like, oh, you might as yeah. well put a dragon tail on it or something. Can you That's imagine the, the outrage if they took an exact one-to-one -one model of her and put her in a video game in the year of our Lord, 2023? <laughs> this is right. unrealistic. <laughs> we need an ugly woman with a big, <laughs> broad man face. Like Mary no. Jane and the new Spider Man, is have you what, seen is her? Ugly now? Oh, you don't know the lore. I, oh have, my I've god, never Spider Man. So, nobody, it? so nobody could figure out why a Mary Jane in the new Spider Man video game is like this big, like oh, man looking redheaded ginger fuck, this big broad face, and they're like posted a picture of one of the devs, and it it's like her. It's like this ugly redheaded woman. She's and I say, uh, yeah, she put herself in the video Zach, game. can you find a picture of the Spider-Man dev and the... It's like the... Mary Jane. What's that cartoon? That uh, Spider-Man. No, I'm powder, thinking of the... Powder, powder, powder Puff Girls. Girls. Yeah, yeah like we the, talked where, about this before. Yeah. Okay, yeah, we're like... I, I'm pretty sure like one of the guys like put himself in that show. Dude made himself jacked so he could get with Bubbles, <laughs> yeah. the, the seven-year-old protagonist of the, of the show. Well, okay, actually, technically, they're, 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 they're actually adults. They're actually... Yeah. yeah, he's actually eons old. Who's the one in the middle? I'm confused. Uh, I can't tell who's in the middle behind all those filters. Let, you, find <laughs> the green, you want to find the green text photo, Zach. That way you get like the, uh, the girl the without all the filters. Middle one's yeah, that's too many person. filters. Too many yeah, but filters. she's she's been cartoonized by her Snapchat filter. Look at um, the four chan green text. That's how we'll know it's good. <laughs> <laughs> that's how you know it's real. We're not trying to real. we're not trying to disprove what I just said, Zach. We're trying to support it. Yeah. <laughs> one from <laughs> I'm sure he's looking. I, I don't. Board. I saw what Kyle saw, and she looked much more like the game character. The game character was actually a little uglier than the dev, but it wasn't this dramatically different. Yeah, the game characters. Why can't we just have hot people in movies and video games? Why can't we have that? What about also made... Steve Buscemi? There we go. Yeah, See, that... now we're talking. Uh... That's not a coincidence. <laughs> Look at that <laughs> wide ass. You don't face. think? No, I don't think so. <laughs> <laughs> Look at those thin. Now I'm a bit of a conspiracy theorist, but this is intentional, folks. <laughs> I got, I've got better lips than Mary Jane. That's a problem. All right. Look at those thin little, like like old white woman lips. All right, that Little big wide lip. jaw, like she's about to bite me. It's terrible. Is, is it's it terrible. possible the video game character is in an unflattering pose? Like maybe she's slightly better looking. Why are her eyes? Because she's asymmetrical uh, in the mouth. Mm, and the... I see. Both of them are. They yeah, kind of made like all the characters like look worse. Like the old Peter looked much more like a normal 
just guy and then they yeah. i think when they did the uh the remaster or whatever the second one they just made him look weird yeah like, i don't know that there's a probably a side by side but i hmm. i'm sure there are a lot better Thank there you, are more examples sex if there are more examples of fucking just uggo video game characters that we're being forced to deal with now put those up <laughs> on the screen so we can keep so we can look keep up Nicki on. minaj and call of duty that's one they they call of duty cannot get like women right when they do these like they did they did starlight from the boys and then they did Nicki minaj and they don't look like people really yeah yeah but, like the homelander looks good black noir looks good like all the other but like they're in call when of they, duty i had no idea yeah they everyone's in call of duty now. um yeah call is a joke can you be them <laughs> <'Cause> <laughs> this sounds like mortal Kombat to me no it's just like multiplayer and warzone and all that stuff but um yeah you can be i think they had black noir Homelander and Starlight, and hmm. of course, I mean, as for some you reason, Starlight's would. ugly in it. I feel like Starlight they, has the smallest hitbox. That's who I want to be. Nicki Minaj does not. Tightest hitbox. Oh, the Snoop Dogg. How could I forget Snoop Dogg? Yeah, <laughs> him too. <laughs> well, at least Snoop Dogg plays the fucking game, right? Like I, I see him streaming oh, the game. Mm. Um, but but Nicki Minaj looks like I don't know, maybe like Wesley Snipes in Birdcage. Like yeah, it looks like, nothing not... like her. But Snoop Dogg looks just like Snoop Dogg. Wow. wow. Look, at, look at that. Is that supposed wow. to be ass hanging down under the thigh? Yeah. Yeah, that's ass. <laughs> Is it in the wrong spot? <laughs> uh, honestly, those proportions are correct. That's what Nicki Minaj looks like. Yeah, she her her left ass cheek is on the back of her thigh. <laughs> it, it hangs down behind it. She's been training hamstrings pretty hard. She has yeah. it's a what what a nonsense lymphoma issue. Yeah, that, that that's pretty stupid. I didn't know COD was doing that now. I think Skeletor is in COD now too. Don't say that. I'm okay with that. Yeah, he is. <laughs> yeah, I was like, oh well, it's starting to make sense again. Wait, how does Skeletor get in? He's like, doesn't Mat- I think Mattel owns that, and then I think Mattel or Hasbro. That's Hasbro. You know what they haven't done, as far as I know, I haven't paid close attention. They haven't brought Ghost back. I thought I for sure did. we'd learn that Ghost wasn't really dead or didn't really betray us. Well, or they kind of rebooted everything. In yeah. Some, like since Modern Warfare 19 and like all that, they've rebooted everything. And oh, Ghost is sort feedback. of a way. Okay. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. yeah. And then they, they brought like I know new actors in for everything. I know they rebooted it, but I didn't know if they changed like the outcome of like did the soap still die like this time around? I couldn't tell you. I haven't played a yeah. campaign. They but <laughs> that is that is Skeletor, and then that's fucking Ash. That's mm-hmm. uh, yeah. I mean, I think these are the signs of a dying franchise. This is gasping for air. To keep people interested, I couldn't give a fuck less what my character looks like. I just want sound game mechanics. I I I, I don't I mean, get it. Modern Warfare Three turned out to be pretty like they. It took them like four years to finally be like, all right, we'll give you what you want, and they gave us all of the movement from Modern Warfare Nineteen that everybody liked, and then they. What I kind of don't like that they brought all the Modern Warfare Two maps back because it's like okay, it was fun for like a week, but I played the shit out of this in two thousand nine, so like they get kind of yeah. old. Um, and then also all the same spots are there in the old maps. Like they remastered them completely to where like you're on high rise and you just get sniped right away. Like every time, like all that shit's still there, but they, all the movement and like, I think they went to like black ops health, like the 150 health. So it Mm -hmm. takes a little bit longer Mm -hmm. to kill, but the games, it's pretty good compared Mm -hmm. to like last year's game and Vanguard and black ops cold war. Like it's, yeah, I think I'm just done with that style of game i play cod a lot yeah we i play that like pretty much every night and this this game was supposed to be you can't find any traces of it but it was supposed to be an expansion on last year's game it was supposed to be the mono warfare 2 expansion where you get all the mono warfare 2 maps they improve the movement and everything else but now they're like oh it, it's the it's the next game it's mono warfare 3 Full so release. it's pretty much an expansion with upgraded movement and next year is supposed to be treyarch's full game where they've got the last three years that they've been working on it. It's going to be upgraded engine movement. It's going to be a full release. So hopefully it'll be good. But It doesn't matter how long you give a developer to make a project. They will develop mm-hmm. it in the last six months of the timeline. It, well, every this one time. you can tell. It's, it's still got their Hulu-ass fucking main menu where everything is like it the menu it's not the traditional cod where it's like you get the list of stuff you can play and like mm-hmm. quick play it's just tiles it looks like hulu's main page it's very bad and it's not yep. intuitive at all and it looks just like last year's game they just added stuff you can totally tell that they're like all right um take last year's game 
we did some tweaks, add some new guns here and there and this and that. And then that's it. It's yeah. literally just an expansion and that's it. Yeah. I heard that a couple times that they're just, like you said, selling an expansion pack as a full release. For uh, 70 bucks. It's so, I don't know. I, I'm land. done with that style of gaming. I, I think just the, the, the rinse and repeat and everything. I, I don't know. Mm. I, I mean, I've, I've played thousands of hours of it probably, but I don't think, I, I just don't like doing that anymore. Got a lot more fun once we started playing back in like Modern Warfare 19. I mean, my uh, my friends started playing Search a lot more. That made it a lot mm. more fun, just like actually playing a competitive game mode, and that that yeah. added a lot to it. And like once before, it's like, e- and they make everything so. Gr- I feel like they've designed the game for streamers and YouTubers, where like they have all their time in the world to get camos. To get the mastery camos, it takes so much time that like you have to be a streamer or a YouTuber that like does it for your job. Mm-hmm. And the only way to do it is to like go into like, if they have their shipment 24 seven lobbies where you just go in there and just get like a hundred kills and get your camos. Other than that, it's nearly impossible to like do any of the shit that they expect you to do. That's frustrating. Cause that used Tarkov's to be a like- really fun part of COD four was like, yeah. every once in a while being like, Oh, it's shipment. Mm-hmm. I knew now's the game to get the red tiger RPD. The yeah. time is now. <laughs> like, you, know, you just focus on headshots. Or, well, Red Tiger was 150 headshots, I think, right? Yeah, that's all it was. Now now it's like, it's layers of, of hundreds of headshots. And sometimes it's not even headshots. And then, or there'll be a fucking tree you have to go through. I'm not talking about specifically COD, but like, that's just what yeah. games are. I'm not trying Tarkov. to do that kind of shit in games. Like, I'm not trying to do a, a like layered unlock stuff <laughs> for a first person shooter. They got a little bit better with this one. Modern Warfare 2, the, the last years, was when they were like, all right, if you want to get the MP5, you've got to get the lockpin, blah, 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 this. And like, you have to like go through those different branches. Now, they've made it a lot. Of, I think they kind of reversed a lot of that. So it's a little yeah. bit easier. And the camos are that like, awful. you have yeah. to get like four camos to get gold. It's like, get this many headshots, get this many kills after reload. It, it's a little easier, but it's still, there's so much. And if you're having to go into like Favela and Hirachi to get these camos, it takes forever. Like to mm. go in these classic maps, so it helps like, when they have like ship, like shipment twenty four seven and shit yeah. like that. But that was like the last straw for a couple friends of mine. What the, the COD you talked about, where it's like you have to use the scorpion for twenty kills mm-hmm. in order to unlock the mini Uzi, and then you need thirty headshots with that in order to get to the MP forty sniper rifle, and then you can you know backtrack to the yeah. Dragonov. Like it was I, I remember too. like buddies of mine. A couple of them who had stuck like, you know, they're adults with like kids. And so like one of them was like, this is ridiculous. Like I have maybe 90 minutes a night at most Mm -hmm. a few times a week to play. And I'm spending the whole game session like uh, maybe maybe I can play one game without the Scorpion tonight. Have a little (laughs) relaxation before I go back into work tomorrow. Honey, I'll be up in a minute. Just put the kids to bed. I'm trying to do the Scorpion. (laughs) Like <laughs> you got to put like your reading glasses on, get your notebook out and be like, all right, exactly. well, I did You're that doing math and planning. No, I, it's not shit. fun for like a casual gamer, someone who's exactly. getting home from work and wanting to play like, well, you just want to jump in, have fun. There's there's fun grinds and there's not fun grinds, right? Mm-hmm. Like I would argue that there's things in Tarkov hoops that it make you jump through. It's like go to this map, wear these clothes, use this gun and do this specific task. And it's like at first that seems annoying, but then it's this is breaking up the monotony. I, th- mm. I was gonna just use like the best gun and the best armor, but instead, let me put this blue shit on and go to this shitty map I don't like and use this shitty gun I don't like using, and and then you get like this whole little fun thing that happens. I, mm-hmm. But called I, I thought it was even attached. If you live I, stream it, it's worse because it it sucks to suck on a live stream, mm-hmm. and they're like, hey, I want you to wear armor that doesn't protect you. And a hat that is aqua, so everyone can see you from anywhere. And, oh, by the way, that aqua hat tells everyone that your armor sucks, because we all know what quest you're working on. Yep. So good luck, target boy, and everyone's watching. <laughs> and it's like, <laughs> fuck, I swear I don't, like, I'm not claiming to be fucking shroud, but I'm not as bad as I seem. I'm just out here handicapped. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think, it, I, I mean, I don't know. That's that. That's how Tarkov is. Tar- this is a great wipe for Tarkov. I I, I I'm tempted. I keep being tempted. If you play, I'll play. Uh, it's ridiculous the, the the stuff they've added, the recoil changes, the armor hit boxes, like the the map that everybody hates, Shoreline. They completely made it new. They like added huge sections and they made they made the terrain different. They broke People it up, added cliffs. Everybody hates Shoreline. 
you know, the, the you go you all those shoreline, shoreline quests you have. To, I love shoreline, but I'm in the minority. Okay. Um, everybody hates the. That's where you got to go wear the helmet and the blue shit and everything gets very, uh, very tedious. Dude, as many hours stuff. as I have, I fucking still can't memorize how to navigate resort with like confidence. Mm. Like, you, you know how you want to be in a video game where I could like take could take your character, make them look down, and you know where you are. Right. That's yeah. where you aspire to be. And I can't seem to get that in the resort. And if people don't know, it, it seems like a very simple map, but there's like holes in the ground and barriers in the hallways that make you have to take roundabout ways to navigate. And it's trickier than you might guess. That's the map I know best. Mm-hmm. Um, and, but um, but yeah, I, I'm, I'm always tempted to play. I'm back to watching fucking Landmark for like a couple hours a day. I'm like, mm-hmm. yeah, this is how I'll be. If I just go back, this is how things will be for me. Look at is this. Is he still streaming like to the level that he was before? Like as yeah, many 80, hours and as many people. Uh, there was like 85,000 watching um, oh, watching for oh, the yeah. drops, um, you know, for the drops and everything. So like uh, they, Tarkov does this thing where they give free shit to you if you watch their streamers, like free in-game shit. Like you'll get some guns in game sent to your account if your account's logged in uh, watching your favorite streamer. During, it's a promo thing they do. They take over Twitch when they do it. And uh, and he had like a bunch, 80, 90, 90K when I was watching. Damn. And uh, but but no, this this wipe looks fun because of the recoil changes and the armor. Those two things are crazy. And then the maps, mm. they added a lot. I don't know. It seems like a fresh game. They added a new map. It, apparently they changed yeah. a lot. And I don't know Lighthouse at all. I know Lighthouse like 80 out of 100. I've played a lot of Lighthouse. Yeah. Like, like I'm, oh, I'm pretty shit, good at Lighthouse. Oh, streets either. I don't know streets. <laughs> okay. I, I, I bring guides to streets last, last, <laughs> last. Because I, I played the wipe before last, like, I don't know, pretty a little stable. bit. Oh, okay, a lot. Have you played uh, uh, Lethal Company at all, Chris? No, I've never heard of it. Good. No, <laughs> it's it's a fun game. I, I'm finally getting pretty fucking good at it. Is it new? It's it's new and it's made by one developer. And the problem with it, it's so fun. It's a good like two three hour session game with friends to. You know, try and hit a quota by collecting scrap from all these like moon planets and hide from monsters. The problem with it is that like it's collecting trash, it's collecting garbage, and so like you'll walk into a a, a fucking warehouse that's a labyrinth with like a random seed, so like it's easy to get lost, all that kind of stuff, and it'll be like, oh good, I found a crate of glass bottles. Oh, good. I found a big metal screw. I found a sheet of metal. I found mm-hmm. a whoopee cushion, a can of soda. Like, there's the rarest of rare things you can find is not exciting. It's like, oh, mm-hmm. a cash register. Like, and all of it, all it is is collecting these things and bringing it back to the ship to go sell so you can get equipment to more effectively go out and hunt for more trash. And like, after a while, this is that's why I said it's a good like two, three hour at most, like mm-hmm. game sesh game with you and like a bunch of buddies in a call. Cause you know, it's like a spooky game. Like you die and it's proximity chat, and we all have mods enabled so that the game will record little bits of you and then later in the round play it back to me. So like if Kyle and I go in to the scary area and early on Kyle's like, Hey, I found a screw, and then Five minutes passes. We're both walking around together, and then Kyle dies. A couple more minutes pass, and then I might hear from around a corner Kyle's voice say, "Hey, I found a screw," and I'll know like, <gasps> like I have to start, <laughs> I have to start huffing it because I know Kyle's been dead, and that's very fun, especially mm-hmm. when you're like spectating someone. But at the end of the day, you're just picking up trash, and I don't understand why the developer, the one developer. <laughs> didn't make it literally anything else. There's no reason that it has to be trash and scrap that you're collecting on these planets. There could be any other backfilled ex- uh, explanation from it. Kyle, you're muted. Uh, it could be like, oh, you're all prisoners who are locked up, and until you collect X amount of this gems. money or gems, or you actually have to kill this beast and collect its head and bring it back, and then you'll be freed from it. Like something at all. <laughs> at all that could be easily implemented that isn't trash because that could why be why you done. don't play a $10 game with your $4000 computer <laughs> it's a it's a very fun game with friends it's just frustrating <laughs> it's a fun ass <laughs> game and i'm not playing it for the graphics but it's like fuck it's hard to get excited about finding a lamp 
It like, sounds like a heroin addict let's play, like just going around finding <laughs> scrap and trash and junk. It yeah, is hilarious it is. that Taylor got a four thousand dollar computer and now he's playing like browser based quick time games. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but a fucking like, two thousand FPS new grounds <laughs> <and sun brain. laughs> that that computer can simulate the birth of a solar system, but somehow, <laughs> but but it's collecting screws and lethal companies. If, if, that, if, that GP, if it were any CPU other collecting to kill the GPU every day. If, if it were any kind of other kind of collection, I would have no problem having gotten Kyle to try it because I if you could have I could have sold it as it's like a monster hunting game. You have to collect these these gems, these treasures. It's blueprints from a foregone era. You're in a hyper futuristic time where there's knowledge that's lost and you're hunting for these books on these already burned out planets. Anything else but trash door hinges anything <laughs> yeah it's you're dumb. looking for door hinges someone will be like hey i got a v-type engine in here here's okay. the game i'm gonna pitch Whatever. it to you i'm not gonna I, I i'm not gonna like annoy you about it if you want to have a fun in a co-op game that any any amount of us could play together it's pve rust i'll do rust There's i no, have it. it's I bought it's it. just the ai the animals the scientists the 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 there's bad ai you got to fight to acquire riches and build it's minecraft it's Minecraft, but it's with AKs and armor and first person. It's first person shooter Minecraft. It's what it becomes when you remove the enemy players and play on a server where it's PVE. There'll be other players, but they'll say, Hello, friend. What? I like your <laughs> Hello, base. Friend. Nifty Hello, sign. Friend. You want to come with us? We're going out to the oil rig on this speedboat to fight scientists and get so riches. You can't and hurt each like, other. Like, uh, I think it's just against the rules. Um, there's oh. servers that are PVE only and they eliminate oh. the PVP. It's I not. Would be my first choice. I like the part where we steal from each other. But for Taylor's benefit, I was like, it's first person shooter Minecraft. You've stopped playing Minecraft with no mods. This He's is like unmodded Minecraft. Again. You are a dealer giving the first hit for free right now. You're like, if I could just get him in rust, get him addicted, then he'll start doing the hard stuff. Because he's 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 been talking about getting good at mouse and keyboard for years, but he's never actually played a <laughs> yes. shooter he likes. He's never played a shooter he even enjoys and uh. will play more. You know how like you could be like Jack Frags does these videos every week where he it's like you put like five hours in and got your paycheck. You didn't play this game like long term. Like you know your character you're okay. Your character's level ten. Like I, my my character's fifty. What are you doing here? You can't really teach people about this unless you play it. That's how Taylor plays these games. He like dips his toe, dips his toe. He needs to catch the buck. He needs mm -hmm. to take a pause load from Rust that just you can't get rid of, and, and then it becomes full blown AIDS when we play PVP Rust. <laughs> that'll sell him you know talking about well, games, I, that's why i'm saying this now when he's yeah. like, <laughs> at the last hangout i got a five piece of spy master in code words is that the highest you've ever seen it is it is i i don't want to say we downstairs done... and brag to jackie <laughs> it's one of like i think we've done it three times before okay like, like and that's one of them like like, like i i think you know um Obviously, the board had to do a certain thing, but you gave a great clue. Like as I told them, they were like, "Come on, the board set him up." Like, he had to come up with it. Yeah. Come up How with many it. times has the board set us up and no one caught it? Yeah, right. Yeah, you did a great job. Uh, that is the biggest clue I've seen in a in the modern era of code names. I'll say <laughs> uh, since since we've all been playing, we uh, we play this uh, this word game with our with our patrons in uh, in in Discord for hours at a time. I take it far too seriously and Which get very hilarious. upset. You say it's code I names. Get, yeah. Code code names, code yeah, I think I've played it once before. Like, you got like two spy close. masters. They're it's they're they're trying yeah. to direct you toward words on a board, with, but they don't want you to touch certain words, and they're using a one word mm -hmm. clue. It's a it's a it's a little bit of um, thesaurus knowledge needed, and I get really really mad, um, and I shouldn't. I, I got to control myself. The Tuesday game, I was fine. I got a little huffy, but I didn't curse at anybody. But on the sun, no, the last game, whenever we played Sunday afternoon, I think I, I got. I got pretty upset at dirty. our roles have been reversed a little bit. So let me yeah. explain why I said that it used to be, we just have conversations, right? The hangouts were by and large as everyone hanging out and talking. Okay, cool. So someone would show up with either horrific audio or horrific social skills. And after a while I would flip my lid and just tell them they had to fix their shit. Right. And horrific audio, for example, might be someone who is joining from a tractor right a tractor while farming and it's just ooh, the whole time we're trying to talk to each other and it's like fucking mute yourself 
What the f- you're in a conference call with 25 people from a diesel tractor on a farm. Yeah. <laughs> what are you doing? Like, shut the fuck up, mute yourself. All right. So, or some of my I just like, I don't know, have their mic six feet away, screaming to it the whole time. And I'm hearing shit. everything but them. So anyway, so they needed to be put into their place. And well, you know, maybe I'm a bit of an asshole for doing it. It's also a service that had to be done. Now we're playing code words and there'll be someone who misbehaves or ruins the game on everyone's part behalf. And Kyle will dress them down and just tell them how stupid they are and uh, how much they're changing the experience for everyone else. And I think all the rest of us are sitting back being like, thank you, Kyle. Thank you for cleaning the streets. You're a vigilante. <laughs> you are, I'm like you're... Batman. <laughs> yeah. You're I'm the Batman these... of code names. Uh-huh. <laughs> that asshole clicked when no one else on his team agreed with him. He just ran for, and you don't have the social status in this room to pull that it, shit. It can be like it to some extent, like you don't need to know the rules or anything, but just imagine we're playing team chess and we all need to agree on whether that pawn is going here right. or there. And some jabroni that we all know is like a level 900 at chess pushes the fucking pawn forward one space. And we're all like, that's not the Mananachi opening. What are you doing, you imbecile? We're thinking about our eighth mm. move, not our first. Did you think we were all sitting here not knowing which pawn to move? Is that what you thought? <laughs> like, it's that kind of meltdown, but in my silly little game for no mm-hmm. apparent reason against people who paid to be there. So I really need to slow <laughs> my roll a little bit. I that's feel a deep, bad. That's after, a good detail. Literally afterwards in the evening, I'll be like, damn it. Should have yelled at that guy. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. You should have. You did great. We all I appreciate told, it. I, was like, I should have told a joke and, and made him laugh about how silly he was. Instead, I screamed at him and called him a slur. Like, I got to. I gotta stop that. So but I if do you told a joke and told him how silly he was, then six more people would have done it after him. Oh, uh, I was gonna tell a joke about me now, but but nobody wants to get shouted at. You'll see people get gun shy, and what do you be like? What do you think, Arnold? This is between y'all. <laughs> it's, like, it's like Arnold, it's a game. We want your genuine opinion. I'm not. I'm not sticking my beak in Kyle's. Uh... <laughs> uh, <laughs> it's not like that. It's so, fun, yeah, I gotta. Though. It's fun that, yeah, I like to t- taking games like that seriously make them more fun for me. If we're just futzing around, then we're futzing around. But if we're going to keep fucking score, I get I get competitive sometimes. Mm-hmm. I've been, uh, do you want to talk about uh, Epstein or Bin Laden? Because I've got both Epstein. on my mind. I only have background on that one. You know, Osama Bin Laden, though. He's the 9 11 guy. Well, okay. I thought maybe something well, new happened. I'm teasing. I'm teasing. <laughs> okay. Um, so I guess, and I'm, I'm having a hard time. I, I Googled a lot. But mm-hmm, it depends too. who you ask what exactly the quote unquote list of names that was most recently um, released. I won't say leaked because it wasn't. It was like legally released. I even is. They, they tell me that it's some sort of shorthand scribbles from a pilot, just sort of his thoughts or something. But no one wants to be like, it like, kind of sounds some... like you're talking about the flight log right now. Yeah, I'm talking about this newest list that came out that has Stephen Hawking's name on it, that has David Copperfield's name on it, obviously um, Trump, um, obviously Bill Clinton, 70-something times, like mid-70s. Like, I, I, I'm i leaning toward, I have a hard time believing Donald Trump didn't do some stuff with some underage girls at this point. Having a real hard time with Bill so Clinton, though. There's, um, <laughs> some of it's not as incriminating as it seems. I'm not talking about Clinton specifically here. I'm not defending mm-hmm. anyone. So the they'll be like, you know, was Elon Musk on this plane? And they'll mm-hmm. be like, no, I have no recollection of ever seeing or even hearing his name come up in conversation. Well, boom. Now he's been unmasked and it's and Elon Musk's in there twice. That one's not actually true, but that's the mm-hmm. kind of thing that's happened. People have been brought up and it, if you know the details, they're literally um, found innocent. I'm looking for a better word, but uh, indicated perhaps. Mm-hmm. Okay. But, yeah, they brought up their name. They said they had nothing to do with any of this, but now their name is in there, and it's not a good look. You wish no one asked about you at all. Mm. Um, there has been a fake image of Jimmy Kimmel like being in there, but that's a fake image. It's something Aaron Rodgers said that Jimmy Kimmel was on the list, and Jimmy Kimmel got very upset. He's like, I don't know this guy. I was never I had nothing to do with any of this, and my family's getting death threats now, and I'll sue you if you say another word. Mm. And... Uh, he was on Pat McAfee's say, show when he said that. So Pat McAfee apologized for having anything to do with it. I don't mm-hmm. know that Aaron Rodgers has said a word. And now that it's released, Jimmy Kimmel's name is not on there. But there are fake images going around saying it was. 
that. And, and it's weird to see, like, like obviously, I, I watch some of the some more right wing YouTubers, not exactly political stuff, but more like um, social stuff, socially right. And um, their take on that was so weird. They're like, "What about the time Jimmy Kimmel did blackface?" It's like, mm. "What about it?" Yeah, I watched the man show. That was some funny shit. But I, I for get straws. That, yeah, yeah mm -hmm. he used to have women jump up and down. Like, like if you want to say he's a hypocrite when it comes to sexism or racism, I'll, I'll, I'll bite right into that big sandwich of truth. Sure. But, but if you're telling me that it's okay for Aaron Rodgers to go make a joke that he's on the pedophile list when they're both celebrities of note, this isn't Jim saying it about Harry. That's bullshit. He should know better than that. And I like Jimmy Kimmel's response as much as I dislike Jimmy Kimmel. And mm. Aaron Rodgers, I'm sure, like his real attorney probably called him, was like, yeah, he, he gave you some good advice there. Don't say another fucking word. Like, like, don't say any fucking thing. You're liable here. Like, like you could be in a lot of trouble. So regarding Trump, I've only seen one new thing come out of this list. A lot of the old stuff where he praised Epstein as being a lot of fun. He seemed to know that he was a pedophile. He said he really likes women as much as I do. He Saw likes that. them on the younger side. That's old news. Weird that it's not part of our like cultural knowledge, but it, that's old news. The only new thing is, I guess there was a flight with some underage girls on it and they were like leaving because of bad weather. And they're like, you know what? Let's go to Trump's casino. So that mm -hmm. like they called Trump and they went to his place. That's not that incriminating. I mean, he, he owns a destination, right? Like casino. They're not allowed in the, the, the ID every step of the way, you know, they're, he, they're not going to hit the slots. They're going Ooh. to get their slots in. <laughs> yeah. oh. That's the sick line. All right. So quick with those. Don't you Yeah, that was outstanding. Oh. And um, I'm hot. But, <laughs> but just by great me on It's a hotel <laughs> casino. If people don't know, Trump, these are hotel casinos. And uh, that's where they went as a destination. Landed Lolita Express there and, and hung out at Trump's hotel. It's not a good look, but it's not really a smoking gun either. In my opinion, yeah, I think we're getting a real, like, whatever Epstein list. Like, what? I think all the real stuff's been curated. The evidence has been destroyed. There's a reason it took years, and now it's just going to be oh, more of the same. There's a thing. Right? It'll be a few people that come out, and it'll be like, oh wow, Bill Clinton and Alan Dershowitz are on it. People have been saying that for mm -hmm. years now. Like, there's not going to be a know. huge big bomb of it. I so don't think. The Dershowitz thing is interesting because he's the most incriminating new information that I'm aware of. They, they literally, they're like, underage girl gave him a massage, fucked him. And Dershowitz is like, yeah, she later said she wasn't sure it was me. So, like, I'm kind of innocent. And I'm like, I don't know about that. Yeah, bullshit. <laughs> you know? Sounds like she got I, some pressure. That guy seems I, skeevy as shit. I, I thought it was hysterical that it was that David Copperfield's name was on the list a couple times mm -hmm. and that uh, and that uh, Stephen Hawking was because like that mathematician should be able to know if girls underage. You would think I saw pictures of him. I, I don't know if they're shops. They usually are. But, mm -hmm. you know, it's him sitting there all eh, all decrepit on like hard uh, a, ch a chair by a pool, like laid out. And I, I'd never seen him lay him out like that. They usually keep him in that little thing. And he had like a couple girls with him who looked. I, I didn't think they looked underage, but they didn't look old. Yeah. He was or, never looked, doing like, physics. It was all age of did consent. Did his dick math. work? You think his dick still work? Like, <laughs> There's talking? no way his dick worked well if, if it did. But him being on the island, that tells me something was working down there. You guess, right? Some kind of exoskeleton. Or I, I know he was like kind of a saucy, spicy guy. Like he liked his porn a lot. So. I don't know if he's jerking off or just appreciating the female Zach, form. Zach, do a little Googling. Find out if Stephen Hawking's cock still worked. Yeah, I would love yeah, Zach, I, please look into that. See if he is can he figure capable it out. of defiling a young maiden. That's all <laughs> yeah. I need to know. So there was something. Oh, oh, there's some connections that make Trump look bad. Like I get so you guys might remember Epstein got busted and got a real sweetheart deal and basically got set off free for nothing. Mm -hmm. And then he got busted again, at which point he eventually killed himself um, in, in prison. Or died mm -hmm. in prison. Whatever. Yeah, I think so. Uh, the first sweetheart deal, it seemed like he got that because he was so well connected. And the guy who gave him that sweetheart deal, the prosecutor, became Trump's labor secretary. Like, so a lot of people are like, "Man, this guy's really tied in." And Trump hooked him up with the sweetheart job after he got Epstein off when Trump could have been in hot water. But this is all a little. I feel like Alex Jones yeah. here, right? Ep I usually demand better evidence than this. No, Ep Epstein oh. was very connected. Like he had. So 
little inroads everywhere. He was running a honeypot to basically the guy that gave Epstein his sweetheart deal became Trump's labor secretary. And I'm I, I ask that. myself, Woody, would you convict a guy you like? You know, if you had evidence that flimsy, and I'm not sure I would. So I'm trying to be honest. I heard uh, I was watching that uh, that podcast with the CIA guy, um, John Kirakow or something like that. He's written a book about it. Anyway, um, he was they asked him and this is recently this is like a week or so ago, like a, a month or two ago when the uh, yeah. Palestinian thing first kicked off. They asked him uh, about Epstein and also about the Palestinian thing. And he thought that Epstein was a Mossad agent. Um, because Ghislaine Maxwell's father was a known Mossad agent, like a famous yeah, Robert Mossad Maxwell. agent. So the idea is that it's it's what Taylor said. It's it's a place um, where he's clearly bringing influencers and powerful people from all over the world, not only for the purposes of maybe running video and audio for maybe pressure to put on them, but also mm -hmm. he said that Mossad would it would be very valuable for an intelligence agency just to be able to get amongst those people and like get them in a room and talk to them. Maybe not about like you fucked a boy. Uh, we've got it on tape. Now your company does this. Maybe just like you do a lot of business in the Middle East. You know, you, you rub elbows with the sheik all the time. Could you put in a good word to the sheik about my friend, Alan? Alan needs a meeting with him. Mr. Dershowitz. Could you come in here? Alan wants to meet the sheik and it's a bad look to do so publicly, but you know, the sheik, could you, could, and must, you know, the idea of uh, an intelligence agency being able to pull strings and put people together and manipulate and just get that information. They talked about how the CIA has this, this program uh, where they, they're not allowed to, to work in certain places, certainly on American soil, supposedly, but also in certain places around the world, it's tricky to get in. There's no way you can send some Mormon white guy over there and have him get but we have businessmen here who do business there. So those white men with suits walk right in there with the sheik and the sheik pats them on the back because we're all in cahoots together, like doing legitimate business. And so the CIA recruits recruits people like that. He suggested that as much as it might be a blackmail thing, although he didn't like the idea of blackmail. And this is a guy who blackmails people for a living. He's like, mm -hmm. nine times out of 10, they kill themselves, you know? Or that he said, they'll either rat themselves out to their own people because you know, they're not going to deal with the filthy American or they'll kill themselves. You know, he, he said that's what mm. usually happens. They asked yeah, him about Epstein and he said he didn't think Epstein did. I, I think that blackmail had a good deal to do with it. Uh, sure. I just want to get this in here. Zach looked it up. Apparently Stephen Hawkins' dick got hard and worked. That dog. That investigative journalism monster. <laughs> yes. That, that monster. He was, he was using his crippled penis on all those poor victims. <laughs> Yeah, I guess he probably needed a guy to help him get laid. I mean, I no, he, he, nah, he just he just really yeah, you think yeah. he's got the riz? <laughs> he types into his <laughs> fucking Coleco vision. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, baby, you look stunning, dude. Every woman <laughs> wants to fuck a light bright, and that's exactly <laughs> what he is. <laughs> Poor guy, you just plug your make him festive. Yeah, that's, <laughs> if we that get a great mind like Stephen Hawking, isn't it worth? Was he it even to... smart? What are, what did what was he up to? What I've was heard. he really figuring out? I bet there were I bet there were real scientists. I bet he was a Steve Jobs. I bet there Didn't were real scientists behind the scenes. Radiation escaped from black holes and Hawking radiation. They named yeah. it after the man. Yeah, nah, because and that he's means that black holes guy. will eventually shrink and just like dissipate. Instead of just collecting they're losing energy. Yeah. They're losing energy and giving it back out and they'll eventually go away. Dude, I can make a million found, theories about something that will never <laughs> happen within the window of human existence. Yeah, make one. Yeah, uh, actually, the black holes uh, are gaining energy, uh, <laughs> Mr. <laughs> Hawking, and it's called Taylor radiation. You dumb head <laughs> retard, you fucking legless dumbass. Oh, and you can't test it because it's a billion jillion miles away and it's uh, and it's dark matter. You think you're so smart? Well, let's arm wrestle. Yeah, right. you think you're so smart? I'll beat the shit out of you. <laughs> I would have held him in the rip surf. your shirt off. I would have held his limp body in the surf at St. James Island and bullied him. <laughs> and I would have been like, hey, where are the real scientists, you fucking Steve Jobs piece of shit? You didn't come up with anything. Poor Mr. Is that right, Hawking. Stephen Hawking? The good news is you're here at St. James Island. You're He's about probably, to get fucked. The bad news is it's Taylor. <laughs> <laughs> what, if, what if he was part of the offering there? 
Right. Well, it was like some rich <laughs> chic, and they're like, we have all these underage kids for you. And at your request, a crippled man from <laughs> Manchester born in the 30s. Do you think she's soft? Where do you meet Stephen Hawking? Where do you meet Stephen Hawking? No muscle mass at Dude, all. he's the veal of partners. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got no muscle mass. Soft 47 year old veal. Yeah, covered in bed sores <laughs> on, his, on his bony ass. You fuck Stephen Hawking. That guy sucks. Uh. I'll take him. He's dead. I'm glad. <laughs> they, all right, yeah. <laughs> You're right. That guy sucked. He did suck. <laughs> You're not making sense. any points, Kyle. I like Stephen Hawking. He was uh, he was in an episode of Star Trek. It was, it was pretty fun. Really? He always had a sense of humor. Yeah, it was a uh, like data goes into the holodeck and he's uh, he's like, give me uh, I want to play I want to talk to Einstein, Stephen Hawking, and I don't know Socrates or somebody, Da Vinci, whatever. And you know, there's they just bring Stephen Hawking in instead of getting an actor. Was it next so yeah. I don't remember it. That's like yeah, saying yeah. I like Johnny Depp. He was in Walking Dead. I think they play poker. They play <laughs> poker. That's what it is. He's playing poker with Einstein. Like, um, and they have, Hawking has Ooh. this little robo hand holding his cards up for him or whatever. And he's cracking jokes, of course, because apparently has Johnny Depp was in Walking Dead. They, he played a decapitated head for just a few seconds. <laughs> oh, that's neat. I I had a one of my girlfriend's friends was in um it was actually in the episode where uh Merle dies, if you remember back oh. then. Well I um I don't remember exactly how it went down, but sure I remember that. Yeah, it was during the Oh yeah, he died trip. heroically in an yeah. outpost of some sort. Yeah. He like uh, I think the governor was about to kill all or all of our main characters, and maybe Merle shows up and is like, No, you won't, or whatever, and like die mm. trying. But she's in that scene because she, she's some girls have big eyes. She had mm -hmm. some big eyes. She's just got these peepers. And when they put those contacts in there, there's like a muddy brownish yellow. And she goes, ah, it was like, fuck, you're a really good zombie. This is great. Like, like I think that's like, cool. They were, uh, they're hanging out at Norman Reedus's bar, you know, because Daryl has a bar down there where they film the stuff. And, uh, I think that they met like one, the casting director or somebody like that. And he was like, your eyes, madam. <laughs> um, and, uh, ended up getting on the show. It was cool. I used to work with a woman who had really big eyes, just like extraordinarily large. You could practically see the backside of them. And uh, she told me that when she was a baby, they were all talking about how adorable she was because she had these big eyes. And I didn't say anything, but in my heart, I was like, you know, they're not attractive at all. <laughs> like, <Ooh. you> know, <laughs> like, why, why even bringing attention to those eyeballs? It's weird. <laughs> Where they feel like, like you're a head eyeballs. injury away from that like, <laughs> popping out like a fucking dog. It's, you ever see those little dogs? Its heads are, yeah, you know, like head to eyeball ratio was off. It's like bug eyed. Damn. Was she like bug eyed? Bugs. Yeah, she was bug eyed and, and just like it was like her eyebrow. Is this, is this part of your body called like a crown or something? Brow, it was too brow. high. Brow, okay. And and her, help me again, cheeks. cheeks, upper cheeks were too low. It was just this huge pocket for her bug eyes that were too far forward. And uh, yeah, it's, just, it's just a lot. I had speed. a, there's this, um, I don't know what you call it, syndrome, disease, whatever, that causes your eyes to like bulge. Uh, not get bigger, I don't think, but maybe. Um, but they bulge. To Barbara's, um, there's an actress. She's the, she's that curly headed like. Uh, is it Barbara Streisand? Um, Very old. There's an actress who has it. She's she's in that movie with uh, the baseball movie where they're um, fucking the old catcher and everything. Anyway, uh, I think it's Barbara Streisand. But uh, I had a makeup artist who had the same thing, and he was explaining to me that, like, yep, no cure. They just keep getting bigger and bigger and bulging more and more. And his eyes were like coming at you already i was like man they, that sucks they're gonna pop. yeah i don't remember what it's called always looks probably... like like someone locked you in the the depressurizing chamber in space <laughs> you're about to Ugh! there was a yeah, lunch lady who was bug eyed stress, at my middle school and it kind of spooked me i do remember hmm. that yeah. they always get space depressurization wrong i'm pretty sure we exist at like one psi or something no and then Go ahead. Do you, do you know this better than me? I feel like if I uh, opened the door to a spacecraft, no one would get sucked out. It would. We just will not get sucked out. Um, it will absolutely do exactly what. Oh, now I don't know about a door. That's going to be a whoosh. But like, like the same way in an airliner. But um, but if there's like a pinhole, then you just stick your thumb over it. Like in in Alien mm -hmm. Resurrection, there's a part where they kill the alien by making a hole in the like glass window with some acid, and it like sucks the alien, spaghettifies it through that hole until it's disemboweled mm. and sucked. Nothing like that. You stick your thumb right over it, um, like like it's like a piece of gum, whatever. Because we're at like I think one atmosphere is, I'm gonna get this wrong, twelve or thirteen psi or something like that. 
it's a, a really fun experiment. You can take a, an aluminum can, put a little bit of liquid in it, grab it with some tongs, put it over your burner, get it boiling in there so it's creating steam that's traveling up through it, and then upend it very quickly into a uh, like a basin of water. So that, just so that the the top is submerged and you'll cr you've created a vacuum inside of there because that steam uh, was present. But yeah. now that it's cooled down, the steam's gone and a vacuum is inside there. So just the atmospheric pressure that we exist in here that's pressing on us all the time that we don't notice crushes the fuck out. I, I believe you, but I would not qualify that as a very fun experiment <laughs> <laughs> you can I do it to a 55 gallon drum though and the whole drum goes that's pretty yeah, neat tried that really on Mythbusters, cool. and it yeah. didn't like they had to like do a lot of extra work to get it to they busted the, the it? tanker to crumple it was a i think it was a um i don't know if it was a like a breaking bad one that they did but they were trying to like get a tanker to collapse on itself to like, oh. like wherever the submarine like the implode Mm -hmm. and they had yeah, to do a, a lot of extra work they had to get like a really weak tanker because they just kept mm -hmm. trying to like with steam pressurize this tanker to the point where it would just crumple on itself and they had to they had to do a whole bunch of extra stuff to get it to do it but yeah. you can do it with barrels you can do it with cans i, I think it is you know what i have a neat experiment taylor might not call it do. very fun but hear me out on this. <laughs> you have a campfire and you have a bottle of water right this is a plastic bottle like you get at every gas station if you put this bottle of water in the campfire it won't melt. It doesn't burn. You the would think it would. Though. The water will boil, and the part that doesn't have water in it will go away, so it'll become like a cup. But as the water evaporates, the bottle drains. But the water only gets to 212 degrees. That's it. So it keeps the plastic cool enough that it doesn't like melt and spill out the bottom. Ah, okay. I've done See, it many times. Now, Kyle, that's what you call real. <laughs> yeah, Kyle, fun. get on my level. Okay, I was just crushing barrels <laughs> with the power of the of the gravity that's sucking air down yeah, on it. Good noob. Chris, hit us with a <laughs> real fun experiment. <laughs> what you, do, Chris? you came to the right okay. guy. <laughs> Something about ghosts. <laughs> uh, I used to light Q-tips on fire in my basement with petroleum jelly. Ah, 400 in a row, flammable. You know, yes. we're learning. <laughs> and it just, just keeps on going, everyone. Just Still just consistent. as beautiful and entrancing as ever. <laughs> it was My either that or it was like lighting axe Vaseline. cans on fire in a ditch. <laughs> yeah, Every Vaseline. problem I bring to her, she solves with Vaseline. <laughs> 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 I'm like, not even like Neospore. This feels like 1930s technology. Mm -hmm. yeah. She's like, it's never been beaten. Little Windex Vaseline. Spig and span, you're good to go. That's how you. Wait, <laughs> Windex and Vaseline. What are we yeah, doing? Yeah, remember the what was that fucking movie? Uh oh, I can't believe I remember this. My big fat Greek wedding. Okay, that's yeah. that was the movie where the the Greek old lady was oh. like, "What do you do for like a cough? Windex. What do you do <laughs> yes. for you know a rash? Windex. No I matter what, that. little Windex on you, you're good to go. Yes, so, it's vinegar. In some vinegar places, water? it's butter. They put butter on everything. I don't know what culture that is, but it's a France. Thing. It's South. It was France. <laughs> South Southern. Yeah, we were a Vaseline family, not a Windex oh, yeah. family. What would you use my the Vaseline was, for? Yeah. My, my mom used it for taking makeup off. And hmm. so we just had a giant tub of it in the bathroom. And then I, of course, would use it for science. Yeah. Lighting Q-tips on fire. Oh, I and thought that's, you were, that's about it. I thought <laughs> that's you meant jacking it. off. <laughs> oh, <laughs> masturbate <laughs> with Vaseline. Oh my god! Try. What a what a Dude, slow. When you're, when you're twelve, you're jerk. just when you're, when you're twelve, you're just, you're just trying stuff, man. You could just muscle for when you're 12, with Vaseline. Like... That's too viscous. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, there's nothing too or not viscous enough when you're twelve and you're experimenting with new things to jack off with. Uh, yeah, don't you think about that a lot? Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> you go take some of your mom's nice expensive lotion. Jack off with that, and then, <laughs> and then the rest of the day you're Those just walking jar, around. You're the just size of a bottle cap, and it costs one hundred and thirty dollars. Yeah, and then off. you're walking around with your like hands and dick smelling like like lilac for the rest oh, of the day. You, What's you, that smell? This smells like my lotion. Oh no, Shut up, terrible. mom. My you dick think looks that's ten bad. years younger, and I'm twelve. Boy, I can't get yeah. my makeup off. There's no Vaseline. I thought yeah. I grabbed lotion, but I grabbed that fucking. Suntan Nair. lotion with the bronzer, and now my hand and my cock are as black as coal. <laughs> <laughs> this doesn't wash off yeah, in three days. Looks like an, an Emmy, or whatever the gold one is. I'll never <laughs> go back. Shining. <laughs> yeah, what did you jack off with as a kid, mm. everyone? That's right. Um, 
That wasn't on lotion. the topic list. When but you weren't, when you guys weren't going dry, what were you doing? You need it n- never dry because that's weird. Um, lotion, um, some sort of, but not uh, like any sort of fragranced lotion because that'll burn. That thin, watery, lady shit. You need a good, like Vaseline intensive care lotion. That's so it so it doesn't like dissipate on you mid jerk. I don't want to be going back for more. You know what I mean? That's fair. That's fair. You need something with sticking power, staying power. Yeah. yeah. You don't want to be enjoying yourself and then ah. Oh. Oh my goodness! Now I got to get up and fucking um, crab walk to the bathroom. <laughs> but if, if anybody out there wants a wants a if, if you can't afford wet platinum, which is the finest of of silicone masturbatory and sexual lubricants, um, coconut oil is like cheap, healthy, mm. good for you. I don't think it messes up most vaginas. Uh, it's it's a good lubricant yeah. that you can you can and it like stays at room temperature. It's solid. So you kind of reach in the jar and scrape some off the top and like oh I don't like liquefy. That. That's, that's the part I like about coconut oil the least. Oh, yeah. I like it. It mm. reminds me of that soap from high school that was a powder that you had to get going first. <laughs> <laughs> no, I don't the like the extra stuff? layer of, of work. Yeah, I don't that, that have powdered melt... stuff around the oh. shop sink. I don't want to have to melt the lube so down, but I guess twelve year old me I wasn't I... worried about like what it would do to a vagina. I, I wasn't. That was at the <laughs> bottom of my priority list. Oh, and also, yeah. I didn't have access to wet platinum uh, as a twelve-year-old boy. Yeah, so you were you were using just my mom wasn't using that to wipe her makeup off, so I didn't have any in the house. Yeah, you were just using that. tons of Vaseline every time your mom opened the Vaseline can. There were like four fingers, you know, just, just so one little hole. mark just on the one, side, just one one small quarter-sized hole right down <laughs> yeah. the middle. Oh, quarter, you're being generous with the quarter. Yeah, there's there's like four <laughs> big finger scoops and then just a pube. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I got a son that double dips. He's got endurance. He's got he's, he must have been going for a while and then he came Correct back. The case. Yeah. <laughs> Nancy Drew in the case of the Vaseline pube. What's <laughs> being found? Boxcar children mystery. Uh, yeah, I would I would use I would either dry it, which was never as good, or whatever lotion was about. And I remember they're just kind of being lotion around in every bathroom Mm -hmm. most bathrooms like as a kid and so it really wasn't my family yeah it wasn't a huge deal to find it i remember when i was like 11 i was jacking off in the shower and at that time of my life shampoo that was the only thing slick enough in the shower to be jacking off with and so I, I all I had I, I was probably I was using probably ten and one. <laughs> <four> one. <laughs> ten, <laughs> ten and one. Yeah. And it's still, unfortunately no it's it's Rogaine. Good on you dishes. Yeah. Right. Yeah. You grabbed the Rogaine instead, though, and just, oh. <laughs> just uh, grew a thicket all over my shaft. Yeah. I uh I remember like having a good go of it from probably like most of eleven my eleventh year and thinking in my head, like, I got this down pat. Take a shower crank one off with the shampoo and then somehow it got like really frothed up and on maybe the downstroke i got a good deal of shampoo in my penis hole and Mm. it was the first time that it ever happened i was like "Ah, ah," and like had a little mini freak out realized what it was and and have never never went back never went back i'm on a Mm. 20 year streak i guess now of not (laughs) jacking off with shampoo because i got scarred by by like because i remember it pee it hurt it burned to like pee the next pee after that and i was like oh fuck hope this goes away and it did like the next pee so don't do that don't jack off in the shower shower ever i used to take the longest fucking showers they i didn't get out until we ran out of hot water and i could i my whole family i'm convinced was convinced that I was jacking off in there, but I wasn't. Oh, for sure. They'd be outside the door, like, "What's he doing in there?" As if that. But it, I think I'm not jacking off. I'm just depressed. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of sit down showers. Yeah, yeah. Maybe if oh, I yeah. hit puberty, I wouldn't be so depressed. But here I am. <laughs> we don't like hair. Maybe I like fucking calm. Sad. No like hair. <laughs> Damn. Were you crying in the shower? <laughs> no, just sad. It was warm, and no one bothered me. Damn, man. Yeah, when I was doing that, I was jacking off. I was, <laughs> I was, I was thinking of life, like, all right, post, post hockey practice, post whatever's going on. Big. Did you big have a shower? Did you have a bedroom to yourself, or did you share? Me? Yeah. Yeah, I had. Yeah, I had the um, fourth floor to my house. Like it was oh. all mine. I I don't know. I guess sweet. I was just like imagining you said like going to the shower to find a like, safe place feels like one of those eight brothers and sisters kind of uh, like no. solutions. Mm-hmm. 
I had like my own living room and couch and stuff uh, across the like no one else used that floor of the house. Sounds excellent. Oh <laughs> wow, that that's fancy. I didn't feel, feel it, I, maybe I'm describing it as a little more fancy than it really was. Like it, it, it wasn't a new home or anything, but it was a lot of space and privacy. What about you, Chris? Did you have siblings you had to hide your jack off uh, behavior from? No, we did it together. Uh, no, the first one done gets the controller for <laughs> I, don't even want again, I went again <laughs> I went again <laughs> no it was you're also three years younger than me and you can't do it but um no I had I had like the whole basement like we had like a sort of finished basement so I had the whole basement to myself I had kind of like the same thing with like a couch and a tv and shit and mm-hmm. so I had I had the run of the basement and no bathroom down there though so uh you didn't need I it. Didn't. You had the whole basement. The world Shit, was yours. Anywhere I wanted. Yeah. Laundry mm. room, tool room, anywhere I wanted. Um, but yeah, so I didn't really have any issues sharing. That's but, good. Did so. Did you guys, like, you, you know the old uh, 4chan post of the, the cum shoebox? Oh. You know, the guy just came in the sh- same shoebox for like six years and it started. Yeah. It was like that Simpsons episode, Lisa's Tooth, where a little society developed. They started advancing <laughs> in technology. I never actually knew anyone in real life that had a story like that. I never knew it, or at least not any- anyone that told me. And I know I never like kept, like, I never had a place where I like came on. You know what I mean? Did you guys. There's usually other warning anyone? signs to a person. No, I would get to that. I would come in a towel and then wash it. Yeah, I'd, I'd, I wanted to destroy the evidence right away. I just, mm. you know, get in the laundry right away, you know, but I would come in a towel or something. I would, right I would away. Get, You're so hoity toity. I had a hand towel. <laughs> I don't want to lay around get, getting smelly. Get too crusty, and I'd be like, this is actually starting to hurt. I need to swap this thing out with a fresh one. <laughs> and then you're like, like, you throw it in the hamper, and in your like child God, mind, damn. it's like, now no one who picks up that towel will have any <laughs> idea that it's not just a towel I used to dry the shampoo off myself. It's like a solid, hard shape of a yeah. towel. It's, like it's like starched up. <laughs> drop it and it shatters. <laughs> you drop it, it's the shape of my dick like a yeah. ghost. <laughs> and there's one really stained. Did someone do a, a wash with bleach? <laughs> there's a weird discoloration mm. on this on, on Woody, the towel that says Woody on the tag. <laughs> it's like when you throw shoes in the washer and you could hear it bouncing around inside yeah (laughs) (laughs) did you ever like you you were having to hide from your sister and your parents kyle but you were just coming right in the towel and then right in or in in toilet paper something like that for for immediate paper doesn't i don't i i i just don't see how toilet paper gets the job done or tissue when i would you come in a tissue how many tissues is it gonna take to let Let them out that your parents notice (laughs) <laughs> I, I, I promise you, if I use if I use tissues to deal with my ejaculate, then then I would run out of tissues long before I ran out of ejaculate. Okay, like I come a lot. I take lock and load. Okay, you do. It's the premium mm-hmm. premium come in hand <laughs> formula, and I, I, it would take so many puffs that that, that I couldn't afford. It. I couldn't afford. Yeah. It, <laughs> frankly, I I I it run me out of household. Um, it, it just. Oh, uh, if I got so sick, that, like if I got sick and my mom was like, and I was home from school, I'm like 12 years old or whatever, and she brought me like a box of puffs or Kleenex or whatever to blow my nose, I'd had like maybe blow my nose once, get through, <laughs> get through the whole box of puffs in my three day, uh, my three day sick three period. Days. Jeez, if I was sick for three days, it was, and she was out running errands. You're 12. It's like I'm going to I'm jacking Aren't off. Like I know that room fucking reeks. <laughs> well, you don't but you don't get it's not a movie. It's not like you can clean up your load with one tissue. Kyle's correct about that. I think he's a little hoity toity with it, but <laughs> I, you know, you need a lot of tissues to get everything totally cleaned up. And then sometimes you ball all those cummy tissues together. You need a couple other barrier tissues around the ball of tissues so that it's not so obvious what you've done. I don't get cum on my hand. You don't want to get cum on your hand. And then at your, what, and then what do you do 23 minutes later when you're feverishly horny again <laughs> because you're 12 <laughs> years old? You go, Just, well, I bet I can finalize another one of these before mom gets back like from paper Panera. mache. You keep making layers onto the same ball of tissue. <laughs> yeah, you just keep doing that. You paper mache it. Make a little it just sounds like a Mail Monday episode. I hate <laughs> <Yeah. it. laughs> Yeah, we figured took a 13 year break off of it and now we're storming back into Mail Monday jack off discussions. <laughs> <laughs> so, so many of those the laundry are jack off related. 
back in the day. Your mail Mondays, Woody. Oh, that's so funny. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Yeah. So I yeah. used to. So I would get a ton of. Um, YouTube used to have like email for the functionality built into it. We mm -hmm. could write letters to people, and I mostly got it from there. And I, I, I don't know. Like I try to help someone, but I'd also grab some like title bait, you know, mm -hmm. and, and grab that one. And yeah, the sex stuff. There'd usually be a one almost every episode. I took a lot of heat for it too. Really? But yeah, a lot of people felt like my topics were too risque for my audience. And like a part of me, like I see their point. Part of me is like, I don't know. Like someone has to talk to people about this stuff. And I was trying to give good, honest adult advice. That's funny. I never thought of those as like offensive. Like. Oh, we'll there were some about. like I, I remember one uh, a guy was like, hey, he was get he was like an older teenager call him like 16. And he said he took too long to finish during a BJ or no. He asked how he could take longer to finish during a BJ. And I'm like, your target is wrong. Your goal is all backwards. It, you and her are in a cooperative effort to get to the finish. You're not trying to hold out. This is it's an endurance. Is it like in sex? Maybe you can finish too quickly in a BJ. If you're done in like two and a half minutes, she's not mad at that. It's OK. Mm -hmm. She feels good. She's like, yeah. damn, I sucked the soul out of that guy. <laughs> exactly. So mm -hmm. you, like I just educate, I guess, old teenagers about, you know, BJs are not meant to be slow. Like, then I mean, they get back work do. back to work on little St. James Island. <laughs> then, with, that, with their newfound knowledge of how to please a man. <laughs> there was one. When yeah, was uh, Woody, what if I, the guy I'm trying to please is a fucking fake scientist quadriplegic? <laughs> 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 and he's in a mech suit that keeps his he likes me to flirt with him in binary dude like, <laughs> like three one, times in mail monday one i yeah, did one, it one, with uh, yeah. fps russia as like my partner we and i try to pick ones that were obviously jokes and scams yeah. one guy wrote me like 10 years later and said that it really upset him that i didn't take his serious problem seriously which one and i don't know i don't remember yet but i i'm like no fucking way that was a real letter. Like, I'm still not sure if I made a mistake in choosing that one and making it a joke mm -hmm. or if he was like trying to troll me yeah. whatever, four years ago. Or something. I remember that so well. Like, like uh, I can vividly remember sitting next to you with your, your bunk bed up above the thing and and, and uh, um, us going through those things and recording that mail Monday. I remember that room so well. It's so weird to like be in that room after you've seen it for years on, you know, the screen or whatever. That's always weird. Uh, I remember when I, when I went to Wings' room because I've been in there before too. It's like oh, oh, you've been there too. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's, it's it's weird to go in there and like 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 you've only seen it through this little portal, and then now you're in the three dimensional space. It's, it's I could look anywhere. <laughs> you know? Yeah, like, yeah. Every once in a while, I'll like I don't. know, We were talking about maps as decoration, and I just like did one of these guys and showed mm -hmm. that. I like that. Yeah. And uh, like I imagine if I'm a viewer, it's like what? Whoa! I never get to see over there. Like that's a secret part. Mm -hmm. So I don't let anyone see the pile of boxes and junk off. Like this is a very selective view. Show if us. you look over, there's junk. Over, there's like boxes and trash over there for mm. my move. And like, that's pretty much both sides. And I'm like, you just see this box. That's about it. You will <laughs> you not see just, anything else. Just the VHS collection, the guitar. Yeah, that, that that pile of junk. Yeah, you can see that pile of junk. I like the guitar play. back there. Having uh, a guitar I don't at all. How to play it. Oh, don't admit that. Should mm, I go get mine that I also can't play? I can play. Guitar, can't play. Of course, I have a guitar. I can't play. Every I white man, of course, over thirty. I, play. Every white man over thirty-five has at least one guitar he can't play. I have a few years, and yeah, so I, I got to learn guitar. The next to, there will be a <laughs> like guitar soon. <laughs> a time will come when you're like, worst case scenario, it looks cool on a wall. Yeah, that's what I'm going does. for. Yeah. Did you used to be able to play guitar, Chris, and then you just kind of fell out of practice? Or I could play like acoustic guitar a little bit, but electric mm -hmm. guitar I learned is like a much different thing. Like it's you have to learn it's like lots of different chords. You're not just like strumming. It's a lot of it's a lot of bullshit that I have yet to conquer. So it okay. just looks cool. Dude, that's fine, that's fine really, where I could play like all the notes in a bunch of songs, but it just didn't sound like music. Like it, it some mm -hmm. sort of like rhythm expression type gift is not there for me and and i learned all the fingering but it sounded like shit yeah one that's easy is piano that. piano is a lot easier i learned i because mm. i had always did the thing where you try to like learn songs before you actually know how to play an instrument you just learn yes. what to hit and what to strum and then now i'm actually trying to like go through and like learn from the beginning the right way and 
piano is miles ahead easier than guitar i've learned i have it's a like, friend who's succeeding at learning guitar and he says that both gibson and fender have really good phone apps that walk you through it hmm. and uh, i don't know how it works exactly but i mean you can forget <laughs> it'll tune your guitar with you and tell you if you're playing it well and suggestions and he seems to think it's great i have uh, skillshare for piano and that's been going good that's a lot easier mm -hmm. but what is that you got like a tutor like um, no, it's like there? a Skillshare, like a course with a, where a guy goes through and he's like teaching you one, like the notes and then like learning like, oh, that's how every chord is done. And it's like once you like learned a few fundamentals, it's like, oh, OK, everything makes sense. And he's kind of going through like every step along the way. And there's so it's not like a personal thing. It's like a pre-recorded well, course. Something about piano just seems to make much more sense the way it's laid out. Yeah. Whereas guitar, like it, it's <laughs> I never made sense of it how like you know this exactly yeah equivalent to that one but it's all in a, it's not in a straight line configuration like piano. like you can memorize yeah, chords on guitar like rows, but it's like but on piano it's like oh this is a C and then every chord is this distance away from each other and then you just go along the line and like everything is kind of the same in that way my and it makes so much wanna, more sense my fingers don't want to do the uh, the fingering correctly. They they lock up and they like lock and pop and shit. And it's real frustrating. I got baby hands, so I can like barely reach half the core. I'm like, <laughs> and, like every time I want to like reach around and grab it. Like, Two of the fingers I, on one of my hand don't work really. So I try to play left handed. I'm like I can strum with my left and then I'll finger fuck. with my right, which is backwards. Right. But so much of the world out there, you would have to like invert in your head mm -hmm. and then play it in reverse because I'm playing left handed. And that worked against me a little bit too. I forgot about that. Yeah, that's a huge impediment. I wouldn't even attempt it if I didn't have, like, like that. That's rough. Nah. I don't know. I wish. I always want to play a musical instrument. It seems like a cool idea. Just like speaking Spanish. Now nah, someday you'll have the time. <laughs> <laughs> I just get so annoyed with that. It. Is I what held me to... back. That's <laughs> yeah, not that at all. Like, like I, when I was trying to learn the guitar, I maybe spent a month at it you know and i'm like going along with the guy on youtube and it's like mm -hmm. it's going okay he I, I can't remember exactly but but he sort of taught you a little fundamental and a lot of song and i appreciated that because it's like let's make this fucking thing make some music this week could we get a little music out of it this week and not play it like it's like a ding dong dong mm -hmm. let's mm -hmm. not do that for six years until we play like some mm -hmm. some Marty Robbins or something. You want to like, bust it out at a social event like within a month. I know. It up and then <laughs> I want to hear something I that sounds like music Wonderwall. come out of my hand. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, like, I would always try to like go too song. into it. Like I try to like jump into it too fast. Where I'm like I'm like I want to learn a song right now, and I'm like now I'm just doing like the thirty minutes a day shit. Where I'm like okay, if, after a few months, if I'm doing it every day for just a little bit, I feel like that'd be better than me just trying to like go right into a wall and like learn a song right yeah. away. Cause that's what I've been doing and that hasn't worked out. So 30 like, minutes I'll, a day. Yeah. I, I can 10,000 hours. Oh, 20, well, thousand days <laughs> to be, but that's to be like a master at something. I think that's not to just like figure they it out. They say that, but how long is 20,000 days? Can't be more than days. a few years. Uh, it's, why is that relevant? It's 10,000 <laughs> hours, right? Isn't that what you said? Yeah. But he said he half, said half hour an hour a day. day. So like 20,000 days. I'm not really setting myself up for mastery right now. <laughs> yeah, so it'd be like 10. So it'd be... Is that 70 years? 54 like six, years. 54 years. 54 years and, and I'll be yeah. half decent, huh? You're going to be the... I, I, I can't wait. The, the cat's pajamas <laughs> in the nursing home. Maybe I'll bump it up to 45 minutes a day. <laughs> yeah, so I'll be 104. <laughs> yeah, so you will be like, so good at playing Wonderwall. You'll be the coolest geriatric. Mm. Before uh, before we jump to the next thing, we're going to hear from a couple of wonderful, wonderful sponsors. Oh, the little the little sponsor brick isn't up right now, Zach. We got to throw that back up there. All right, I'll take this opportunity. To this down. episode of PKA is brought to you by FaroDistro.com. FaroDistro.com. PKA fans, picture this: you, me, and enough smoking accessories to make Snoop Dogg's connection collection look like a toy aisle. Faro Distro's got everything for the THC enthusiasts out there, bud lovers, dabbers, edible connoisseurs, and even those who want to discreetly puff away with disposable goodies. It's like a THC performance, and your place is the green room. Indulge in the festivities with their latest offering, the Faro Exotics THCA Buds. I gotta show that. I think I got it right here. 
an outstanding choice for those looking for top shelf quality flour. These buds are so top shelf, they've got their own VIP section. Dispensary grade, indoor grown, and crafted from everyday crafted for the everyday flour enjoyer. For the dab enthusiasts, get ready to savor the richness of our THCA diamond sauce, because who needs diamonds when you have something even more precious to enjoy? And let's not forget our delectable assortment of high-quality, high-milligram edibles, perfect for sharing and adding an extra layer of joy to your celebrations. If your New Year's resolution includes a step towards more holistic wellness, explore Faro Distro's range of CBD products and therapeutic mushrooms. And like Keef on your bowl, sprinkle code PKA30 to top off 30% of your whole order. Top on top for 30% off your whole order. Sorry. PK30, that is 30% off PK30. Big discount, 30% off anything, including the DabX Go. Visit farodistro.com to discover quality products that cater to your THC preference. Elevate your 2024 experience with Faro Distro's premium offerings and make this year one to remember, kinda. So <laughs> farodistro.com, code PK30. Get yourself the edibles. Get yourself the THCA diamond sauce. If you're looking for the absolute tippity top strongest thing they have to smoke or dab rather, that's the THCA diamond sauce. It is strong as shit. Uh, if you're looking for the strongest flower, it's the THCA stuff. You notice in the read, they're talking about the THCA flower a lot. And that's because this stuff is selling like hotcakes, folks, like hotcakes. It's unbelievably potent, very strong. You will get your money's worth and more with code PKA 30 for 30% off. And, uh, talked to our they they picked a winner for the dab x go and i talked to to our rep over there and i was like you know i don't think we should say this gentleman's name or email on the show and they were like i agree and so mm. winner enjoy it uh we won't say your email so you will we'll still be able to use that email for as long as you want to uh enjoy your dab x go and get yourself some thca diamond sauce with it i'm sure they'll probably end up sending them a free one just because they they appreciate the business that's code pka30 for 30 percent off and as always with the edibles don't start with the same milligram total you've been used to from gas station shit go lower you will enjoy it very very potent high milligram edibles uh, again, farodistro.com, link below, PK30 for 30% off your entire order. That's a hell of a deal. This episode also brought to you by Blue Chew. Blue Chew, if you guys are listening, I need a, an updated 2024 read. I'm, I already I changed the year in here for you, but you know <clears throat> that can't last forever. Let's talk about sex, guys. Shouldn't you always be at your best? 2024 is the year to maximize your performance in the bedroom. Listen up, bluechew.com. Blue Chew is a unique online service that delivers the same active ingredients as Viagra, Cialis, and Levitra, but in chewable tablets and at a fraction of the cost. You can take them anytime, day or night, so you can plan ahead or be ready whenever an opportunity arises. The process is simple. Sign up at BlueChew.com, consult with one of their licensed medical providers, and once you're approved, you'll receive your prescription within days. The best part? It's all done online, so no visit to the doctor's office, no awkward conversation, and no waiting in line at the pharmacy. Blue Chew's tablets are made in the USA and prepared and shipped direct to your door in a discreet package. Blue Chew wants to help you have better sex. Discover your options at bluechew.com. Chew it and do it. And special deal for our listeners. Try Blue Chew free when you use promo code PKA at checkout. Just pay the $5 in shipping. That's bluechew.com promo code PKA to receive your first month free. Visit bluechew.com for more details and important safety information. And we thank Blue Chew for yet another year of sponsoring the podcast. Again, Blue Chew, B L U E C H E W.com, code PKA. Just pay the five bucks in shipping and take the page out of Kyle's book. Go for the Tadalafil. That is the, the Cialis uh, generic. And uh, it is what you want to go for. Kyle has, uh, he, he's a bit of a Sherpa in these ways for Woody and I, we had no idea. And we took his expertise and we uh, applied it in practice. And he, he's been a, a 10 out of 10 guy. Uh, I like to supervise. I, I supervised for the first couple of weeks, but they got the hang of it. He mm -hmm. did. I kept sending him photos. Like, is this hard enough? Is this hard? Nope. Enough? <laughs> nope. <laughs> he was like, God damn it. You're so hard. Pinch the base. <laughs> Pinch the base. <laughs> <laughs> Squeezing the hell out of it. <laughs> <It's laughs> <solid advice>. <laughs> Like your course. giggles and pinch the base, you amateur. <laughs> <laughs> and of course, you know, it was hard at the time, but it's good to know. This episode is also brought to you by Lock and Load, the premium, premium ejaculation increasing supplement taking the world by storm. It's code PKA or code JIZ for 10% off. We're probably fully back in stock now that the holiday season's over. I know this is popular as a, a stocking stuffer. So, Lock and Load. 
Check it out. You're not going to regret it. You're going to come like a man. You're going to be spewing. You're going to be spurting. You're going to be shooting. You're going to be feeling good. Your confidence is going to be up. Your girl, your guy, whoever you're with, whoever's making you come, they're going to be covered in this stuff. And they're going to be going, yeah. my God, I'm doing a great job. This is good for my confidence. And then how does that work? How does that impact you? Then she's in a better mood. She starts cooking more. She starts cleaning more. She starts wanting to blow you more because every time she does, she's getting a load from you that says she's a queen, an absolute goddess, the really beautiful woman. Are you saying that our product genetically reprograms women into trad wives? Legally, yes. (laughs) 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 And all you have to do is hop on, use code PKA, use code JIZ, and start coming like a man. And as always... It's not about just cum pills. Sure, that's the most impressive, the best thing over on Derek's site. But protein powder, energy drinks, weight loss supplements, energy supplements, dream supplements for sleep, quality of sleep, the amount of dreams you have. Derek has an efficaciously dosed product for any and all needs that you could possibly have. So check it out. Lock and load. Code PKA or code JIZ for 10% off anything over there. Mm. I use pre-workout. That's it. You use this pre-workout? Nice. The the yeah. nitric, no stim one? I use both. I, I use uh like sometimes like if I've already had like depending on whatever caffeine I'll use, like one or the other. But I always try to do like two scoops and like one of the no stim no matter what. But yeah, yeah. I like the no stim ones the most, mm-hmm. honestly. Yeah, and I know Kyle does as well. Very good yep. stuff. Are uh, are there any of these reality shows, Chris, that we should actually watch? I still stand behind Mountain Monsters. I think you would just en- thoroughly shit. enjoy that. You would thoroughly enjoy that. <laughs> I perked up. I don't. <laughs> I was like, oh, no, no. Oh, I love a good TV recommendation from a subject matter expert. I'm telling you, Mountain Monster. <laughs> I'm telling you, the these guys—they know their shit. They no, uh, that one is fun to watch. What network? So it's. I think it's Travel Channel, but it's on like Discovery oh, Plus, man, which I, I have. Got it. I have two Discovery Plus subscriptions because. One day, like I had it through Amazon and that's how I would like Uh Amazon Prime is where I do all my recording for my shows or whatever. And one day, the one day I went to go get footage for a video, Amazon Prime video was down for whatever. Like the one day Amazon is down. So I had to go to Discovery Plus's website and then re-sign up. So you can get it through them. They also upload a lot of shit to YouTube. So you can get it like almost full episodes on there sometimes. But um, that one, if you really want one that will make you feel just genuinely bad milf manor on tlc milf manor is that yeah, like a bunch a, of milfs in the house trying to so, rope some some guy in so it's one of those like island resort shows like bachelor type shows and there's a a lineup of milfs and you're like okay this is already like it's called milf manor this is it's gonna be trash and then they're like okay let's see like who are the guys gonna be and then they like open the curtains it's their sons they're dating each other's sons Gross. and that's the show yep and that is like i think there's nine episodes i've covered four and they're like finish the show finish the show and that's the only show i've watched where i'm like i don't want to watch another second of this are the sons like overly supportive of their moms getting laid they're not excited about it <laughs> i'll say that oh <laughs> see the opposite would be funnier if they were there's like... some there's some that are like that tony yeah, you have failed talking. the cooking challenge and now <laughs> If you want to stay in the manor, you have to finger your mom in the hot tub. Oh, it's like it, it'll be like like there's well, that's awkward moments sprinkled in <laughs> where like one's like they do these challenges where it's like reveal a secret. And one of the moms is like, I slept with my son's best friend. And then the son's like. You oh, like through like the next episode, he's just like he's in the pool by himself. Like, <laughs> like I don't have any friends. Fucking Jared. What he's you like, didn't Oof. say is my best friend's 11. <laughs> yeah that one that one's not bad because it's awkward because like awkward weird shit is like my bread and butter like that's that's what's gonna that's good for a video i but what i don't like is the love triangles and like all of the drama like that shit gets so tiring with yeah 12 moms no, mm-hmm. i like oh, um I, the 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 reality show i like is uh gordon ramsay's like Kitchen nightmares. Top shell first. No, no, no. I like the one where um chef. I like the one where they're competing. He gets like uh, I don't know, twenty five chefs, and yeah, they yeah. compete over the weeks. I like. Are there a few that. other judges in there, like a couple others. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. He's got, he has he has it's a trio of judges. It's a good show. Um, and and uh, there's thirteen seasons of it. Maybe I've seen it all. I'm watching it right now. 
you know, like like it's the one where they let that blind chick win that time, and I got super salty mm. about it. <laughs> it's like, I always get clips of that. Like I get, I get the good clips where it's like, like Chef like stuns Gordon Ramsay with his dish of blah blah blah. I always get the positive ones, so I, I don't see the negative shit. I always see Gordon oh. be like, "That is fucking incredible," and like he's just like stunned. Oh, it's the negative the first, stuff that you want, though. That's better. Yeah. The first, yeah. cu- the, like the first two episodes of every season. Those are the episodes that are kind of like that beginning phase of American Idol back in the day where they're just getting raw auditions in front of them mm. almost. So like Gordon will be like, everyone peel a fa- peel potatoes and he'll just make them peel potatoes for like 30 fucking minutes. And everybody's got cuts. <laughs> everybody's bleeding and bandaged like they've got medical staff on hand he's just torturing them and then he comes back and judges how much waste there is in their peelings and whoever was the the wasteful people get immediately cut like like you're out of here how much potato can you waste and they're all bloody and it's like damn dude this was grabbing kind of cooks from the back of an applebee's like they're just getting <laughs> the bottom of the barrel for half of them oh if that yeah sometimes they'll be like you know, the same way in american idol someone would have no idea how to self-evaluate they Mm. i think that i'm like on the same level as maybe celine dion you know one of the great singers of our time i i truly believe that everyone says so and that and you're like all right like she seems like she's for real she's maybe she's pretty too and then she gets up there and she sounds like roseanne barr singing the national anthem (laughs) it's a complete joke of a performance there's plenty of people who cook like that they'll make like i don't know squid ink pot roast or something yeah and be like squid ink pot roast have you lost your mind this is an insult to squid and pot roasts everywhere <laughs> you should be killed in public yeah, it's fun i like yeah. gordon because he, he can Hard tell he's not he doesn't mean it anymore he's just like i, I bet before the filming starts he's like all right everyone just remember oh, i'm in character mean gordon's gonna be coming around later don't worry friendly gordon will be back later yeah and uh, they go i like your like, impression of him <laughs> like your crocodile yeah. hunter remember, impression. as soon as the cameras start rolling i'm gonna pretend to be a british guy <laughs> who's a chef I just, <laughs> I just finished hunting down animals in the outback and now i'm gonna yell at you about a quiche <laughs> that's why i love i love his like youtube channel where it's just him in his house and he's like the got his kids accent. and he's like super nice and i'm like okay i like this i don't stop yelling yeah just for once just... i i, I no. like his yells his yells like are what yells. keep me engaged like when i see someone mildly fuck up something in season or episode eight of the season of master chef when he starts getting real you know holding them mm-hmm. holding their feet to the fire i don't want him to be like it's mostly good You've messed up the crust on the tapioca. Like, I want him to go in, like, both hands, strangulation mode. Like, really, like, beating them down with their mistake. There are some edits where they splice the footage of Junior MasterChef with regular (laughs) MasterChef. And so you'll have him screaming obscenities at someone's face, like, hands on his like five <laughs> yeah. bent over in their face, like giving them the, the business. And then they'll cut to a crying eight year old who <laughs> has, has deflated. <laughs> it's just like, damn, Gord's giving little man hell. Those are the best. Did you ride the short bus here today? <laughs> Is that what you've done? Oh, Making a mockery of my kitchen. Did you watch the new Chappelle uh, special? I have not. I have not. Rats. All right. Well, I watched it because. It was getting a ton of flack. Everybody was like, "This is the end of Chappelle. He's wasn't funny. Shark. This is terrible." And uh, and and then they were saying the same thing about Rich, Ricky Gervais' new special as well. They're like, all they do is talk about you couldn't make this joke anymore, and then they make the joke, and it's not funny anymore. And then someone I saw someone else post, "Here are the top two televisions in the world, the uh, television shows in the world today," and it's them like back to back. So I watched Chappelle first. I'd say eight out of ten. Like I thought it was quite funny. I thought it was shorter than I would have liked. I wanted more. Um, he had he had a couple of very long stories that had like it wasn't just one payoff. There were like two or three payoffs mm-hmm. as the story goes on, like like really good stories. Um, he opens with I won't spoil his bit, but it's like a Norm. Not only is it like a Norm McDonald joke, he mentions Norm McDonald. He tells a story about Norm McDonald in his opening, All and right. I won't spoil I won't spoil it, but the joke, the punchline or anything, but the story is he's how, and he even does a Norm impression, which is kind of funny. He's like, my great f- friend, the late Norm McDonald knew that I was a huge fan of Jim Carrey. He's talented in a way you can't practice. And I, and he knew, I, he called, hey, would you like to meet Jim Carrey? 
And I was like, yes. And he and he got to go to the movie set. And he has a whole story about meeting Jim Carrey. It's very funny. I like the special a lot. I thought it was better than his last one. So everybody shitting on him was kind of weird. Um, I thought he looked good too, like physically and and like you know, like is he, he on that Joe good? Rogan. Uh, he's been like he got yoked like six eight years ago or something like that and he's actually sized down since then like if anything he's like not as big but um he looks healthy but i thought it was very funny i thought it was like a seven eight out of ten like as far as specials go and then i tried to watch ricky gervais i didn't make it very deep into that before i turned it off and watched it like watch something i didn't like it i usually like ricky gervais but it it was kind of what the internet had claimed it was of him like oh can't say this anymore now can you oh but here i go oh i said it didn't i What's the one comedian? I think it's Jimmy <laughs> Carr. I think did that on like one of his recent specials where he's like, "We're gonna get canceled tonight," and then he just makes like the dumbest jokes you've ever heard. And he's like, "I, I don't remember exactly. I saw a clip of it. I'm like, man, this fucking sucks." Like, aside yeah. from whatever point you're trying to make, this is just like not good. <laughs> was was the joke that he was saying, Jimmy Carr, that he was going to say something edgy and then he didn't, or was it like? <sighs> He was pretending to be edgy and he'd be like, I'm going That's to get canceled for this one. White people are bad. It was like, like I don't know. It, it's been months. So, you know, that's forever. Um, but uh, yeah. <laughs> I remember <laughs> who's to say. But um, yeah, like I, I remember like watching it and like I couldn't tell him like this either has to be a bit or it's just really bad. Like I was in between both of those. I'm like, it's either one or the other. It's either he's making such bad comedy that he's doing it as a bit or it's just if you can't bad. tell that doesn't bode well for it. Yeah, I'm like sometimes man. usually yeah. you can tell. Like it's like is this uh, movie well, I'm only 90% of the way through. Is it a bit? Yeah. <laughs> it's like no, it's just a bad movie. Yeah, ruined the, uh, He also uh the Chappelle special, he talks about the Chris Rock uh Will Smith thing cuz like uh, he's uh um, Topical. Yeah. It, it kind <laughs> of, <laughs> well, like well, 2 I, years ago. I, I, but I just got here was Chris know. saying that the Chappelle show was not good. I was no, saying, the, uh, I'm I'm saying the, the special, special show special about Jimmy good, Carr and, and and during it he uh he's talking about um Jimmy Carr the Chris Rock slapping thing and and a few other things. it was really good I liked the special a lot I only saw it the last, opening it was a bit, year ago right it has everyone like pissed off I guess as an opening joke yeah don't spoil it I don't I don't want to like spoil the joke for Taylor I kind of like told him like the yeah. beginning part I'll watch it um, like I I tend to I like, like those that jokes joke. that like upset people it's fun I I didn't find it that upsetting. I was like, I get it. He once again touched a third rail, but Jesus, like it, if you just fly off the handle anytime someone touches the third rail, which is the trans thing, um, like then you need to develop some thicker skin yeah. and just be chill. He, he, I didn't think Chappelle was that like, I didn't think he said anything bad or anything that I was like, oh, that's just kind of hateful for the sake of being hateful. He told funny fucking jokes. He told one, this isn't spoiling. Nah, I won't do it. Um, yeah, don't spoil don't, don't spoil it. Uh, Watch I think one of my favorite. It. it feels shorter than it should be. If anything, I wanted more, mm. and uh, and at no point would he, he even like sets up a joke about like this is a bad joke. Hey, they, he says this is that joke that I tell, and five people laugh real hard out of twenty thousand, and I go, <laughs> that's enough. <laughs> <laughs> he like sets the joke joke up like that, so I'm like, yeah, that is that joke. <laughs> yeah, I, you just get a chuckle this time. Move on. But uh, I think one I of my favorite, special, and I like him. One of my favorite examples of like a comedian that like actually like is, you know, people like when they say like you can't make jokes anymore, and I'm like, well, they did a good job. Is like Shane Gillis's new special on Netflix mm. was like one of the best specials I've seen in years. Mm-hmm. Is like new one, mm-hmm. not the one on. I know he did one on YouTube, I think, but his mm-hmm. Netflix one was really good, and I didn't feel like he like pulled back at all. It was like stuff where it's like most people be like, oh, you can't say that. But I'm like, well, he did it in a funny way. And like, that's the thing. Like half the time it's like, it's like you can say offensive shit. But like, I think it was, uh, what's his name? Um, Anthony Jeselnik was on like an interview and he's like, you just have to get away with it. If it's funny yeah. enough, for the most part, you can just get away with yeah. saying it's some the, shit. I South agree. Well, model. A, lot, exactly. from, a lot of yeah, conservative we'll comics have been losing me lately. Because they just go on and on and on about how they can't say things, how they're getting canceled. They're just complaining and whining and they're old man yelling <laughs> at clouds bullshit. Meanwhile, they're making this complaint on like the JRE, the Joe Rogan experience, which is like the most watched piece of media in humankind. Mm-hmm. I just made that up, but it might be true. <laughs> yeah, individually. <laughs> and, 
right? And and they're like, yeah, I just can't say this anymore. I'm so canceled. Are you fucking kidding me? More people are watching you right now than have watched anyone else do anything except maybe like a Super Bowl or something. You're not yeah. canceled. You're just not yeah. funny. All you're doing is bitching and moaning about not being able to like be more racist or something. Well, I mean, like Shane Gillis did get like shut down from SNL and -hmm. then his career got buoyed again by Joe Rogan. And so I don't think it's like, like Joe is so big, but he he exists outside like the whole cancelable thing. If someone gets canceled and it's like, you can't have a show on adult swim or Netflix or Hulu or Amazon prime. And the examples of these canceled million dollars, it's usually like Sam Allen complaining. He can't, he can't play a 17 year old version of the the, the million, the million dollar extreme guys, Sam Hyde, Nick Rochefort, Charles Carroll. Those guys will never get another TV show ever. They've been blackballed from that industry by adult swim and a lot of producers. Well, I think what helped Shane is if they were to put like Sam and those guys on JRE, like that's a that's a circuitous way around it because Joe is his own alternative media economy almost. And so, you know, I don't think that someone having their career destroyed <laughs> in certain avenues and then getting on Rogan is like an evidence of, oh, this is not even cancel culture. Cause like what happened to Shane Gillis was canceling shit. Yeah, oh, he I made funny, he made funny like jokes he, about Asians what he and he shut him down. SNL for, do you remember? He was he was like doing funny impressions of Asian people. So oh, he yeah, never he said, appeared, uh, I will always stand. Now. He never actually appeared on SNL. They hired him, and then they like looked over his previous work and saw things they didn't care for, and then like, you hired this guy? No! What happened with Shane on SNL? He was on, I think it was, it might have been JRE, he was like talking about it, and like, when he got hired on SNL, like that stuff was like coming out almost immediately, and they were like telling him like, uh, uh, Lauren Michaels, like all of it, they're like, it's fine, don't worry about it, you're good. And they were kind of like that over and over again until it was just like constant like articles and news coming out to the point where they were like, you have to fire him. And they were like, all right, yeah, like at this point we have to. But like it sounded like at first they were like, just don't worry about it. We'll get you on stage. We'll get you on a show. You'll be fine. Mm. And I think yeah. what like really mm. helped him was that special he uploaded to YouTube, which I 100% like on his channel because that's got like 40 million views. And yeah, that was good. like all over TikTok. I saw that in like shorts, reels, everything. I think that's what probably helped him get a Netflix special because they're like, all right, you can actually do a good special. Like you're, you know, you've got it. And, you know, yeah, his Netflix good job. special is very good, and and I, I like that yeah, he a found dude. a way to laugh with uh, people um, with Down syndrome, and, and, and instead of at mm-hmm. them, like like he does so many Down syndrome jokes. He did a good job jokes, of that. Yeah. Oh, he crushed and, and, that. And, and and none of them are 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 like saying anything bad about that people Down syndrome. He's like, as people get uncomfortable when I talk about it, you tell they don't they don't know any people with Down syndrome. They're the happiest mm-hmm. people in the world. Yeah, my <laughs> really job that. like, that's an example like, of like being able to take subjects like that and like not make it like offensive but it's like okay you're actually like you do. doing a good job with the sensitive topic. So I, I have a special yeah. new son and because of that sometimes i can be a little sensitive to like developmental disability jokes mm. and uh uh i enjoyed his routine and he wasn't wonderful like, yeah he wasn't taking digs at this guy he's like this guy's cool as shit and the grilled cheeses and shit. i was rolling like it was really good you get that cheese, so. Danny. he's making him at night (laughs) he he really does and i mean like he has such a good down syndrome face when when, when he when he puts Mm -hmm. his his face on like like honest to god it's like that's Mm. i wouldn't ask him for directions (laughs) like (laughs) like Uh, yeah he did a great job and i appreciate that I think he's a conservative comedian who doesn't just talk about how he's been canceled all the time. He just does good work as opposed to like a Dennis Leary. who's like, they canceled me. No, you're over the hill. You're not fun anymore. I've you're never fine. seen one clip of Dennis. Le- Wait, was he in uh was he the guy in the early 2000s, the fireman, mid-2000s, the fireman, the fireman show. Yeah. I remember I don't know that hearing show. about, yeah. Uh, Save me or popular. something. I've never seen an Save episode. Me. It's called like Save me or something like that. He's a fireman. But I've been on Showtime or something. It was, I would see its memes and and be like, no, I don't care. I'm not getting in your little world. Um, I always mm. see him. I haven't seen him do anything in a long time. It's it's Bill Maher that used to strike me as like the, oh. the far left guy, mm-hmm. but it's been interesting to see him be pulled toward the center over the last five yes. years. I remember someone made an appearance on his show five years ago, and they were and and they brought up the menstruating men thing, mm-hmm. and he and, and Bill's laughing. He's like, no one is saying that. He's like you will be forced to agree with that 
they are going to force you to agree with men's trading. This is Bill who said it? No, some they're telling Bill, and Bill's like, oh, okay. that's ridiculous. No one thinks men menstruate. No one thinks those things. No one says them. And like you see, like five years have taken their toll on him, and he's been pulled right to the center as far as I'm concerned. I, maybe he's left of center to be fair, but I, I think so. He's yeah, way I, further I really to the like, right than he once was. He's right where I think I am. Right. Which is like, I'm close. Well, I'm sorry. I'm close. Oh, you're close to where he is. Okay. Um, which is like on the left, but not on board with the stupid shit. You know, like, like, I don't know if you're trans, I'm more than happy to address you with whatever surnames and stuff you want. But, but we both know, like, you're not really a boy now, right? Like, or or whatever it is. Like, I, I, I don't know how to phrase it. I, I think you're having a hard time, so don't. I want to treat you nicely. That's yeah, where I come like, from. I don't want to have to pretend like we're in an alternate reality. Although I'm happy to live in like a, a make believe realm where we're all respectful with one yeah, another. Yeah, you know, like maybe you don't. When you call me sir, it doesn't mean that you you think anything. It's, you're just being respectful. Like. like I don't know. I don't mm-hmm. know how to phrase it well either, but but I don't want to be told what to say because I'm polite enough to say the right thing to begin with. But if you come in and tell me that if I'm not polite, it's el- it's or else, then I start not wanting to be so polite anymore. Then I start wanting to say some slurs and say, fuck you too, you piece of shit. You know, like now, a now lot I'm of not people on Bill my blue team, I'll call it, yeah. uh, didn't like that Supreme Court decision where they said you can't consider race when you look at college applications. Mm-hmm. And I was like, well, I think you shouldn't it feels racist to give preferential treatment based on skin color why is it good how is that good i don't i don't get it it feels very unfair and i bet bill maher would agree with me i think with yeah, bill maher I, I, i've always been like no matter where where he stands on anything he just has a way of saying it in the most annoying way possible okay you don't half like the time it, right? and i'm like i don't care what side you're on just you sound like a douche like every he's time he, like, and he's so like you, so yeah. many comedians do that in my mind. Not Shane Gillis, really, but a lot of comedians, and we've had a bunch on the show who, who maybe fall into this. They think they're better than everyone else. They think they're smarter. That comedians are some sort of like special breed who think better than pedestrians do or oh. civilians, they might call us. <laughs> you know, they're like, oh my God, don't battle with me on the mic because I'm such a fucking super genius. You don't stand a chance. I don't see plumbers doing that. I don't see plumbers saying, you know what? I just look at plumbing in a different way than everybody else. And I see things you don't see. I'm a superhuman. <laughs> yeah, no, you're just a fucking professional plumber. And this guy's a professional communicator. And sure, he's better at communicating than most people are. But he doesn't think he's some sort of higher level of human. That he has a plumber's brain that works better than a pedestrian's brain. But Tom Segura, Joe Rogan, fucking Burt Chrysler... Adam Schultz, they all go on that shit. And I could list people who've been on this show too, but I'm too polite, uh, who, who do that same sort of thing. And just, I'm so much brighter and more clever and sharper than the rest of the planet. Get over yourself. You're just a well, person. Well, the, the real thing is like... I know at I least cannot... one person you're referring to. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, I, I see comedians sometimes talk about what they do as if it's a martial art. Um, like, and When I hear martial artists talk about, like, for example, like a bar fight breaking out, it's like... It'd be over before it began. You'd be better off just not, just everyone needs to walk away. I'm going to break my hands killing you all. You don't understand. This is going to upset me back eight months and you the rest of your lives. Like, like, don't do this. But then you'll hear a comedian kind of talk about like their ability to turn a phrase or write a joke and like it's mystical or something. I don't know. They, they act like it's a superpower sometimes and that can be grating. They're like, ah, you don't understand the way a comedian's mind works. Ah. You can't put me in that situation. That's the shit that what, annoys you're me. You're not a so human much. being yeah. anymore. Like, what are you a fucking like? There were some guys human? like that on on Opie and Anthony back in the day <laughs> okay. who would like say it was like a joke on uh, the R slash Opie and Anthony subreddit, which was the funniest forum to have ever existed. <laughs> and like they would make I don't remember exactly what comedian did it, but they would say like, yeah, it was civilians. They like mm-hmm. referred to like non comedians like in their friend group and stuff as like civilians. And I remember even like so corny. I think Anthony made fun of him for that. Good. I think Jimmy made fun of him for that. Like, but because that is Carr. just oh uh, Jimmy oops. Norton. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. The other. I can just imagine oh. Jimmy. Oh, let me fucking salute. Let me fucking yeah. salute your punchline, General Lap a lot. <laughs> Dude, if, like at least like once every six months, I'll be online and I'll just get a little. 
walk down memory lane of like, man, I wish I could just head on over to the Opie and Anthony subreddit. Is right it gone? Now. It's it been gone inactive? since 2018. Damn. You, if you like tracked my use of Reddit after 2018, <laughs> cataclysmic downfall. Like mm. it was. Hockey's I remember. Still there. Oh, yeah, but hockey just sucks now. They oh. don't. There's they are the slowest highlight posters of all time. Really? Like MMA yeah. is on fire. I'm talking about literally. Dude, the hockey one ninety sucks seconds. At it. Like ninety if, seconds, and you have HD. That's one thing that Twitter has improved a lot on. I don't know if maybe it was a change that was coming anyway, but since the X takeover, or whatever, like it, the sidebar that has highlights for sports is so much better. Like now, if I want to like find the Blues game highlights versus Minnesota, I just click one tab and it has everything relevant. So I can just scroll through and it's like, there's the first goal from Minnesota. Here's the second goal. Here's the first goal from St. Louis. You go on the hockey Reddit and the first five posts are like, GM of Ottawa says that he doesn't want the players wearing jerseys with gay stuff on it. And it's like, I'm looking for the recent Ovechkin goal. I don't (laughs) care about this. I'm so with you. Know. So YouTube is good for me. I bet it exists yeah. in hockey also. I, mm-hmm. I I always say I don't watch the games. The truth is I've been watching the games in nine minutes. That's how long it takes to summarize a basketball game. And I really get a sense of the flow. I see some of the players play. I watch the pick and roll. Like I, you learn some by reading, but you learn a little more by seeing a nine minute version of the game. And I enjoy yeah. it. Pacing is right. That is like I've getting into college football this year mm-hmm. and following that. A lot of my YouTube <laughs> stuff recently. Does that bandwagon just, have suspension or is it like a Conestoga wagon? It's 100% a hundred percent bandwagon. Team. I yeah. don't, at it, least I, I went to Mizzou. It's only I claim man, <laughs> It's it's only I'll, I'll I claim you went so I, I claim state, of course I went there. But UNC, I paid a tuition and that should count. Yeah. <laughs> That's where my daughter went. I said I should pull for that team. Yeah. <laughs> I've only got a problem if you're going to an out of state school. There's no reason for mm. me to support Texas. You know, like yeah. I can't be a USC fan. Like, no, like yeah. it's got to be your like your home. Fucking I'm from team, Missouri. Please. I'm going to root for Mizzou. And yeah. I went there. So like and so they have a good year. And I'm so I'm going to yeah. I'm going to follow football and I'm going to pretend I understand the rules. And then I'm going to have strong <laughs> positions about it <laughs> <laughs> online, where like mm. something happens and they're like pass interference. And I'm like, yeah, in, in what world? Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, I have no conception of what it would mean to not mean. But uh, we need to drag you into the drama-filled world of MMA. Like I can't believe that you're not I'm fighting not on this and stories sports guy. Like you don't if need there, to be. If there's drama between show. hockey players. Um, you don't care. Like, I don't care. Like if it's silly, I'll bring it up on this show. But I don't care if there's drama mm. about NF- uh, NFL players. You know, Mizzou players. I don't care. Like I like watching the game. And then that's it, dude. I love it. Like, like I, the I know about drama and silly is subtle. Like that's true. That's true. Because you absolutely cared when that one player, it might have been Marchant or something, licked the other player. Oh yeah, that was fun. That yeah. Was kind of a fun thing. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So all right, fair enough. I I do like the silly stuff, but when it's like Instagram right, arguing of players. I don't care about that. Like, oh. like that sort of, and I, I also do. like, I guess I'm biased because that stuff doesn't really happen in the NHL because like, see, they'll like, like some Finnish guy will get ripped on by a Canadian and the Finnish guy won't get it. And he'll be like, I agree. We have so much fun on the ice together. Like, <laughs> <laughs> like I'm trying to hate on you. MMA has so many, like it, it has real stories. It's not always like that. WWE. Oh, really? You don't like the cut of my jib? Well, come Sunday night, I'm going to stomp a mud hole in your northern Yankee ass. It's not that. It's mm. like, you went after me and and like reported me to child services, and now I'm in a custody battle for my son because of what you fellow MMA fighter said about me online. You made t-shirts with my mugshot on them, and all I ever did was say that I whooped my son when he steps out of line in a press conference when asked. Like that's a thing that happened, and then you got the that that was Ian Gary that did that. But then you've got like Sean Strickland crybaby drama now. You got uh, um, yeah, always that, that doesn't with, with, that doesn't entice me the way it does you. Like I, 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 I like watching the NHL because I really like I enjoy seeing the flow of the sport 
And but really what do you cool know player. about like Yagir Yagir's like personality? Like, do you know do the you know, only like, thing I know about Yagir Yagir's kind of personality is that he got blackmailed by an 18 year old Eastern European model who fucked him like eight years ago and then took a picture laying with him in the bed afterward and was like. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, if you do not tell, I uh, give me money. I'm going to tell everyone you fuck me. And then he was like, post it. And then she posted <laughs> it, and everyone was like, Yarmir Yager rules. He's the coolest <laughs> guy ever. And then like everybody, she's liked, hot. Everybody likes yeah. Yarmir Yager. He's mm -hmm. still playing. He's a little older than Woody, what? and he's still yes. playing in a professional league in Czechia because that's where he's from. He owns the team. Sick. Mm. He owns the team, and so always a spot for Yar. He's fucking. I wonder if he's got those hot girls that like sweep up the ice and everything. That he's he's like banging them all. That that's the king move. I bet Players are getting that. wealthier than they used to at the that's very true. top level. Like if you go back to when I was young, right? The best players in the league, the Dr. J, Charles Barkley, etc. They weren't rich. It wasn't until Jordan came. Like they were well paid, but they mm -hmm. weren't rich. Their like wealth in comparison to the owners of the teams, that gap has shrunk. You know, LeBron James is a billionaire with a B. Michael Jordan, is he a multi billionaire? I don't even know. But those I shoes, know, probably. Yeah, it's something about his Nike deal. It was a, the absurd. Something about I can't remember. I and you know he's he got all the on himself in some way. Yeah, every time, right? Um, and then you know he's had so many, so many different things. Haynes for years. I don't know mm -hmm. if he still does. Oh, but I remember Haynes. Gatorade. Are Gatorade. you a sports guy, Chris? Do you follow any of them? Not That's really. Gatorade. What What did you play? I, uh, uh, what did you play? I bowled in eighth grade. You bowled in eighth grade. Were you a Whoa. good bowler? Well, they put me with the sixth graders, so I wasn't <laughs> the best. <laughs> I literally That's joined. Great. Just played with friends. Did it have the 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 things in the gutters? No, those, it, didn't those little the, it didn't have the rails. I, I was eighth grade. I could have used them, but we didn't. And, uh, <laughs> But no, I like joined to play with my friends, and I was mm -hmm. like, "This is gonna be great. I'm gonna, we're gonna play. We're gonna be we're gonna eat fries and shit like that all night long." And then they're like, "All right, we're gonna put you on JV with the sixth graders." And I'm like, "Cool." Damn. And mm -hmm. uh, yeah, that that's that's about where that my sports ended. I didn't really play sports. You were in high a school. JV bowler in eighth grade. <laughs> so, Wait, so you really only close. you only bowled? That was the only sport you played growing up? Yeah, I played t-ball when I was a kid, but I didn't really. I didn't get like coordination and all that shit until after high school. That's like when like I started to be able to like throw and catch a football and shit like that. Like that for whatever reason didn't click until like after high school. Bad timing. Yeah. I'm the worst T-ball yeah, player I've join ever that. even heard of. How were you? <laughs> it's just as bad. It was it was uh, right there too. It was did like, you strike out ever? Yeah. I, yeah, me too. It was it was right there. <laughs> like it wasn't even there's, like there's no world I could strike out in T-ball. You know, oh, I can how show you how. Hey, like, you know how you the, these the are the, bat, right? Taylor. These are the kids that were defeated by the pinata. <laughs> <laughs> these are the kids. Yeah. Kyle and I were bullying you guys. <laughs> so my, kick the shit out, out of me. I hate to throw stones at Dad, but he worked a lot. He owned his own accounting firm, and he was kind of getting it off the ground and whatever. And he didn't really play catch with me or anything, so I sucked. And when I went up there at the t-ball thing. I would face the pitcher. You know how you, you're supposed to be your shoulder and you hit like that? Not mm -hmm. me. I'd face the pitcher. <laughs> Swing like that. <laughs> mean, and meanwhile, the coach is like, look at that open stance. Just like Ty Cobb. His dad. Has put <laughs> the boy's a natural. Son. It makes me wonder then, where the coach was. Like, like that's just, <laughs> what the fuck? How, it, how would a coach not be like, ah, oh, you got to twist a little bit. Put, you know, stand, point towards first base. Yeah. Teach me that. You had a but bad no. dad. My dad would have gotten you in line. He was always my coach. Um, mm -hmm. and, uh, and and he would always, like, first of all, my dad was smart. When we had the draft, he'd always get the black kids who didn't have a ride. Nobody wants the black kids who can't get a ride to, to practice. We're going to pick those fuckers up. We're going to win. Mm -hmm. All right? <laughs> <laughs> so me and dad, like, whole, on the way. man of ringers. <laughs> we we pick, we'd have at least two every, every practice yeah. that me and dad would go to their house and pick their ass up because nobody else wanted to pick them up. And we'd bring them to fucking baseball practice, and then dad would teach them how to play ball. 
and we whoop ass. We had those kids in the outfield running around. <laughs> those guys could cover some territory. I'm going to tell you. They had a white kid with braces that couldn't turn a double play. Meanwhile, we got fucking Octavius out there. Six one. Like, he's wow. moved. I'm Six learning one. a lot here. I didn't realize what a ringer I was. They put me in the outfield as well. well. <laughs> T-ball. Kyle's, Kyle's, Kyle's dad is picking up players whose ages could not be verified. <laughs> <laughs> it was like from Benchwarmers that guy's birth certificate that's like I am twelve. Yeah, <laughs> I am twelve, and he's got facial hairs from. That's what I wish I had because like I never, I probably would have done more sports in high school if I had a ride. My dad worked till like ten p.m. every night, so I was just like taking the bus home, and I'm like, yeah, it'd be nice to do something if I had a fucking ride. So yeah, I think man. that's like that was like half of why I just never. Did what did shit. you want to play if you could have played any sport? I think football. I wanted to do something where I would run and catch a ball. I think that's all I could do. I was not a, I'm not a linebacker. If you haven't, uh, you haven't guessed. Are but you my quick? brother? I think I'm quick. Couldn't. I'm a lot better now than I was then. I, I could catch a ball so much better than I could when I was fucking <laughs> 15. Yeah. But my brother, he did play football. He was, uh, uh, I think he was a linebacker. I don't know, but yeah, he actually did play football. Football was yet. not that much fun. It was yeah. no like once. All I had said it before. All I had played at that point in my life a lot was hockey because it was eighth grade and seventh and eighth grade that I played football and like the momentum, the internal momentum swings you deal with in football where it's like amped up, amped up play. And then just right back mm-hmm. down, just this constant staccato, like high intensity, nothing high intensity, nothing. I really did not vibe with that. I didn't enjoy did you do, it. Like hockey through like school or was it like an act, like an like extra thing, like outside of school, both. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, especially at a young age, like in high school, I played for the high school team, but oh. throughout all of that, I played for other teams. So and those were my think, more Do you think if ones. you'd had like, like if you'd had a, like an Olympic, I, I think of this, like, like I, I would shoot sporting clays against this other kid who had an Olympic coach. And it's like, man, I wish I had a fucking Olympic coach. We're winging this shit. Literally. Mm. Like if you, if you grew up with an Olympic coach and maybe your dad was like, well, a little testosterone couldn't hurt. The boy's <laughs> got a five o'clock shadow anyway. Hit him, <laughs> hit him. Like, do you think you could have gotten in? Like, like, like to something? You could could have made a little little run at it to the NHL. Well, oh, yeah, to the NHL. No, I don't. I what, don't think. What I about got... a Chechnyan team where <laughs> I'm, I'm too short <laughs> to be a goalie in the modern NHL? I'm only six feet tall. Oh, well, forget goalie. Oh, like, like you know, you, you're gonna play left wing. Uh, left wing. See, and that that was the the iffy part is I was can't believe that's an I actual was, position. I was a, yeah. yeah, left wing, right wing, center, and then defenseman. Like I was not very good at hockey when I played forward. I started out as a forward, and it wasn't until I was like nine or something that the goalie who was supposed to play that day got hurt, couldn't play. They threw me in his pads, and I like immediately picked it up because when we'd play at home in our unfinished basement with like friends and shit or street hockey, I always wanted to be goalie because I was such a fan of like Martin Brodeur and Ed Belfour and Chris Osgood and Patrick Waugh. And I would like, I picked up goalie immediately because all the other kids struggled. They'd be like, no, Timmy, you have to keep your, your legs square. You have to know where the net is, even though you're not looking at it and just say square to it. Like be square between the net and whatever his like shooting position is. And no one else could figure that out. And it was kind of intuitive for me where I'm like, yeah, obviously I know where I am. I, I can see the hash marks on the ice from my peripheral yeah, and I the, know where I am. The ground is painted. I know where I am. Yeah. <laughs> but some people, they come out of the crease a little bit and they're, they get all wobbly. They, they don't know where at, they are anymore. At hmm. what level of hockey or age of hockey, I guess is even better. Do enforcers become a thing as a specialized position? Hmm. Even they're, uh, that is not until like juniors. So like 18 What's plus juniors? juniors is like minor league stuff. Uh, you go play in Canada. So like 18 plus largely. Could you have done that if you set your mind to it? Uh, some fucking Ontario corn fed Canadian would have beat the shit out of me until his like, like there's no way I would have performed well in that role because I'm, I don't think I would want to fight anyone. And it's not until like minor league being paid that you're really allowed to fight. 
Like mm-hmm. if you sense. get in, if you get in a fight in a high school mm-hmm. game, your fucking season is screwed. Like they're not gonna let you come back if you get in a real row. Like really? you, you'll be suspended for many games. They might remove you for the season. They try and in non professional hockey. I'm sure like obviously you don't know this. You're not that big in the hockey world. In non professional hockey leagues, fighting not Doesn't cool exist. most of the time like they, cool. they shut but down what about good. other forms of enforcement right like like you know for example you can only take three strides and check a guy yeah i bet that rule gets broken what that do rule do? does get broken and the way they solved that in the leagues i was in is mm-hmm. that there would be on like on the kind of the nape of your neck that uppermost area of your jersey there would be a sign an octagon that said stop on it that was meant. Oh, really? Tell, that was meant to tell players skating at your back, like if you can see the stop sign. By this time, I'd been a goalie for a while, so it didn't impact me. But it was like if you can see the stop sign, don't hit him because his back is to you, and you could really hurt him. Kids got smoked in the back all the time, <laughs> all the time, and that the was like a big penalty it. at the time. The, the sign. Well, they put a bullseye on their back. That was their problem. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. There was that was there was some. Some interesting, some fun times playing hockey, but mostly it was stressful and terrible because you're just worried about being scored on. And I remember I would I would always be looking up at the scoreboard because it would say how many shots there were, and I would always be do, doing math in my head of what my current save percentage was. And so if like I'd let one goal in on twenty shots, I'd be like ninety five percent save percentage. You're doing pretty fucking solid. This is this is a pretty good game so far. They score on me on the next shot. And I remember in my head, I'd be like, fuck, we got to earn our way back. Now I'm close <laughs> to like, I let in two on 21 shots. If I let in one on 22, suddenly this is a terrible game. Taylor. Like you have to really, really, like I was doing the math. And most of my time playing goalie in every league was spent when I wasn't saving the puck, looking and willing the game to be over faster <laughs> <laughs> because it's just not fun. That's just one I, I didn't have fun swimming. Now I had fun being on a team and I had fun being good. I didn't start till my senior year and I was like instantly good because I was a surfer before competitive swimming. And, and I'm just like, I have a big rib cage, which really helps in sports mm. where you can't breathe. And uh, so that aspect, it was fun being good. It was fun being known but the swimming itself is just torture. And I remember, like, I really wanted to be on a team. Like, I wanted to have friends. My friends were on teams. Like, I had one of my friends was a football player. And he just had this, like, built-in circle of friends. Yeah, they yeah. were almost like a, a gang, but they didn't do bad things. But they all had each other's backs yeah. like a gang. Me and the sixth graders. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> this is senior year in high school. I was 18, 17. And, uh, but I can remember, I'm like, this is just unpleasant. And it's really hard to make friends with your face in the water. <laughs> <laughs> we all smell like chlorine and no one thinks it's cool that we shave everywhere. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh. Oh, man. <laughs> we shaved to win that meet. And now we're all wearing pantyhose in practice. And I'm not sure this is cool. <laughs> Dude, I like like I, I'm lucky that I was like a pretty good goalie on all the teams I played for. And so it wasn't hard to be friends. I remember being on some teams though, where like my backup goalie were, would have to go in sometimes. Like they would just sometimes say like, Hey Taylor, we're playing like a weaker team today. So Josh is going to play this one. And I'd be like, all right, always secretly like, yes, <laughs> like I get to sit on yeah. the bench. Like I don't have to play against this team. Uh, I just get to chill today. And like sometimes the other players on the team would be like, like talking to me within the other goalies, like earshot and be like, going to be a rough one today without you out there. And I don't want to be like, hey, guys, come on. Josh is like right there. Like, <laughs> like he's going to do fine. And then like a solid 30% of the time, mid second period coach turns to me after the fourth goal, Taylor starts stretching behind the bench. And I'd be like, <laughs> fuck you didn't like getting in no not on those I was games the opposite so as they as i got better it's you know the, the very i said i took to it instantly but like i had to learn to flip turn and and the rules and shit like that as i was progressing and improving i was moving up the relay teams like i started on the slow relay team then the middle one then our top relay team mm-hmm. and i was getting in more events and every time my role became bigger i was excited about that change like i was the opposite yeah, I, it's just it wasn't fun. It It's not like the only fun times is when you make like a huge save that no one expected you to. And then you're like high on your own farts for like five minutes where you're like, mm. I'm the fucking man. 
no one expected me to slide cross crease and save that one timer. And I did. And now mm. everybody's so stoked on me. But then other times it'd be like, you could tell everyone's mad at you. Every like you let in one that you shouldn't and you want to be able to tell them right away because you're way in your own side. And so you let one in and to them, it looks like I should have got it, but really it was a weird bounce and a deflection. And I want to be like, it was a weird whap bounce and a deflection. And, uh, there, no one could have saved it guys. You got to trust me. On I saw an NHL goal like that just recently. The guy mm. shot it slow past it. It must've got as high as like shoulders at one point and it just bounced in a soft one and happens. Oh. Because I played my position, when I see that happen to an NHL goalie, even like an opponent w during a Blues game, none of me is ever like, ha ha, I'm always like, really? stay, stay strong, brother. Stay, <laughs> like, stay strong. I you couldn't that. have saved that. It's okay. These things happen. <laughs> Dude, pucks bounce funny sometimes. They do. That's a piece of vulcanized rubber on ice and it's got with weird, chips weird edges. Yeah, with, with chips. And snow and yeah. it's, it's, it's What about yeah. basketball? Do you guys like, do you guys get it? basketball because i feel like every time i play any kind of pickup game i'm like dry heaving after two minutes because of the uh, cardio i was I just never that interested like i had fun shooting hoops like in my driveway mm -hmm. and shit growing up but i didn't enjoy the sport of basketball yeah my That's father insane. was good at basketball I mean, he played in rec leagues and stuff and i think he was not that he was ever like anywhere near pro i don't mean to say that but in the rec level he was a guy you'd want on your team that, that was my impression of it I had a basketball court, like a public basketball court, I don't know, six blocks from my house. So I would walk down there and play sometimes. I'd get in these kicks where I went down and played a bunch. And God, I couldn't get good. I remember, like, I was just never good. I remember my father came down to watch me play, and it was just like head, hand, head, forehead in <laughs> hand, kind of like, oh, Jesus, this kid's not a chip off the old block. You muted, Kyle. <laughs> like, I could shoot like half the time, I can make a basket, but. My brother always gives me shit because I look like I'm like one of those like 1950s players that has no form because I'm just like mm -hmm. I don't have a shooting form. So I look like a stiff guy from like the 50s trying to make a shot. Yeah. And like half the time, it's just I'm not good at it. All I brought to the table was cardio and and like I didn't bring either. <laughs> I, I would try hard. College try. I'd, yeah. But I, you wouldn't want me on your team. I, I was, you know, the other half. You, you go to any court. Half the guys you wish were on your team, half the guys you wish weren't. I was in mm -hmm. that second half. Yep. I never got into bowling enough to be on a team, mm. but I feel like now as an adult, a bowling team would be kind of a fun thing to I go wanna do. I want to do it so bad. It's yeah. like it sounds like it's so much fun. You just, just show up every week to to fucking beer. eat onion rings. Yeah. I have to but eat wings. It's you? part of my routine. Are you terrible? Do you bowl with the hook? You know, like does it curve? What does that mean? As opposed to going straight down the center and aiming to the center pin, or do you like? Is he putting spin on it, or is oh, he curling the ball? Like a curve ball. No, when I do it, I try to aim slightly to the right of the center pin because I had line. someone tell me that, and I try and go totally straight. I don't even. I, I prioritize going straight over like the the speed, the muscle of it. You might That's what I do be for like the first me, round. I do the same thing, but I aim for the middle. Knowing that it's very likely I'll hit one of those two sweet spots yeah. on, on either side of it. If I hit the side, I could gutter ball. Who, you may have just I do like the straight thing. <laughs> and then, like, usually after like a few drinks and like by the second or third game, I'm like, let's do a silly one. And that's when I start <laughs> doing the dumb shit where you like kind of like there was this one guy in the the team I didn't get on, the, the team with people my age, mm -hmm. where he would like mm -hmm. wouldn't even he'd put like one or two fingers in and he'd have his thumb out and he would just like wrap it back and like spin it in a way where it almost looks like it's about to go in the gutter but then it it fucking hits up you get a strike and Damn. i i try that <laughs> it doesn't work out as well as a uh, chaz can can you put some him. wild spin on it now though are you kind of like a pub stomper of bowling where something happens a girlfriend a friend well, of yours has a birthday there and you're like time to shine oh i bring it if i bring a date to the bowling alley there's no mercy like i'm like you're about to get shit on and um i don't shit on <laughs> usually by like after the first game if you don't bowl out your fingers are like kind of tender so then you start fucking up because of that and that's usually what happens like i'm like okay i kind of get i kind of got my stride back and then my fingers yeah. are sore and i start that's what they say the you got to look out for soreness usually like a 150 so not not anything oh, too good but right, right. But that's better than consistently mediocre ball. is my motto. Yeah. Yeah. If I hit 150, I'm like, wow, luck, <laughs> total yeah. luck. That's what Colin play my numbers. 
But who bowls? My son, Colin. He, Is he uh, into it? Meh, I bet he goes bowling like three times a month. He and his oh, friend damn. go there, that, yeah. That's pretty good. That's more bowling in a month than I've ever done. Dude, so... Yep. I, I don't know how to... We pay his friend. (laughs) (laughs) Lose? (laughs) No, no, just just to be a friend. (laughs) And uh, they do the coolest shit, man. They go out, they play disc golf, they go bowling, they go to like uh, Frankie's Fun House won't mean anything to you, but it's like go karting and mini golf and Mm -hmm. shit like that. And uh, you are. (laughs) What a great dad, what he is. Is that a good dad or is that a bad dad? I'm not sure. He's a good father. (laughs) But uh, but I'm like, Oh, this guy's got a cool job. Like we, we just, how much money do you think you need? We, you know, pay him whatever he needs, and they just go out and fucking rock go karts all afternoon. And Kyle's uh, about to cry over what a sweet, loving, fatherly thing that is that you do. <laughs> um, Woody, t- number one father in in the comments. Number one. Dad. <laughs> uh, but yeah, so Colin's uh, he's gotten a little better at bowling and does his thing. You he's, said he gets uh, like one fifty. Mm-hmm. Is this? Have you ever done disc golf? Mm-mm. I know of it. Like they have a. That's the frisbee course. thing, right? Yeah. Yeah. yeah oh, yeah. I didn't know if you'd ever like done it with Colin. Like when? They no, were- no. I I should. I wanted to take them jet skiing. That was my thing. I'm like, dude, let's go jet skiing this time. I'll join you guys. It'll be a blast. And uh, Colin was uncomfortable with it. It was in the fall. So it was like one of the last weeks or two. It just didn't work out. But this spring, we'll we'll do it. We'll go jet skiing. That'll be the thing I join in on. Jet skiing rocks. I haven't done mm-hmm. it since I was maybe 12. But I remember the the absolute freedom. Because that was the, I guess that was the first and only time that my dad's friend we were at the Ozarks with felt comfortable enough with like me riding his jet ski around on the lake mm-hmm. by myself. And the freedom. The feeling Dude. of like, oh my god, wind whipping through my hair. I'm probably going fucking 35 miles an hour, but it feels like you know the Millennium yeah. Falcon. <laughs> <laughs> it's fun, man. I had a jet ski as a teenager. I lived two blocks from the ocean, and I was not strong enough to like drag that thing to the water, but I did it anyway. Sometimes it'd take like 40, 50 minutes just pulling it like six inches at a time across the <laughs> sand to get it into the water. And I was a terrible mechanic. I was just learning and almost every jet ski session ended with me like just holding the jet ski and swimming it in with my other hand. That was like <laughs> typical. And I look back and I'm like, my parents fucking ballsy, really. Like it, yeah, what do you just go out jet skiing, whatever, try to get home by dinner, yeah. which I never did. And uh, and I would always like have like a half sunken jet ski that I swam back. <laughs> <laughs> Were you ever panicking in the moment where you're like, it's actually going to sink this time and I'm going to be in so much trouble? <laughs> they don't sink. You know, even when the like the the back, the tail of it floats, oh. so the engine sinks and the tail floats and you pull it back in. But I, I was, I didn't panic, but there was one time we were in the uh, inlet. So people don't know there's two islands out in, out in the ocean. Right. And then behind them is the bay. And when the tide goes up, all the water flows into the bay. And when the tide goes down, all the water flows out to the ocean between the two islands. Mm -hmm. This water was moving. Like no human could swim as fast as this water was going. And my jet ski didn't work reliably and neither did my friends. We were going out together and I forget whose jet ski broke, but it got to the point where like, I, I think the situation was maybe he was dead in the water and I had a jet ski that didn't idle. So I kept trying to like go by him, grab the front of his jet ski while I operated mine with like one hand, mm-hmm. knowing that if anything went wrong and I like fell off my ski, it would stall and not restart. Oh, that's what it was. It wouldn't restart. Um, and they stall automatically like, you know, so you can catch it again. Well, that happened. So now I have a jet ski that only starts if you pop the engine, pull the plugs, put gas in the cylinders, reassemble it, and try to start it, which I can't do with water. <laughs> so now we're both getting sucked out to sea at like 5 a.m. before school. And uh, <laughs> we don't have any like rescue plan or anything until a fisherman saw us and towed our two skis back to the, back to the sand, and we just managed mm. there. Thank God for that fisherman. Yeah, I don't know what happens if we don't get picked up by a random fisherman at 5 a.m. before school on a weekday. Well, I think yes, on the news. Grass, <laughs> <boys>. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 
somehow it was like, well, I better get my shoes off. So I kicked my shoes off and my friend did it too. And then he was mad at me for the longest time because he won like, he's like, that didn't help us at all. <laughs> and now I don't have any <laughs> shoes. <laughs> like, You're why right. You, I, why I just, you, why are you, you can't swim away? with shoes on? Well, they sunk. Why don't you take them off, tie them together, and like that would have been a great plan. I think there was a lot of critical thinking on this me. trip. Yeah, yeah. there's a lot of panic. <laughs> I'm okay, like 15. Enough. I don't have any braids at this point, and I'm just getting sucked out to sea. And thankfully, I got rescued. Kyle, you did ATVs a lot as a kid. Do you? Because I remember my grandparents, because we'd do it on their farm. Would my grandma in particular would always tell me like horror stories of supposed kids in the area, where she'd be like. Now, Tyler, we're trusting you to be safe here. The the Johnson boy, you don't know him, but he was just riding around on this. He flipped it upside and he smashed his head on the concrete, wasn't wearing a helmet. Now he's now he's got problems. And <laughs> that is not something I want to happen to you. And I remember in my head, like like going out into the pastures and being like I don't need a helmet. <laughs> like just like taking it off, just Taylor. Just almost in fairness, like, you might to... not, Taylor. No, I might not. And, uh, <laughs> and like uh, quickly, I went back to like I should just wear a helmet because my grandpa also got me like he got us like the motocross style helmets mm -hmm. with like that the front thing. Ones. And when you're wearing those, it's not like oh, this is a gay ass helmet. You're like, I'm a real racer. I'm a real mm -hmm. racist out here. Like really, <laughs> <laughs> like really, really killing it. Did you get horror stories about ATVs from your parents? Absolutely not. Um, hmm. we didn't own any helmets. Uh, I didn't, the idea, <laughs> the idea of wearing a helmet on an ATV, I'm going to tell you, I, I think of that as some lame shit. Like, still, oh my God, you could not force me to put a fucking helmet on, on an, on a four wheeler. What oh. are we going? How fast do you think? First of Modern all, I've Taylor, there's serious, no way I would. I've had some serious accidents on ATVs. Eight, nine years Two, old. Yeah. Um, when I was, I couldn't have been older than seven or eight maybe tops eight and i had a three-wheeler probably like a 125 cc 150 cc something like that fairly big and uh i didn't know it we we'd only recently moved to that property but my dad had stretched out a line of electrical wire like an electric fence for the cattle it was it's not a full-blown fence yet it's a very temporary measure one single strand at about my throat height if i'm sitting on a three-wheeler and I hit that bitch going fast, and it pulled me off that ATV like a cartoon character. Like it caught my throat. The ATV kept going. I got like stretched and like rotated and dumped on the <laughs> ground. And that was when I was like seven. We never bought a helmet after that. <laughs> I, helmet wouldn't I have prevented that. <laughs> no, it wouldn't have helped either. And you didn't fine, have right? a helmet on, right? For Absolutely that. not. We didn't own okay. helmets. Um, uh, still don't. And um, it's lame. And uh, one one time though, I was I, I was, own I told, so many helmets. I don't even know how <laughs> nine. I got 13? my motorcycle helmet. You know, like, <laughs> that was right. Never wear helmets. <laughs> I've got a pretty nice motorcycle. Anyway, everybody does. But um, I, I flipped that thing on our asphalt driveway one day. I, I flipped it almost over, like it's tip 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 tip, and I bailed off and just rolled down the asphalt, going about twenty five to thirty ish miles uh, per um, hour basically naked i had my boxer shorts on <laughs> and a t-shirt um it's a weird thing i was going on a date that night i'm like 15 and i'm i was whitening my teeth so i had mm. the grill in At i had 15? that teeth yeah some patrick bateman shit <laughs> get off me i was trying to get some titties god damn it so <laughs> um child's right jesus right. and uh and, but but anyway a wasp landed like on my like thigh area and i'm in these fucking boxers so i like pull the controls and tip that thing fall on the asphalt i hit my my left knee and my right elbow so hard that it like the nerve was like jarred and they were paralyzed but that didn't matter because i was having a seizure i don't <laughs> know if the seizure happened immediately on impact or after i've been lying there unconscious for who God damn could know? Who yeah. would know? My mom's inside taking a nap. Dad's not home. I'm unconscious in the driveway having a seizure. And I remember thinking, I wish I could control myself because I'm grinding my face into the asphalt and I'm afraid it's it's cutting me. Like, I can't tell if it is or not because yeah. I'm grinding my face into the sandy asphalt. That wasn't the problem, though, because I'd already taken like most of where my mustache doesn't grow oh off, God. like <clears throat> a bunch off my head over on this side. That when I like 
get like hot and sweaty, it still like pigments different because mm -hmm. all the skin has been gone. Um, like all the skin on my knee and my elbow <clears throat> and I can't walk. I can barely crawl. And the ATV is like way down there crashed into the woods because <laughs> it kept going. It never flipped fully. It went into the woods. So I got like crawl home and shit with my looking like mm. a, a cartoon character. And I, that's You're the Johnsons that Taylor's grandma warned about. <laughs> I, that was me. That was me. And I wake my mother from, I wake my mother from like an afternoon nap and I'm like, mama, I'm sorry. Mama, I'm sorry. Mama, I'm sorry. And she's like, what the hell? What's on your face? What are you doing? Why are you waking me up? Oh my God. Because <laughs> it's because I'm all bloody and shit. It's like, uh -huh. like I said, I took a bunch of the skin off my, my oh, head. And I had to go to the ER. Did your date think it was tough? I didn't make it to the date. I didn't make it. I was, you know, crippled. Yeah. <laughs> no reason. Your, um, your teeth look out. fantastic. If if anything, it Next. made dating real hard for a while because I had to go to school with Neosporin on my head. <laughs> <laughs> I got, I'm like the sticky guy now. <laughs> I got it's like like lint is sticking to me by third period, you know? Like it's bad. Like, like, like kids. Man, Kyle used I, to be I, so I, cool. Because <laughs> you gotta keep like a smear of neosporin on the side of your head so you don't grow some big ass scab up there. But yeah, never had a fucking helmet, never fucking needed one. That shit's lame. Nah, we had this dad's, pa <laughs> dad's pastures like made in these it, these terraces that in the old day were cut into the ground to prevent you know a big erosion. flood washing everything away, mm -hmm. the erosion. And so those, if you ride them backwards, are like ramp after ramp after ramp. And I'd hit them as fast as that three fifty would go. I mean, I don't know how fat fit for Is this a quad or a trike? Quad. Always a quad. Better. Well, it was a trike when I was a kid, but I immediately got a 300 automatic Kawasaki and then a 350 uh, uh, manual. Would you still that. have no helmet for like woods riding and stuff? <clears throat> woods riding? I would put a helmet on. But, I think you would. I, but so I, was so I, familiar... I go woods riding on a dirt bike. 100% of the people out there have a helmet. Yeah, a hundred percent. Like, like someone would probably forced me to wear a helmet out there. What I'm talking about, just Maybe. to be clear, is like the property that I grew up on, that I know every inch of, and it's like I don't, I don't need a helmet out here. I, I never fell off. Other than that, what if it was a dirt instances. bike? I'm curious. It sounds like a helmet would have helped with a sticky head thing. Oh, oh, and then there was one time where I didn't know it, but there's like a severe ditch in the field that I hit at full speed, and the front mm. end just went down and came to an immediate stop, and it throws me forward. And the the uh, handlebars twist all the way to the right, and the peg hits me in the crotch, like in my pubic hair area, mm -hmm. and it made a knot there. You know oh. how like sometimes you get a bruise so bad mm -hmm. it just becomes a yeah, knot. Hematoma. I had a I had like a, a n hard knot that you could rub and like feel for nine months or something. <laughs> like like, and I cleared the bike. Like it hit me, and then I went tumbling like over mm -hmm. and like upside down. But there's so much. The reason I didn't see the thing I hit was because the grass was so tall and thick. So I kind of oh. had a soft landing. It was like a poof and like get up and like, what the fuck was that kind of thing? Um, but yeah, we never had helmets, man. Like I there like wasn't helmets. a lot of safety. I mean, like, I do too. I've got a good one. I wear, dude, I told you I was riding my bike and realized I didn't have it buckled and was like immediately scared. Mm. I was like, we got to get this bitch pulled over. <laughs> I was doing. I go to my yard and practice wheelies sometimes. I'm still not as good as I want to be. And uh, I wear a helmet for that. Just in my own yard, it's mostly flat. It's no big deal. But I feel almost naked on a bike without a helmet. Like a, I don't drive without a seatbelt. It just feels like it's missing. It's supposed to be there. I've ridden my bike around in the cul-de-sac with no helmet. But like to say ride, I just mean like do a couple loops to show somebody what's going on and then pull mm -hmm. it back in. And it's, it's real fun to go. I don't. I'm sure you've done everything, but to me, going up a steep driveway is really fun. Just, mm -hmm. just I don't know. I like feeling the yeah. amount, of, the amount of power it has when it pulls up something steep is kind of uniquely uh, interesting. Uh, yes, I, it's a I, fucking I, rocket ship. I, I, I still have so much respect for it. I don't. I've gone fast at this point, but like mm -hmm. I'm, I'm like, I may sell it this year. I'm, I'm, I'm. I think I'm done. I, I almost I put that in spring. my 2024 predictions. I thought it, and then I was like, "I'm not sure Kyle would take that well." I mean, like, no, I don't. Um, I I put maybe 1,800 miles on it or something mm -hmm. like that. I think I'm about done. I I, I saw a, a statistic graphic the other day, really a meme. So who even knows it's, if it's accurate? But it was multiple activities, several of them that you do. <laughs> Sam. And it was how many thousand hours of that equaled statistically a death. Mm. And by, like, like what percentage of app of 
participants. And I was like, man, that motorcycle thing, it seems like you put a thousand hours in, you got like a, it was either, it was one to 3%. I can't remember. It was in that range of death. I was like, damn. I'm getting there. <laughs> have you had any close calls? Like, have you ever feel like you cheated or cheated big injury or something? No, I'm just so like when I ride, where I ride is, is sort of putting me in a safe position all the time already. Um, I've mm. taken some curves where I was scared, but the bike like always has more bite to it. It just always has more. I would have, to, I bet if I tried to take a turn incorrectly and like lean it too far over and like make a spin, the first time I'd fail at it and I'd be like, wow, it, it, it's still stuck. It just, mm. it's hard to tip that thing over as long as you're, you know, keeping some, uh, some torque. Chris, do you have any near death experiences or harrowing injuries? No, I don't do shit. So that, that kind of makes it a lot easier to not die. But I, I have been thinking about for the last few years, getting a bike eventually mm. every spring. I'm like, you know, maybe I get one and then I pay my taxes and I'm like, maybe next year. And then, <laughs> But I, I thought about it, like the um, the one I was looking at. It, I don't, I don't know much about bikes, but the uh, one of the Honda Rebels are like the ones. Because I feel like I've always heard those are better for like shorter guys, which mm-hmm. I am. The seat height's um, really low on that style of bike. Yeah, I, so I've always thought about that, but I ended up. That's just, the bike. Yeah. I did a lot of research. The Honda Reb. The only reason I get the Rebel is because it is so low. I'm six one, six two, somewhere in there, and mm-hmm. a cer- certainly with my motorcycle boots on, I'm getting closer to six three. It's it's too low. But yeah. um, I like that bike. I like how that bike looks. That's and the thing. Cheap. Yeah, exactly. I'm like, that's like a like seven thousand dollar bike. bike. Get the ape. Obviously, you're just kind of joking around about mm-hmm. buying one. But if you ever did one, get get a lot of brakes. Yeah, that, that's it, yeah, oh ABS. yeah yeah. The ABS that was one thing like, I stressed to Kyle. Yeah, yeah that's that's shopping. the one thing I was looking at. But I kind of stopped myself. I ended up getting just a different car this last year instead. But I was looking at like the like the five hundred ABS. That was mm-hmm. kind of like what I was thinking of but I, maybe this spring I, it's gonna get for a long time that would be a yeah. smart one to get yeah get one treat yourself well they're all stupid but amongst the bad decisions you could make the rebel be a good one they hold yeah. their value well they're hmm. they're way more affordable than you'd ever think all that horsepower fun mm-hmm. and beauty can come at like for ten thousand dollars you get a goddamn masterpiece of machinery yeah. that weighs you know 500 pounds and it's beautiful just to fucking look at i always there's been several times where I wanted to put it inside my house, but that <laughs> nobody ever thinks that's a good idea. I, I, well, like what you were saying with like knowing like where to drive it. Like I'm not like there's areas in my city and like where I'm like, I'm not going to drive it there. I don't want to be on a bike on that road. But like there's areas where, you know, you're like, OK, it's not going to be like I'm not going to be dealing with like crazy traffic or like, you know, insane roads. Like there's certain areas where I'm like, all right, I'll I'll just kind of ride it around there or like around here or there. You know, like you kind of know that better spots to be in i like to You're cruise around country, by steel <laughs> country roads like during the week when everybody's at work you know mm-hmm. like like uh like like 10 or 11 a.m when it's still nice and chilly preferably and just cruise around and putt around and just exp- i like to get lost um and not use gps until i'm good and lost um mm-hmm. and or if, you know uh, the, the the thing that stops me every time is my my hand will get sore my like lower back will start hurting i hurt my lower back on a swimming pool when i was like 12 and nobody believed me <laughs> and like it still hurt dad why, why you, <laughs> like, i wasn't you? kidding well like like i was like yeah my back Did you have a, a history a... of fibbing about lumbar issues <laughs> <laughs> well, well like what are they gonna do like like i don't know like like i uh i, I try to do that thing I think I'd seen it in a movie where like you jump and then you sort of bend backwards a little, um, like Mm. sort of flex your body, like back the the way it doesn't want to go a little and and then go into a dive or a flip or something. And, uh, when I did it, I must've done it with some vigor because my lower (laughs) back made an audible crunch. And like from then on, if I sit in a certain position, it's usually, I remember bleachers in high school would be so excruciating for me and nobody would listen. You couldn't tell the like, coach. My back hurts if I sit like this for too long. Okay, yeah, fifteen more minutes, Myers. All right, <laughs> lowest whistle, and it's like, but sitting in those bleachers with my knees above like my butt, like like sort your, of your in that sort whatever. of like yeah, my hip. Yeah, it's like oh, I'm seeing a shift in my weight back and forth. My lower back's just like hurting real fucking bad. It doesn't really hurt anymore. Plus, I'm bent over that motorcycle, leaning and grinding in corners for about forty five minutes, and mm. then it's like, so that whole idea of riding to Colorado was out. I'm gonna need mm. to get on the back of your gold wing so I can That'd be the really, move. 
get kick my legs up. I gotta get you got my, a heated got, seat for you, bro. Oh, I'm gonna be close enough. I don't need that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I have a backrest. You can't get that close. I'm gonna koala bear you. <laughs> <laughs> I've never uh, had anyone on it or um, been on with anyone. I, at, at least I don't remember. Um, mm. I, I would never do that. That I'm, I'm taking my own life into my hands every time. I don't. I don't want to put it somebody else on there because, and I don't feel competent to do it either. Like, like I know that I'm a so-so rider, but I'm okay with that. Like, mm-hmm. I'll sit on a motorcycle with a so-so rider, but but you don't need to. Don't get on the back here. Mm. We might not come back. Th- this is on a, a totally different topic but something that i just saw the past i guess started seeing it yesterday uh there was this dude uh jersey jerry he works for barstool sports he's like a content funny guy and i saw on twitter that he was trending yesterday and i was like what's what's going on here so i clicked uh, his name and he for a live stream uh, the the barstool sports office has this absurd golf simulator like i have i looked up online because i was curious after it i'm like how much are golf simulators i couldn't really even find the one they have like available for just a person to buy so probably like 30 40 thousand dollars it's absurd this enormous giant screen and then this hitting pad where if you've ever gone to a driving range, you know that it's like, oh, you can hit right off of this that's kind of supposed to emulate grass, or you can put it on this goofy little tee. This one for this simulator had a section for, like, sand. So if you were simulating sand, it had, like, an artificial sand thing. It had, like, simulated rough, like, all these things. And I guess he told his uh, viewers, like, I'm going to do a stream where I do not stop until I hit a hole in one on this simulator, this this par three course, gonna pick a short oh, one. Fuck. And he like like I guess he thought it was gonna take about three hours. <laughs> and so he prepared accordingly for a three hour stream <laughs> where he was going to hit the ball. And you know, he was like, Oh, a few couple hundred hits, I'll I'll knock one in, a little dinger. He ended up having to do it for like 40 hours. <laughs> like there was a there was a little counter, like a swing counter, a stroke counter rather, that got mm-hmm. to like I think he hit it actually. He hit it earlier today and it was like the 2790th hit or something, which you may think like oh it's golf. Like Jesus. golf is silly. It's not that strenuous, but taking 100 golf shots for 27 hours in a row and he also he blisters filmed, oh he had so many blisters all over himself <laughs> i saw like i would pop in every now and then and see and at some point like other personalities from like big cat and whatnot from parcel sports had to come in and like t- chat with him and whatnot and encourage him because he'd be like i just can't i just can't do this i this is th- this is so much worse than i ever imagined it was going to be when <laughs> oh i said it God. i don't know if i'm gonna get it i don't know he he was wearing he started off wearing one golf glove because that's how you golf. And by the end, he had like both one hand with like three golf gloves on it. The <laughs> other hand with two. He like showed pictures. He was bleeding through the first oh golf glove. God. So he had to put another one on. It was oh. like bleeding through that. And so many little close calls in Twitter clips I saw. But I was like, man, I bet it would have taken me even fucking longer and yeah. To everyone who's like popping in and watching. There, there were like a hundred thousand people watching him on YouTube do this after he was like 35 hours in before he had to go to bed, which they also made him do on stream and <laughs> then wake up and immediately start hitting balls again. Like, but part of me also is like, you got to be a bit of a tard to think that you're going to do that in three hours. Three hours. He thought it was, it's a hyper realistic it simulator. There's a wind bit of it. Where it randomizes the wind and the weather. Oh, and so, mm. like, you're not going to be able to just, like, putt-putt your way through this. And so he looked like he was in absolute hell in the clips that I <laughs> I watched. And that made me laugh. But uh, in the end, you know, trending on Twitter a couple times, getting, like, tens of thousands of subscribers out of it. Yeah. Probably 100. I don't know. But that, that made me laugh. Seeing someone make a guarantee... <laughs> that like i'm gonna do this in fucking three I like hours he's stuck with it like, I, like, I like that, most people nine hours in would have said all right i'm only getting worse at this point you know i'm, I'm and i'm exhausted 
I'm hitting farther and farther from where I aspire to hit. Yeah. Uh, it we'll takes 45 tomorrow. minutes tops for me. This is uh, he thought so not too. trending golf, well. <laughs> nope. So, yeah. That's, that's why. That's why. Yeah. I would have known right. in the first minute that I this will never happen. <laughs> yeah. Oh, there's no way I, I would still be in that fucking office trying to, to hit it because there's no way. I would be Once so I defeated. pop the first disc out of my back, I think that's when we call it quits and end the stream and switch to bowling. Oh, being in a golf hitting position for 35 hours or whatever it equals that's out awful. to. That's awful. I thought you were going to say something happened with so his back or pain. something. I, he was like, complaining I thought, about his back. Yeah. Dude, Dude, like, there were, there were highlight fun. clips of this everywhere. It was huge. But we should like emulate that energy. I'm going to keep bowling until I get a strike. <laughs> <laughs> Another YouTuber. But then like um, three 30, hours go 35 by. 35 hours later. We can't get it going. <laughs> ah, There's a YouTuber, um, Eddie Burbeck, that did it on the Wii. He was trying to get like a perfect game on the Wii bowling. Mm. And he like spent just days streaming it until he did it. And I'm like that even Jeez. to me. I'm like that would kick my ass. Wii mm-hmm. bowling. That was like my, my mom and my stepdad would always like. They would play Wii Bowling, but they'd fucking sit down on the couch and just go, like, just do it. Like, they wouldn't even stand up and front of Disqualification. You have to at least yeah. go through the motions and pretend. Otherwise, Wii Bowling isn't fun. But it's all of a sudden. Like, I had, I would, I didn't have the Nintendo. It wasn't called a Switch. It was a Wii. The Wii. And uh, I had a friend who's like, check this out. You, like, can't miss. And he takes the controller and he slaps it in his own palm. And sure enough, he got, like, eight pins. That's I was like, oh, so this just bowls well Absolute no matter what you do. Bullshit. Oh, yeah. When did that come out? Like 2005, right around there. Around then, yeah, it was it was a while ago. I think I think that's right because it was like beginning of high school for me, and I remember that being the first technology that had that motion sensor as a mm-hmm. part of video games, and that was like for real the first time in my life where I was like, the future is now. Mm-hmm. Like one of the like, funniest I was, things. I was so impressed by the Wii as a one of my friends would play COD year. on the Wii. He like would literally just do like the like, playing COD, and it was. I couldn't imagine doing that. He looked like such an idiot. First off, I doing remember it. that. I remember like like some people were yeah, on Xbox. terrible graphic cod. There was that meme. Oh, it was and so it's bad. Like, it, it's like one. It's like a normal like silly face cod or uh, Microsoft Xbox, and then the other one PlayStation, and then there's just a completely retarded one who's playing the Wii. And it's like, yeah, who the fuck plays cod for on Wii? <laughs> they had molds. Nobody put the controller in to like hold it like a gun, but like most of the time you would just like do that, and it was. Like you said, the worst graphics ever. Oh, too. that's great. Or could but, you get good games on the Wii? Maybe. Like, would, would it I be bet easy? it was probably easy. It's kind of like when but you, the you graphics go on COD would look like now. shit. I think it was I, a lower resolution know, but, or something. Zach says yes, it was easy as hell. Yeah, because it, it used to be if you played on Xbox, you faced a slightly higher level of competition than PS3, mm-hmm. I guess, because online gaming was free on the three, and they didn't have. Um, that doesn't look too bad to me. I don't believe and this. The actual gameplay <laughs> itself. Hmm. But anyway, uh, the PS3 had the lower level players because it was cheaper and you didn't have to log in and whatever. Uh, but the Wii must have had really weak players. It's Ooh, like if you go on, different. if you go yeah, on COD there you Mobile go. now, like on the phone, that's that's where it's at. I've done that once or twice. I've downloaded COD Mobile and played, and it, it's it's not. How, how they did, don't even know they're playing a game. How do the controls <laughs> work? It's like it's a lot of thumb movement, but you could you could actually hook a controller up to your phone, like a Bluetooth <laughs> or like a wireless controller. Uh-huh. And you could just go to town. And Mouse the graphics the are actually good. Yeah, just like sitting there, like looking at your little fucking phone. But Dude, that, that would be a that would make me feel good about myself. Go play some mouse right? and keyboard phone games. Although I think <laughs> PUBG, like PUBG, died on PC. Essentially, it, it it's not it's but on mobile, I think it's still very popular in China in particular. And uh, I'm sure there's plenty of those guys using. They love their games. I think that crackdown they had recently actually like has caused some woes for the the game developers over there. You know because they had that. I don't know if it was tied to the social credit thing or or a big part of it or whatever. But they put like a gaming limit on kids in China. Like they could only mm, game so many hours a day or something. Probably for the best. It really cut down on the cheating and rust. I'm gonna be honest. <laughs> Dude, hmm. if they are sh- if they're putting state mandated limits on their gaming, we are not going to do well in this war. When <laughs> they're going to they're going to shut it down. They're going to. What be are you talking about? Out. That's what war is now. It's a fucking controller somewhere. Ooh, Drop like, like we got the all stars. We got shroud dropping missiles from the predator <laughs> drone. I, I no. I, yeah. I think 
That's the future. War nowadays is not fault in the trenches. It's drones dropping grenades on people they who don't fight have, in the trenches. You think they don't have like a campus the size of Delaware that's doing just that? That are exempt I from these? I bet they do. That's the same. <laughs> that's the, you know who's that's fighting the, the real Christmas. fight? It's, it's the comedians. Yes. You can't say anything. And they're out there doing, they're serving. Dude, they're, they're, those they're, are the real they're, heroes. Uh, they're they're not powers. civilians like us. Yeah, they're out there pushing the limits, making dick jokes. Heroes. Thank you. For that is, I I hate that when they're like, we're the we're telling the truth, and it's like, <laughs> no, you're not. You oh. just did an impression of a Japanese. Guy. Made up a story about this. <laughs> <laughs> I've been watching these special forces podcasts, and I'm fucking mm. hooked on it now. I love this shit. Do you, have you ever seen the movie Zero Dark Thirty? It's it's about when they got mm. Osama bin Laden. I have heard I'm of not it. Not sure. I highly recommend it. It's it, it, it's, a, it's it's a fairly accurate telling true story shit of how they got to some of it. And uh, it was a woman at the CIA who was mad about some of her friends getting blown up, who made it her job to to like track down and find Osama bin Laden. It, it's it's her. It was her. It was her the whole way. And so it hmm. tells her story for a while. But then you've also got I think Chris Chris Pratt is on the SEAL mm -hmm. team, like SEAL Team Six. Yeah. And then there's a there's several other characters like scattered along like uh, <clears throat> in the military and the CIA and everybody who like made this thing happen. And when they actually go on the raid and go in, it is really fucking cool. Uh, I just listened to a podcast though. The guy, it was the guy who killed Osama bin Laden. Like he's the podcast uh, guest, and he's telling the story of killing Osama bin Laden, and it was fascinating. And it's all the shit from that happened in the movie, but it's him talking about it. And being as graphic as you want, because his interviewer is also like a special forces guy. He's like, where'd you shoot him? I shot him three times in the face. He's like, if you saw that, if you ever seen photos of it, those are my hands holding his head together for the picture. Those are mm. those are my hands wearing the gloves. He's like, it blew his head apart. Like, oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Why'd you like, throw him in the ocean? <laughs> oh, because <laughs> we lied about that. <laughs> because they didn't want to like have like a, a mecca for terrorists to to like visit and like put roses on Osama bin Laden's grave. Like you, you ever go stupid. to a place for John Lennon? Airdrop him into an enemy's land. Now they've got a problem. Osama bin Laden thought I mean Barack Obama thought it was a great idea. <laughs> <laughs> Those guys' names are similar. Barack Osama wanted to, yeah. wanted to um, do but, but that middle was, name's Hussein too. That was fascinating. That's he, so he talk, funny. Talking <laughs> about going Oh, the crazy part. Um, he, he said that the woman at the CIA told them, she's like, that his last line of defense will be his son, I think Khalid, something like that. His last line of defense is Khalid. I, I don't know what it looks like inside the house, but there will be a staircase. And Osama will be on the second floor. And Khalid will be on that staircase. And he will be armed. If you get past him, you get a shot at Osama bin Laden. And so when they get to the staircase, one of the guys yells... Khalid, come here in Pakistani. And Khalid pokes his head out and they blew it off. And then they walked in and killed Osama bin Laden. It Heavy was, sleeper, that guy. He was. <laughs> Osama, well, Osama was like up, like trying to get. They were kind of. They always say he was trying to get a rifle. Osama was staggering around with his wife in front of him and they shot him twice in the face and then once more once he hit the ground. That, that's what happened. They went to kill Osama bin Laden, not to capture him. They killed him. What about um, his wife? Just let her. She go. got shot. I don't know if she died. She like mm. took a bullet in that uh, thing. I I believe. I'm like, although I know what they they shoot seventy seven grain hollow points. He said, and my goodness, that would make a mess even if it winged you. Like if you got shot in the arm with that in a room, like you could very easily pull it out. It's a five five six, a heavy one. It's a it's a yeah, but the hollow point part that it's oh, okay. It, it's gonna like kind of it's really coming apart when it hits you and making. I don't a think I've ever hole. fired a five five six hollow point. I didn't know that was a thing. Yeah, hunt, it, there's um the oh. there's hunting rounds is where we would is where we get them. But like, I don't think um I'm like ninety nine point nine percent sure the regular military doesn't shoot hollow points because you're not they all shoot FMJ or, or green tip or something. But I guess the special forces guys just are, don't give a they shoot hollow points. I've always heard they can have whatever they want. Yeah, but there's rules that, although on this raid in particular, like they had snuck into Pakistan. You know where that house is? Was like, I don't less than a mile. I think a kilometer away from where Osama bin Laden's house is is like their West Point, like the Pakistani oh. West Point. Like he's not in the middle of nowhere. Mm -hmm. He's right down the street from their military, like professional military training grounds like where they where, where their top brass is 
They got him in their back pocket right there, keeping him safe. I wonder if you could look at that house on Google Maps, like satellite view, and check out the compound. Like a street view? There's lots of Google car driving through there. Google cars have been there, (laughs) but... Uh, I'm sure there's imagery of, of the place. I don't know if you can like like see like updated. Like who knows what's going I kinda on. I kind of want now. to like to drag around the city and see. Yeah, like, like see the neighborhood. But, yeah, yeah. No, th- those stories are wild because these guys are fucking killers. All of them. He's like, I'm not gonna tell you the 200 different stories of we went through the door, we shot the bad guys in the face. Cause we did that every fucking day. Let me tell you some stories when shit went wild. And I'm like, fucking hell yeah. Tell me what about when it went wild. <laughs> and he and, and he's got stories about having like fight bounding down the street, wounded while his partner's dead behind him. He's got a saw busting off 200 round bursts at like God. multiple assailants down the street in Iraq. Like all sorts of really crazy James Bond shit. Dude, stuff. I wish I could could tell a couple of the stories my close friend marine buddy told me mm-hmm. when he was in action over there but there are a couple of them where he was like we're all chatting and he's like because he listens shout out and he's like taylor this next one you cannot say on the show like you can't say this one because i don't want to implicate anything or say anything about this or that Damn. and i'll be like all right i'm a professional consummate professional you can tell me mm-hmm. and then he does and i'm like god yeah i, I want to tell it <laughs> i want to tell it so bad. it's such a good story people would love it but gotta gotta respect that maybe I, someday i have um the guy i did the tat with that long motorcycle rider around, around the country he was a army guy and he told stories the thing is he wasn't an elite army guy or like anything good. And all his stories are like hilariously like stupid. Like, he's like, we're walking. There's enemy f- somewhere out there. We don't know where they are. We just, we know that eventually we'll get close enough to them and there'll be a problem. And uh, they're supposed to have a buddy system. I think it was him who lost his buddy. Like his buddy's gone. And now we're all like, what the fuck? Oh no, oh no. Fucking my friend is fouled up. He lo- he lost the buddy that he was supposed, supposed to be accountable mm-hmm. for each other. Turns out this dude fell in like a latrine hole and now he's <laughs> covered in smells like poo. And it, But they didn't let him like stop, you know? So, <laughs> so now he and his, and his buddy gets it on him. And like, this is his story. There's no hero, like rock star shit in any of this. Yeah, just, a, just smells bad. <laughs> just a comedy of errors in the <laughs> army, apparently. Yeah, yeah. Well, <laughs> honestly, but. Like, I, I'll find a link for this and like I, I'll find a good one to try to whet your appetite and get you on board with this mm, with this thing. Cause I like that. This guy I was just talking about, it was a comedy of errors for him. Like like he's like the Iraqis knew not to fuck with the bearded guys and the AM ramps or whatever. I had some acronym for some big armor truck. And they didn't they knew not to fuck with the guys and the Bradleys. But here we were, two CIA guys. I mean, we were disguised, but we're just in a sedan. And he talks about getting ambushed. Hit they hit they shot him with an RPG. The car crashes, um, loses power because um, and and there they are. They jump out of the car. His buddy's immediately killed. And then he's running from people for so long. He's like, and, and he's been radioing the whole time for backup, telling, giving updating positions. And then he looks down and there's a bullet in his radio. He hasn't had a radio the whole fucking time. Nobody knows Fuck. what's going on. Uh, he gets up. It sounded like some Tarkov shit. He got on top of a roof. He's like, I get to the fucking roof. And it's just a flat top roof. There's no little knee wall to get behind or anything. It's not like in the movies, but I'm returning fire from up there. And then I decide, you know, I'm going to run back and I'm going to jump down to the down one floor to the landing. And then from there down to the ground. Well, that landing only existed on the front side of the building. So when I jump, I just fell two stories into the darkness onto the ground. (laughs) So there I am laying on the floor, quite stunned and a lot of pain. And here come two Hodges around the corner. I'm like, this is great. I love it. They're, they're great stories. And and they're always so like weird about when they kill somebody. I wish they'd just be like, so then I killed the guy on the left. Then I killed the guy on the right. They're just like, they use euphemisms and they sort Neutralized. of nod. It's like, get, not even that. They won't even, they'll be like, uh, uh, they were sitting in traffic, armored Wetted car. They're in an armored car. Like he said, seven inches of bulletproof glass or something. Um, guy pulls up next to him in a, in a car. In the back passenger seat, a guy comes out with an AK, points it right at his window point blank, dumps all 30 rounds. He's like, he chews halfway through this fucking glass. And I'd like to say that I was brave and I like reacted or said something like, let's get him. But I actually went, ah! <laughs> 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 it's like, 
what am I putting my hands up for? Like, I'm going to stop the bullets. <laughs> he's, like, <laughs> he's like, the thing was, though, they took off after he dumped his mag, but we're in heavy Baghdad traffic. He made it maybe 90 feet. And then they got to stop and this real awkward kind of, uh-oh, kind of moment happens because they had one AK and one magazine. So I got out. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, this, well, well, let's just say that was the end of them. And I'm like, no, nah, <laughs> let's not just say that. Tell me, tell me what you did to them, bro. Like, I'm, mm -hmm. I'm here for this. Um, so I really like those special forces guys talking about, I, you know, special forces raids because we did so much crazy shit that wasn't in the news. They're talking about countries I didn't know we did wars in. I didn't know we had a war in Yemen and Libya in the early 2000s. <laughs> we were just all over the fucking world smoking people, apparently. Probably are now. Dude, yeah, Yemen's going to take off again. Special forces in Israel right now, or Ukraine. I hope. Like, I, I definitely in it. De you 100 stay 100 Ukraine. Like, we can't get caught, right? Like There can't be Americans there. That'll be a big deal. The I bet the Americans that are there, if they are caught, won't register as Americans to whoever caught them. Would be my guess. Yeah, I, I considered that too. Might work. I don't know. I, I, I don't I don't know anything that you that you don't. Um I guess I did right. But um <laughs> I think you said it right. Yeah. Yeah, but uh I doubt we have anybody in Israel because we're so weird about that anyway. Uh if anything, we've probably got some like people back on like whatever the green zone is, like I don't know, maybe oh. there to help in some way. I went the other way. I thought we were more likely to be in Israel because we're closer allies, I think. And What's Palestine going to do? Like, we don't want Russia to get into a hot war with America, mm -hmm. but the the PLO, I, I, who gives a fuck if they get into a well, hot war? Well, it's not war it's not them? really them. We they like, don't want to lose. They don't want to lose Americans. In it, that. Israel isn't like principally concerned with Hamas as far as a competitor in the region. It's Hezbollah, and so that's why they're going to. I think it's. I think, I think it's likely that they continue to and like do a real invasion of Lebanon at some point in the future because that's where well they were they're already bombing Lebanon because they're they, saying uh, they're taking out Hezbollah sites and then that you know the Hezbollah alliance between those guys in Lebanon and in Iran where kind of the the meat of the power of Hezbollah comes from I think it's gonna I think it, it's a bit more risky than a, a lot of us realize over there no, like I, I, I think I think it is. I, I one of those CIA right. guys. They asked him um, how will World War World War Three begin. They asked him a question like that, he's, and he said that he's like, I think it already started. I think it started when Russia invaded Ukraine. That was the beginning of World War Three, and we're slowly and you know the the forces are all coalescing now with the United States and Canada and Germany, and this time very very seemingly Poland, like like, like really beefing up, pulling together, and mm. obviously like and. The China, the India Pakistan thing is always the most worrying one to me because the Pakis seem like awful people. You know, I, the, what was the what was the, <laughs> the reason that one doesn't bother me is because it's incredibly old. India and Pakistan have hated each other for a thousand years. There's nothing new there. Yeah, you so know what? The you rate just go of, over there and be like, "You're all the same, brah." <laughs> <laughs> Taylor, at what rate would you say the father on daughter incest uh, rate is in Pakistan compared to the rest of the world? Like, by what magnitude would you say they exceed the average? You know, Wait, fa father daughter incest? father daughter incest. Yes, occurrence. I don't know. If for you to bring it up, they must be trouncing the rest of the world. So I'm going to say four times as high. Three times as high. Three times as high. I, oh, I believe it's. I think it's six thousand times. I think it's six thousand times the occurrence. Zach, delete um, regularly. this. Pretend. I'm going to guess 6,000 times. <laughs> <laughs> you nailed it. See? I knew Taylor had his finger on the packy pulse. Of yeah, if there's one yes. area where Taylor is well-educated, it's father-on-daughter rape. Mm -hmm. yes. Specifically Palestine. He's <laughs> give, it a, uh, yeah, give it a second before you pull that number out. Just like Zachy, try, please pretend please. to think about it. Uh, Zach, 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 Zach. Tented fingers of thought. <laughs> <laughs> Fact check me do. on that one, Zach. Yeah, I don't know I, what Pakistan's up to. I don't want to throw the Pakis under the incest bus if they need. You not sounded go, pretty sure. I'm like, well, you know, I I do that. Zach says <laughs> I'm looking into it. Uh, Zach's being added to a watch list as we speak. Th there's no way Twitter lied to me. It said six thousand times the occurrence. Thirty six percent of girls and twenty nine percent of boys have experienced child abuse in Pakistan. Damn. Well, are they being spanked? We need to know. We need we need sexual to parse specifically the, the info there. No, so if you, you include spanking, it's one hundred percent of the Pakistani children. <laughs> Reddit says you're right. Not the six thousand yeah. in particular, but that it's hugely high rates of incest. 
Yeah, I I saw six thousand, and which seems silly, but I I thought it's so funny that I'd repeat it. Because what are they going to do? Cousin right. marriage. I mean, that might be a barometer for incest in general. I, I do know say. that like Rather that high. region, that region of the world has way higher cousin marriage than a lot of others. You can, and you would never know it by looking at them. <laughs> really? You know, I thought the whole cousin marriage thing was overblown, but I saw a YouTube video on it and say like, it's a real problem. And it, it surprised me to learn the bigger problem happened a couple generations down. Like if, mm. if a brother and sister or a mother and son or whatever have a kid, those kids are probably okay. It's not until grandkids, great grandkids mm. that the problems really yeah. spike up. And that's probably compounding over time. Yeah. Not good. Not good. Right. Yeah, hopefully Google the middle better Pakistan. Doesn't, uh, doesn't pop off too hard. I guess it's already popping off a bit, but <clears throat> hopefully we can avoid conflict with Iran and hopefully Israel doesn't invade Lebanon and, Hopefully Saudi Arabia doesn't. I just hope kick it doesn't inconvenience with, with you Yemen. Too much. <laughs> that is the real tragedy. We as need to make sure we're not Kyle's all right. How much do we care if we're not directly inconvenienced? Well, ideally, we don't want a global hegemon shift. That, but as that far as the Midwest goes, goes, yeah. But I mean, you know, day to day, like if you hear, oh, bomb bombings in what country? What what a stand? Ah. Like I've as never long lived as they're not in a- drafting us. I, I'm okay. There's more than drafting. What is a real war economy like where they tell the automotive manufacturers to shift their focus to tanks? I said that funny. Or, or were they like, like just, I don't know. Hey, Kyle, don't eat steak. Save that for the soldiers. That's, the, uh, th- oh my God. <laughs> if that, so that, uh, so that's <laughs> I'm that, that'll get me marching. <laughs> oh, you'll be a soldier. Of, <laughs> no, no, not that kind of marching. No, no, no. I heard it. I heard it. Impotent <laughs> protest for marching. That's what I'll do. <laughs> They kind if, of asked the guy basically that they, they asked him like what would it look like like World War Three mm-hmm. and he his he suggested that it's going to look more like uh, these big proxy wars that are going on now rather than you know drafting a bunch of Americans and dropping them off on a beach somewhere it's going to be airlifting tanks and helicopters to uh, uh, a, a, an ally in Europe or mm-hmm. in Asia who it, needs it, it. is like, until it, just, it isn't. It is until it isn't, and you know that the idea we're totally past boots on the ground mass wars. I don't think is uh, true. I don't. Th- I I think it's up to China whether that happens, and I don't think they want to do it. So I, I think we'll keep these proxy wars up. China wants their island, like like I said, which I think is going to happen this year, but they will be rebuffed, as I predicted, Nostradamus style. And you're going to be going to look back at this, this clip. I say they're not rebuffed. You can't piggyback onto my prediction. I gave yeah. way more predictions than you. Some of them not jokes. I think Taylor <laughs> Swift is going to buy the Chiefs. <laughs> yeah, I think Taylor Swift. I was you, when you said that they were going to get married. I mm. laughed at that because I had one written down right here that I didn't like say, which was after the Chiefs lose the Super Bowl to the 49ers, she's going to publicly break up with him. <laughs> oh, <laughs> all right, so. And then date whoever the best tight end is on the 49 I like tight ends who win games. Yeah. Did she like write a song that. about him? Like, 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 lo- called Loser? Yes. <laughs> yeah, it's called Loser. <laughs> I, well, he's already won a championship. Oh, maybe I'm an idiot because I, 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 I root for those kids. But if they do break up, oh, my God, please give us a song. Please give us a song. I was hoping for a sex tape. Make fun of his song. Uh, podcast. Make fun, of his, <laughs> make fun <laughs> of the fact that he's a Hall of Fame <laughs> tight end. Uh-huh. Uh, apparently, I, uh, that's what I've heard. I've you know. heard that too. Okay. I heard he's a lock. I think um, his I think both brother the Kelsey is too. brothers are. Yeah, I've heard that. Uh, Travis, Jason is, Travis? is the Jason. Well, Travis is the uh, Taylor Swift boyfriend, and Jason okay. is the. I've heard Eagles Jason guy. Kelsey is like one of the best centers to ever be in the NFL, because I guess it's a really hard position. You wouldn't I'm have gotten that. It's the, the second game. most complicated. I don't know. Really? I don't know football. Yeah, but I hear a quarterback is obviously number one, and they say center is number two. I don't know why. I guess because you have to have like an equal understanding of the playbook and everything. I don't know. I always wondered that about like at the NFL level, every one of those guys must be intimately familiar with every single play. Like if you stopped a running back and we're like, hey. What is uh, Stevie over there, the tight end? What's he doing on this play? In my head, I always think they're like, oh, 
this is this route. He's going to do this. I'm going to do this. The the line's going to push this way. The quarterback's going to drop into this part of the pocket and throw it. But maybe it's just like they just know their thing. That's what the podcast said. So I watch their podcast oh, really? sometimes. Yeah. yeah, and it's funny. They they uh, people write in they have a thing for noobs to ask noob questions and they're like, explain the dime or whatever. And they're like, I don't know. That one's defense. I... <laughs> and I'm like, really? I thought you knew what defenses did they play against them. Like, you, but yeah, they didn't seem to know everything about everything. And I thought at that level okay. they would. Yeah. I guess that makes even more sense. Kind of. It's like, Hey, don't waste a second of thought, not thinking about your core competency here. That's what Sherlock you... Holmes does. He deletes it. So he has room in his mind cave palace 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 you're watching are you watching sherlock now dude every night oh yeah (laughs) Yeah. oh yeah that's great now you've got chris are you watching sherlock i'm a fucking idiot because i'm not i'm not (laughs) watching it either (laughs) it's only 10 years old so you can you can catch up anytime it's i did start true detective that's the show that i've been dipping my toe into which season, season I mean, that's, are you in? Season one. I just like just started. Oh, okay. so, that was, those are really good. I think Matthew McConaughey is in that, right? Yep, yeah. that's the one. I, I see Harrelson. clips on TikTok of like him going off on some shit, and then Woody Harrelson being like, "You got to stop saying weird shit." Like, <laughs> that got Woody me like, oh, this funny. girlfriend is the star of that show. Oh, really? What's the, Andrea Diodaro. Daddario. Alexander oh. Daddario. Oh, or something like that. she's Andrea Daddario. She's hot as hell. Um, yeah. She's got a great up. subreddit. Uh, big fan uh-huh. of her um, and all of her titties and and her and her pussy that you can see for just a little bit in that in that television <laughs> show. Mm-hmm. It's a it's a it's a wonderful show. It's uh, uh, there's a YouTube video called like True Detective is the greatest eight hours of television ever or something like that. Well, calm down. Um, <laughs> I, I think it's tremendous. <laughs> if you look at fucking uh, McConaughey's performance uh, throughout mm-hmm. that thing and the way he's he's like driving the that Lincoln, age, yeah, the different age, yeah, and, and, and look, the man can practice law. I don't care what you say. You know what he also can practice is sneaking behind the Texas college football team's uh, player zone. Apparently, he's from Texas. Did you guys know this about the Texas Washington like playoff football game? He, mm. I guess, the University of Texas made him like the ambassador of culture. Or like Fuck some yeah. some silly title because they're like Matthew McConaughey really likes the Longhorns and we should get him involved in it more. And so I saw these sports announcers. It was during the game. Apparently, they gave Matthew McConaughey a green pass, which means that he can go into a lot of areas that other people aren't allowed to go to during the game. But according to the announcers who were commentating on this, a very bold print specific thing on the green pass is that you cannot go in the player's area in the middle of the game. And Mm -hmm. Matthew McConaughey in the middle of the Texas versus Washington game, like they're like down by a touchdown. There's like cameras zooming in and Matthew McConaughey has like his hands on shoulders, on shoulder pads (laughs) for the Texans or the the Longhorns being like, I love it. To get out there and really uh, show them what for. Like, that, I guess that's <laughs> what are you really doing here, Matthew McConaughey? <laughs> but, like, he, it was like so funny to me that the announcers are like, Matthew McConaughey on the sidelines over there. Interesting. <laughs> you know, I'm sitting here right now, Alan, and I have a green pass, and I can see that's what he's wearing. And very boldly on my green pass, it says, You are not allowed to talk to the players mid game. And they're like, That's true, but. You're not Matthew McConaughey. And he's like, <laughs> he's laughing. Like laughing at it. And they're like, the players don't seem bothered by it. So I think it's all fine. So, <laughs> yeah. Matthew McConaughey knows. is an excellent actor, but there's no mm-hmm. shortage of weird shit he's done. Like, I don't know if you've seen the clip of him on The View giving that host a foot massage. No. <laughs> Where it's like, I apparently, like five years ago, he gave one of the hosts a foot massage. And then he was back on it recently. And she's like, I got a pedicure this time. And she puts her foot up on the counter. And he's like, oh, and like starts going at it. And he's like talking about it. he's like he's like you know I got this move from my dad you know I we we'd bring dates home and be like where'd our date oh, go and you come to the living room and, and our dad's just giving him a foot massage and it's like what the fuck are you talking about yeah wow. he was rubbing oh feet I'm watching him rubber down feet. right now yeah it, he March gets into it she's like there's even a point where she's like ah okay not that hard <laughs> <laughs> yeah. he had that line from school cool days dude. right the they keep rattle, getting rattle, younger, rattle. but I stay. No, I keep getting older, and they stay the same age, right? That's not Matthew that. Connie, not that right? uh, the view host. That's a uh, no. That she keeps getting older. She gets older. On you, right? They keep yeah. getting younger, and I, <laughs> I stay the same age. Is that that guy's name, Dershowitz? Who? Right? Yeah. Uh, I was making uh, a joke about the 
Yeah, allegedly, yes. The alleged mm. Apito. Diddler. Mm. Diddler. 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 Yeah. 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 Get Diddler's right. almost dirtier. Da, 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 da. It sounds like a Batman villain. The Diddler? <laughs> <laughs> like he's like the Riddler, but he just rapes children. Diddle me this. <laughs> yeah, that one didn't test well. <laughs> yeah, it, I like the guy that left the little confusing notes better and wore the question mark yeah. suit. Do people uh, hate, hate the Diddler? Ah, but the Diddler has <laughs> syphilis. No, that's much worse. You, Dude, oh, there are the children then? There has yes. to be an SNL or a Mad TV about the Diddler. That's too much of a layup. Mad TV or someone had to have so. diddled it on Mad TV day. speed. Yeah. That's been I was that's wa- been gone for so long. I watched Mad TV last night. I was watching uh the skit where um they do Tony Soprano. They do Sopranos uh on network television. So they just cut out all of the cursing and violence <laughs> and it's just a quick cut like an episode's 30 seconds long or something instead of 45 minutes. So you just mm. quick pretty fun. And Will Sasso I think is his name like it, I yeah, think yeah. that's the guy who does the incredible yep. Tony. Spring. He's got the eyebrow thing furrowed out. He's like, like, like he's talking to, and the like. It's really good at. It. He's got. It's the best Tony Soprano I've ever seen. Of course, it's a little can't, can't really will that one it. out anymore, can you? He you died. can throw a Tony out. Can you do a Tony? Give me your best Tony, Kyle. Mm. You know, like block off your nasal passage. Got to think about what to say though. That, that's the thing. Just Kyle, say Christopher. Christopher. Said that... Christopher. An eight million dollar job, Christopher. No, no, not gonna. No, no. <laughs> no. You sound like his wife. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah. Make, make yourself more nasally. Make yourself What's more her name? Caroline Carlano. I want to win a sum pulp, not all. Mella, you got Mella. Mella down. No, I can't. Sum pulp. <laughs> Christopher, it's an eight thousand dollar job. Fuck, what does he sound like? Yeah, I can, I can do a much better Christ, Carmella. Christopher. 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 I wonder when it says sub pulp. Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, Christopher. A little ashes. Must have crawled under there for warmth. Poor guy. And I saw Are you these... crazy, Christopher? You <laughs> killed Cosette. That's my favorite episode when he when it, when they they had the intervention for Christopher, and uh, and and she's reading his his fiance is reading her prepared like confrontal. He's like, you can no longer function. When we first met, we had we made love all the time, but now you can no longer function as a man. And everybody everybody looks at him like <sighs> like, like Paulie's judging him. He's like, and when I came home last week and found that you had killed Cosette. And then he goes, whoa, whoa, whoa. That little dog? Cosette, what? And Polly's like, well, is she barking or something? <laughs> uh, no, he, he was high and he sat on her. Oh, now everybody's upset and mad. He's beating his wife. She's sitting yeah. in a neck brace with a black eye. Oh, now, now everybody's caring about what I'm doing. <laughs> Where he's doing his. Shut up, you fucking place. whore. Yeah. <laughs> and, then, and then they start just pounding his ass. They give him a skull fracture. <laughs> and for, for good reason, he killed that poor it's, pup, that adorable pup. That? He yeah. sat on that fucking dog, and you hear it go. And, and, and he's, he's like he's he's on heroin so he's just like out of it she comes home and finds the dog under him fucking dead and he goes oh she must have crawled must have under crawled there under for the- warmth <laughs> <and> suffocated <laughs> poor thing and she goes are you fucking crazy yes. goes, crazy. <laughs> god damn so fucked up that was funny <laughs> Well, Rap I think here? that's uh that's yeah. a show. Mr. Chris, Mr. Chris James, where can everyone find your wonderful content, YouTube and otherwise? Yep, YouTube, Chris James TV, Chris the James everywhere else. That's about it. Give him a follow, Check watch his stuff. Links yeah. in the description. PKA six eighty one.